Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in, and thank you so much for spending your Tuesday evening, your Tuesday night here with us live on Front Porch News and Chad's Media. We have a very, very, very exciting, action-packed, very long night of a doubleheader yeah. of playoff soccer. Winning, tra- winning has be- become tradition for these two programs here in Sulphur Springs, and that uh, is no different this year. Both the boys and the girls are district champions. Both of them will be playing here tonight. The boys starting off here in just a few minutes against Bullard, and then uh, the girls will follow. There'll be a little break in between, but yeah, the girls they, will follow after. They usually, I mean, you could, you'll could, you probably be able to see it on the broadcast. When it gets to about five minutes left, you'll see them lining up on the sidelines just uh-huh. ready to go. <laughs> but, no, we're very excited for tonight. If you've been hanging out with us all year, thank you so much and welcome back. If this is your first time joining us, I'm Tyler Lennon. I'm joined, of course, by Corey Hankins. And then here later in the night we'll have our soccer. The soccer expert. Yes, Woody. Yeah. Woody will be in the in the building with us very soon. But it's about what? You can see there on your screen, 11 and a half minutes until kickoff. We have got a ton to get into, Corey. And before we can do any of that, we want to give a big thank you and a big shout out to our friends over at Bell Concrete. They're your hometown concrete supplier, and they've been a part of Silver Springs for over 70 years. They are locally owned, family oriented, small business, and they are proud to support the communities that they serve. They have uh, plants located in Silver Springs, Greenville, and Mount Pleasant for the very best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas. Give them a call today at 903 885 3126. As always, we appreciate them for bringing us the pregame portion of tonight's broadcast. Corey, these are two very, very, very good teams, and I, I want to mention something. Obviously, the Silver Springs Wildcats win district this year, which is huge because last year, while they were co district champions, they were the two seed in the playoffs. Yes. And they got a very tough road <laughs> in almost, that. I almost wish you'd have gotten a two seed this year going <laughs> right. up against Bullard. Um, right. This is a very, very, very tough uh, four seed in Bullard. They had a record of, have it right here written down, they had a record of 12, 5, and 1, 11, and 5 um, in district play. And this is a really good four seed, Corey. Um, they allowed just 14 goals in their 16 district games. They scored 45, which is about two and a half, somewhere between two and a half and three per game. But of those 16 district games, eight of them were shutouts. Yeah, they're they're very good defensively. We tried to try to do some uh, research, kind of looking at their game film. We couldn't, you know, Max Preps can only do so much, but mm-hmm. um, we tried to look into their game film and see kind of what their strategy is. Are they a park the bus team? You know, we kind of ran into that with Pittsburgh, where it's like right. they're just kind of parking it in and. My guess, if I had to just you know throw out a guess based off what I've seen on Max Preps, I don't think they're a huge park the bus team. I think their main uh, their main identity is in defense, but I would say that they're um, they are a very good defensive team because of their back line and their goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. That would be my guess. Uh, I do want to point out they've been very good. Sometimes with the four seeds, you run into scenarios where the team might have a good record or even a good district record, but they really just beat up on the bottom teams in the district. That's very much not the case um, with Bullard. The top three seeds in their district were Chapel Hill, Athens, and Lindo. And against those uh, against those three playoff teams, they went a combined two, three, and one with a loss in PKs, but they really, really, really turned it around in the second half of district. In the second half of dis- district, they actually – have a winning record against those teams. They beat Chapel Hill 2-1. to one. They beat Lindell 3-1. to one, And then they lost a 2-0 shutout to Athens. So, again, these are the one seed, the two seed, the three seeds of that district, and they're holding them to one goal per game. Yeah. And, and we don't know, you know, player availability. We know if there was an injury, a great issue, or something for the first half of district that would have kind of led to that. But um, I, I was in McKinney last night watching um, the Allen Eagles girls soccer team. And, uh, you know, hats off to an amazing season for them. But they were also district champions uh-huh. playing the four seed, and they lost uh, in overtime to uh, a couple of goals. So, really, once you get to the playoffs, you know, not every one seed, not every two seed, not every three seed, whatever seed you are, right? all that matters, you know, it's March, baby. Yeah. All you got to do is get to the dance. Get into the playoffs. You know, once you start dancing, some things can happen. Get into the playoffs, and literally anything can happen. Corey, again, this is such a good defensive uh, buller team. So looking at what the Wildcats are going to need to do, I expect really, really big night. There's three names I'm going to throw at you. Uh, the first of which is J.J. Gomez. This season he led the team in goals with 17 and total points with 24, and that's also the case in district. He had the most goals in district with nine. He had six assists, 15 total points. I think this is a night where you might not have a ton of offensive possessions or you might not have a ton of good looks. So you're going to have to be really, really, really efficient with the ones that you do get. 
Yeah, and once once they get the ball into the attacking third, every possession is going to be that much more paramount um, once they get to that area. Uh, another name I want to throw at you. I believe he has been away Bible Church player of the game once already this year. Eric Rodriguez, again, he's been very good this entire year. He was second on the team in uh, total points, tied for the team in assist. And you mentioned something earlier before we were on air, but this is a man who not only facilitates and gets assists, but he's one of the guys that can score from longer range. Yeah, and you may need him tonight to, to be that guy to score from, from long range. Yeah, I, I think so as well. The other name I'm going to throw at you, uh, these are kind of our predictions for who might be yeah. tonight's Way Bible Church player of the game, and that is number one, the senior, Juan Santa Cruz. He's got a ton of experience in these deep playoff runs in you know postseason uh, matches. And again, he was third on the team in total points this year. He was also tied for the uh, for the lead in assist. And a lot of his work, all seven of his assists this season, came in district play. I mean, he's facilitating when absolutely needed the most. So those are kind of the three guys I'm going to be kind of looking at for tonight's matchup because, again, you don't know how many offensive possessions, you don't know how many like good looks you're going to get. You're going to have to be really efficient with the ones you do get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and something I also want to mention when we were talking about the seeding and kind of, you know, getting into the big dance. So with this Upton, with Upton's team, you know, when they went on that big long run, people forget, you know, when they lost to Longview here in this actual in this stadium, they were a four seed coming into that. They yeah, had to right. fight to get back into the uh, the playoffs. And and if I'm Upton, I'm telling my team, hey guys, the same way that y'all went on the run, same way these guys can go on a run. Yeah. But I, I expect a very very good game. You know, Tyler, we're in for a good couple of games yes it's going to be tonight. a very fun very exciting night of soccer uh we're getting close to kickoff here just about five minutes so i think now's a good time to hear from some of our advertisers who we wouldn't be able to do all of this without and then we'll be back to wrap up the bell concrete pregame show bell concrete your hometown concrete supplier has been a part of sulfur springs for over 70 years we are a locally owned, family-oriented small business. We are proud to support the communities we service. Our plants are located in Sulphur Springs, Greenville, Mount Pleasant, and very soon we will open a plant in Blue Ridge. For the best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas, give us a call today at 903-885-3126. We appreciate your support and go Wildcats. Cody Drug, we believe in providing exceptional customer care and convenience. We do this by offering unique and comprehensive services unlike big chain pharmacies. With our MedSync program, our customers can schedule a day to pick up all their medications at one time. We also offer vaccines and B12 shots to keep you healthy and protected. Take advantage of our fast and reliable delivery service straight to your front door. We're a team that is focused on helping our neighbors and adding value to this community. Make an easy transfer to Cody Drug today. At Cody Drug, we're committed to earning your trust. Welcome to Sable Provisions, where we go above and beyond to create an extraordinary shopping experience for our valued customers. Our store is not your ordinary men's boutique. It's a paradise for the modern gentleman seeking style, relaxation, and enjoyment all in one place. Step inside and discover a carefully curated selection of Texas-made products and unique vintage attire that exudes charm and character. Kick back and relax in our exclusive men's lounge and take advantage of our top-notch grooming services. Our team aims to create a perfect spot for camaraderie and relaxation. So, whether you're looking to elevate your wardrobe or want to indulge in a little pampering, Sable Provisions is the place to be. We are almost ready to get this doubleheader of by district playoff soccer started. Uh, obviously going first to Silver Springs Wildcats against Bullard. And then later tonight, we have the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats versus Tyler Chapel Hill. We'll get into to all of that and more throughout the course of the night. But, Corey, we already kind of talked about how this is a really hot Bullard team coming into the playoffs, but we got to make sure we talk about the district champion, Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Yeah, absolutely. Not only did they go, what was it, 10-2 uh, in district play, but they've won 11 of their last 13, and it's not like they've been winning games in, in one style. In those 13 games – They've scored 55 goals while only allowing 10. That's uh, less than one goal allowed per game while scoring over four goals per game. Yep. Also, in those 13 games, they shut out uh, six of their opponents, and the only two losses both came in penalty kicks. Yeah, and that's what I was kind of thinking whenever we were going through the record, I, if I wasn't mistaken. Now, I know you do all the research, and I want to give you your props. You've done a <laughs> Thanks, heck buddy. of a job with you know all the research you, you've done going into this game and going into all the games that we cover. But um, if I remembered right, the only, they haven't lost a game outright yet. 
um, it's been all just kind of penalty yes, kicks. It is. And they've also won a game in penalty kicks. They were uh, one and two in those scenarios, which we didn't really get to see. Uh, Bullard, I believe, has only gone to PKs once, uh, and they lost that one. So you never know when it comes to the playoffs. Obviously, it is different. Um, over time, you have to play two, I believe, ten-minute quarters. Yes. But then if it's still tied after those two, uh, then you would go to penalty kicks. Yeah. And playoff penalty kicks is as big as it gets. Yes, it is very intense. And it, it, in those – in um the overtime quarters, it's not a golden goal scenario. It is a – you play it all the way through. Yes. Um, also, want to make note, obviously the Wildcats in the playoffs once again. Uh, last year they opened the playoffs with a 2 to nothing win over Athens, but then they ran into Palestine. I mention that because if Sauver Springs wins tonight, <laughs> yeah, it's a- they will play the winner of two-seed Palestine and three-seed Sabine. Yeah. Uh, so you're running back into that that yeah. buzzsaw, and if I'm if I'm Silver Springs, that's the way I want it. Yeah, for I sure. I want to play the people that that knocked us out last time. You know, not only did they knock you out, they knocked a lot of people out last year. <laughs> Palestine, <laughs> you weren't the only ones. Palestine is 22 and four this year, but last year um, they beat Silver Springs three to nothing in the area round, and then went all the way to the state final where they would eventually lose. Yeah, they're always a, they're a perennial powerhouse. They're always pretty good, and if I was to guess, I would say they're still pretty dang good you know and that yeah. was kind of the, the tough part last year of, you know obviously you you shared the district title but because of the goal differential you ended up getting um the second seed mm-hmm. that's kind of the tough part of that and uh but this year you flip it you know you get the <laughs> one they're the yeah, two seed yeah. they're the two so and and i don't know exactly how they got that two seed i'm not 100 percent sure on i, I um, don't have that either what that looks like you know it's funny uh sabine and palestine also met in the first round of last year's playoffs. <laughs> they one was a one, one was a four. Now one's a two, one's a three. Yeah. Uh, Palestine won that matchup six to two. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, if the if the Wildcats win tonight, they would go on to play the winner of that, which could potentially give them an area rematch and a little chance at revenge. Yeah, and, and you you'd be lying if you said you didn't want to get revenge on the team that knocked oh, absolutely. you out. It's kind of like the Mavericks and the Suns. You know, yeah. it's it always feels good when you just whoop up on the Suns for sure. Corey, before we get started tonight, which we are about to do. Um, Interesting hairstyle choices right there. It is. We little. can see uh, Jackson hair. And is that Santa Cruz right there with the um, red and the the white and the black, I think? Oh, nice. little <laughs> like little that. playoff flow. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there on your screen. Corey, I'm not sure with the playoffs if we'll get full starting lineups and full roster announcements. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a national anthem. Yeah. But I would think, I would think we're going to be getting it. We see our flag. Number three. Okay, we are doing the yeah. They're doing the nice. they're doing the starting lineups right now. Corey, while we've got a quick second, again, we want to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to our friends over at Bell Concrete. We wouldn't be able to do any of this without all of our advertisers. I'm going to be telling you about every single one of them throughout the course of the night. And again, we cannot thank them enough. Everything that we do, everything that we bring you, is 1,000 percent because of them. Yeah. And uh, we're getting ready for next year already, Corey. And we have just a few spots left. So anyone that's watching this and thinks, hey, you know, I've got a business or I've got whatever, yeah. you know, I would like to be a part of that. Here is who you need to contact, yeah. Mandy at chadsmedia.com. Like we said, you know, a few spots left, and she'd be more than glad to talk to you and see if we can find a package that, that fits And you, you. you don't want to miss the boat on what we've got coming for next year. Yes, I, I will say this. We've already done better this year yeah. than we did last year. The numbers yeah. are growing every single year. We continue to add stuff, as you see all the time, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Corey, so, any uh, final predictions before we hear the Wildcats lineup? Uh, my only prediction is this: I think we do go into overtime. And something else Ooh. I want to I want to mention before we get out of here and go to the overtime. You can't see it on on air right now, but this is a very wide open yes. stadium. So whoever gets up first, there's gonna, you're going to see a lot of gamesmanship, a lot of kicking uh-huh. the ball, you know, into the forest over there, or, you know, back to this scoreboard yep. over here. You're, you're going to see a lot of that. So it's paramount to get ahead early. Yeah, and as we already mentioned, Bullard's a team that plays a lot of low-scoring games anyway. So let's hear from your Sulphur Springs Wildcats, and Corey and I will be back for the rest of the game. Double zero, Brandon Tavera. Number one, Juan Santa Cruz. Number two, Aiden Larios. Number three, George Garrett Robinson. Number four, Miguel Correa. Number five, Maverick Moore. Number six, Manuel Taliz. Number seven, Matthew Brito. Number eight, Gael Garcia. Number nine, Ezekiel Hernandez. 
Number 10, Jair Gomez. Number 11, Cristobal Torres. Number 12, Andy Escobedo. Number 13, Eric Osorino. Number 14, Ernesto Alvarez. Number 15, Jackson Hare. Number 16, Brian Medina. Number 17, Bernardo Chavez. Number 18, Jimmy Garcia. Number 19, Daniel Rodriguez. Number 20, Eric Rodriguez. Number 21, Michael Rodriguez. Number 22, Mateo Perez. Number 23, Isaac Stanley. Number 24, Nicholas Brady. And number 25, Jose Salas. Your Sulphur Springs uh, Wildcat head coach, Alexi Upton, assisted by Salvador Mejia, and Arasimo Garcia, and Kendall Mathis. If you will, please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. And we are finally ready for some playoff soccer here live from Lindell. Corey, one of my favorite parts anytime we get to do postseason, whether it's basketball, football, any sport, is the fact that we have viewers from the other team. The first comment is already a Go Panther. So if this is your first time hanging out with us, thank you so much and welcome in. Yeah, we we appreciate it. Honestly, I enjoy when, yes. other, when people from other teams kind of uh, – join in and, and watch and stuff it, it, it it's fine and we we do a good job of being you know we try yeah we, we we're not super biased obviously we're rooting for the wildcats to win you know we are a hometown broadcast but you know it's never it's never just blatantly. no we always we always enjoy having viewers from both sides Corey. before we get started with tonight's action a few people that i want to tell you about it's our friends over at Hooten's Hardware. At Hooten's Hardware, they offer a wide variety of tools, materials, and supplies for all your home, business, and outdoor projects and repairs. With over 40,000 square feet of materials in stock, they're sure to have everything you need for any job. They also have you ready for spring as they have all their Cub Cadet and Skag mowers in and ready to go. Also stocked up on steel and echo trimmers and saws. Hooten's Hardware. They're more than just nuts and bolts. And as always, here at Chad's Media and Front Porch News, we know the love and support that Alliance Bank has for the Sulphur Springs Wildcats and Lady Cats. Stop by and see them on the square or use one of their many convenient drive through services. You can also visit AllianceBank.com for all your financial and banking needs. Corey, it's a great evening oh for soccer. Gosh, it's, it's, be it's a little chilly out there. Yep. You know, we wouldn't know it because we're in here. But, um, yeah, it's it's nice. I, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful evening here at Lindell or e Lindell Eagle Stadium. Yeah, Eagle Lindell Stadium. And also, we want to we yes. want to give a very a good shout out to the people at Lindell. 
Um, yes. I believe. Let me let me look at. For anyone that doesn't quick. know, we have to have permission not only from both schools to be able to broadcast games, but also from the host side as well. And we can't really do much without their cooperation. They've yeah. been super, super, super um, awesome yeah. with with everything. Yeah. Huge shout out to Coach Lawless. He was the one that kind of came out and um, helped us get in here mm-hmm. super early. <laughs> you know, that's kind of uh, the unfortunate part of. Um, yeah, for the people watching at home, you might not realize how much goes into all of that, but like, yeah, not every place you go to is the most helpful. But Lindell absolutely has. Yeah, been. this I believe this is our third time being yes. here, and uh, always man, nothing, super nothing but good things every time we get here. We're we're getting ready for kickoff here, getting set. Looks like our referees are getting in position. Again, remember, it is a very long night of playoff soccer right now. You're ready for Bullard versus Silver Springs. And then as soon as that is over, just a few minutes later, we'll have a, have you ready for our second matchup of the night, Tyler Chapel Hill and the Silver Springs Lady Cats. Ooh, I see. A, I got an air horn, a D-Wall air horn. I wonder if you got that at uh, Hooten's. <laughs> They're more than just nuts and bolts. Uh, they may be air horns, too. They might be. I know you can get a D-Wall at Hooten's. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned. Uh, I know for sure you can get an extension cord. Yep. Um, We've learned a number of the things oh, you can get. A little false start on the play. <laughs> and we're off, baby. And as always, Silver Spring's going to kind of start. Just let's get it into their third. Yep. If you're not, if you're just now joining us, you've got uh, the Silver Springs Wildcats in white and yeah. the Buller Panthers in blue. <laughs> yeah, I made the mistake when when uh, uh, Caleb was walking out there. I was like, Caleb, we're the blue team. <laughs> and then I looked and I was like, nope, nope, sorry. We're, we're the white team. We're the white team. So thank you for clearing that up. I appreciate that. So, I'm very excited to see, especially here early, kind of Bullard's approach offensively. Yes, I, I'm ready to see the pace, kind of see where uh-huh. they're, what they're working with, kind of see how how everything shakes out, and um, like I said, I'm I'm interested in that as well. That's a deep ball. I mean, they look. They yeah, we're off and be, running, Corey. Yeah. That is a senior corner Noah there. Hill down there in the corner for for Bullard. And as always, the sun will be changing on us tonight, uh-huh. so bear with us. You can see the shadow off that play clock right there. It's uh, it's coming in. So you know, to the left of your screen is the is the uh, the west. So Corey, while we're getting right, oh, never mind. We're already here. Sorry about that. Well, he was chasing the ball down, but I didn't realize he already had it. So <laughs> wide stand. We've already got a corner here for Bullard. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. Already with their first kind of good look of the night. Yeah. Just two minutes in. It's 38 minutes left. Good save by There's there, BT. by BT. Also, bear with us on the clock. Because of the sun coming in from the, the west and the school board situating on the mm-hmm. east, I mean, if you were here last year, you knew we, it was kind of a it's kind of a fight. So we're, we're working with that as well. But we're, we're going to deliver you the best product we have. Uh, hopefully, the only available. thing that's going to get in your way is the eight. Looks like a zero. Yeah, Other yeah. than that, hopefully we're set. It's, kinda, it's a little washed out by the sun, but we'll we'll work it out. We'll get there. And that does go out, so it'll be Wildcats ball there. Around the 20-ish. Yeah, you just have to deal with it for a minute, and then <laughs> it'll kick over to the 7. Looks like Upton's already sending some guys down to – he's seeing what's going on. He's sending some guys down to be ball boys. Uh, not a bad idea. Because <laughs> as you can see over yep. here, I mean, it's a long trek. It is. You got to dang near hit Delta County to get that <laughs> ball. <laughs> but no, it's – and it's something – And so, again, with a team like Buller who possesses the ball for a long time, yeah. you might need to – That's the name of their game, man. They want to possess. They want to make it hard for you to score, obviously, but it was a good, it's a good chance right there. Just kind of getting rid of it there. Yeah. Now just, Upton's helping out pitching in. <laughs> hey, he's, he said, we're not wasting time. DJ's going to get out of the way there. He said, I'll be a ball boy if I need yeah. to. And you'll see, it, there's some games. That's kind of what I like about soccer. There's some gamesmanship in there. There's some, you know, I, it's kind of playing within the rules, but kind of outside the rules right. a little bit, you know. Up to still playing ball boy over there. Yeah, he might be doing that all night. Who knows? Yeah. And as you can see already with Bullard, they've only got one guy up towards the, the four. Uh-huh. Everybody else is packing that box. 
Just a yeah, little bit not, off the foot for Brito there. Not going to give you any easy looks down here. Yeah. And Brito kind of had it squared up there. He just didn't get a good foot on it. Just four minutes into this one, Corey. Man, they're rolling. They are rolling. Again, we appreciate everyone for hanging out with us. It's going to be a long night for you and I on yeah. air, but also for camera woman, Chloe Copel, cameraman, Caleb T. Meyer. So we appreciate them yeah. for all the hard work they're going to be putting in tonight. Yeah, we, we want to thank them. Oh, nice. that went through. <laughs> That's hilarious. While they chase that down, Corey, feels like a good time. Uh, for me to tell everyone watching at home about Gary's Pest Control, they help homeowners and business owners control bug and pest infestations all throughout East Texas. They immediately assess and address current pest infestations and help you prevent them from happening again in the future. Give them a call today at 966-588-3279. We're getting, some, yeah, we're we're getting some looks down here. I like that, especially early in the game. You know, I, I think it's Slade or Woody one of the two. Maybe Slade that always talks about, you know, the first five, um, ten minutes of yeah. a game, really setting the tone, applying the pressure. So yeah. They've got the fans separated this year. I, I, if I remember last year. Um, oh, were they all on this side? I think so, gotcha. if I remember right. My memory ain't what it used to be, but, you know. <laughs> you may be right. There. We're getting there. Just a bit outside. Any, any chance you get. Yeah. Brito's having to work over there chasing that <laughs> ball down, man. That is tough work. And we're already getting some good goal scoring opportunities mm -hmm. early in this game. Oh, man. I thought Jackson was going to put a foot on it and make something happen. See, what this approach tells me is Bullard is very confident in their, like, interior defense. Yes. They are more than comfortable playing down there. When you can tell just in that little mm -hmm. stretch right there, they didn't panic, they didn't yep. freak out, you know. They weren't like, you know, we got to, we got to, um, we're, you know, the balls in our, our you know, attacking right. third were, you know, they they weren't caught on their heels. They were just ready to go. A little contact there. Yeah. He may have sold that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. may have sold that you a reckon? little bit. And it may be one of those things where they he kind of sold Let's see how they're going to call yeah. it. You know, let's, let's just check it out. Ernesto Alvarez, 11 total points this season. He's been great for the Wildcats. And he has is. been awesome. Eric Rodriguez, one of our players to watch tonight. Seven goals, seven assists this season. Yeah, and 33 minutes to left in this first half. They're they're blowing through it. They are. That's a good ball. Great job by great the keeper. Great effort from the keeper there. My goodness. And, and I told you, I think their back line and their keeper are probably going to be their strength. I believe that is uh, Trayson Wint down there. Hmm. The senior goalkeeper for Bullard. And in high school soccer, if you've got a good back line and a good goalkeeper, mm -hmm. you can you can you know muck your way into some some, some wins. Oh, it's a great job up the sideline. Yeah, that's Noah Hill. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed by him. Very Jackson Hare esque. Yeah, seems I, to be really quick, yes. but like got pretty good size as well. My goodness, he was going. Thirty-two fifty-five left here in the first half. Yeah, I'm trying to see who all has the playoff hair. It looks like Eric and, and Jackson for I didn't sure. See Eric. Oh, I see it now. Uh -huh. I see it now. I wonder if they all went to the same person. May have. May have been a group activity all did it yeah. together. Let's see who's who's as close to us with the ball. Thirteen, is he? I can't see. Thank you, Woody. He just gave us a compliment. Oh, good work, Caleb. What did Woody have to say? He said we're doing a good job. Nice. So thank you, Woody. We appreciate that. Y'all stick around. We'll have Woody up here in the booth with us here soccer in a little bit. Soccer expert, yeah. He is the Chad's Media Front Porch yeah. News soccer guy. Woodrow. It's the proper way. That's his proper name. <laughs> Sir Woodrow. <laughs> I bet we'll have a Coach Faircloth tuning in with us yep. here tonight. Now, is this Jackson on the back line now? Yes, has I he, believe has so. Has he been playing there? Yes. I, n I literally just noticed that the last possession we were down here. And I, is, I was going to ask you the same thing. That is it. So, I, no I noticed Brito in the attacking position. Uh -huh. um, but I I believe he was uh, – I believe Jackson was playing 
either mid or, a, or right. Forward. This might be over the course of the last couple of seasons. This might be like the third different spot we've kind of seen <laughs> yeah. Jackson in. He's a he's a Swiss Army knife. Just a versatile little guy. Just <laughs> That's a good throw in, man. Let's just get it out of danger. Yep, good job to just. Kind of get it out of there. And with Jackson and Garrett back there, I feel really confident about our back line as well. I mean, yeah, for sure. Their ability to chase somebody down. I mean, even just you saw with Noah Hill there. God, I mean, he's fast, but right. You're, I'm not going to say he's going to outrun Jackson, but it's going to be close. Especially if he's having to dribble and you uh -huh. know possess the ball at the same time. Yeah, those two might uh, give each other a nice little matchup. Tonight. Oh, it's going to be fun to watch. Your Buller really spreading it out. They do a, like we said. They do a really good job of possessing the ball, man. Mm -hmm. Just a shot on goal from deep. It's gonna no danger there. And I don't mind taking a couple deep shots to start. Let's see. Yeah, what this, for sure. Let's see how this goalkeeper's hands are. Is he is he sure with it? Does he bobble it a little bit? Especially how crowded they get in close. I mean, yes. the closer you get, it's gonna be tougher and tougher. If you've got an Eric or someone like that that can like pull up from deep, yeah, get get some shots. Well, off. if he if he's bobbling it early, it'll kind of tell uh -huh. your forwards, hey, if there's a deep shot, keep attacking because you may be able to get a foot on it and and see something happen. And especially with as good as their defense is, it's gonna take some. Something goofy is, right. is more than likely going to have to happen. You're going to have to have a really good chance um, on goal here today. Upton's throwing his hands up about something. I couldn't tell what he was upset about. But and that back line for Buller is just stout. Yeah, they absolutely are. I mean, they're, they're sure-footed. <coughs> they're not letting anything get away from them. There's the soon-to-be professional Garrett Robinson. Yeah. Ooh, cheeky. I like it. You can tell them playing FIFA. Uh-huh. It's, it's a good attempt. It is. Little under – or a little past the 10-minute mark here in this uh, first half. Corey Clayton Holmes of Silver Springs is hiring home-building team members – Home building team members starting pay is $23 an hour with opportunities to grow. They provide excellent benefits, including paid time off to support causes that you care about. Join their team and build your career with Clayton today. If you're interested in applying, give them a call at 903-439-0242. Also going to have to chase this one down, so that gives me a <laughs> good chance to tell you about our friends over at Muddy Jake's. They're your home for delicious food and the best sports entertainment. With a lively atmosphere, friendly service, and great prices, Muddy Jake's is the perfect place to watch any big game. Be sure to go on Monday nights for Trivia Night and Thursday nights for Queen of Hearts. I don't have what the next Trivia Night is, but tune in with us on Friday, and I'll let you know what the uh, the next Trivia Night is. I know they had Hip Hop Trivia Night recently. Why didn't you go to that? I, I wanted to, man. I, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. But you and Fair, if if it had been you know like old school hip hop, Faircloth would have been in that. He'd have been. Ready We've to go. learned that apparently yes. he would be good at that. Yeah. Oh. Oh. There Sneaky. That was a little scary there for a second. <laughs> Is that Woodrow right there? BT's got a boot. Ooh, Woodrow's joining us. Oh, we're going to have Woody a lot yeah. sooner than we thought we would. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Rub hands like Birdman over here, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure the, the viewers and listeners at home will be glad <laughs> to have Woody. They're like, get somebody on here <laughs> with some steak expertise. And like I said, this back line... <laughs> this back line for both teams is solid. I mean, with Garrett and Jackson, I'm trying mm -hmm. to see who who's in the middle there. Um, but you can see them. They're tagging Noah Hill and wh whoever this number four is for Bullard. They're tagging them. They're not letting them get a lot of space. Now, I mean, they're doing a great job. That's a phenomenal job by Garrett right there. Going to get some subs here. Yeah, you got to think, especially for – the guys like Garrett Robinson. You've been a huge part of this program for, you know, three, four years yeah. now. You're about to move on. You already know where your next step is, but this is your last chance yeah. with these guys that you've been playing with to make another deep playoff run. It, and it, he may have been – I'm not sure, but he may have been a part of that team that made was. that last if, uh, if deep I run. If I had to guess, I bet he was. I would guess at very least he was like a JV kid that had gotten called up or something. Yeah, he was at least on the team. Right. For sure. Now, you had told me. 
I don't. I'm not going to make you quote the source, but you had told me that there were some experts out there that were picking both the Sulphur Springs Wildcats and, and Lady Cats to make it all the way to the regional final. Yes. Yeah, so um, how cool were, would that? There be? was a soccer podcast, and, and if you want to go watch it, I had to kind of scrub through it to find it. Mm-hmm. But um, if you go to Twitter or X, sorry, no, nope. uh, don't do that. <laughs> it's always going to be Twitter. Uh oh, don't do that. But Upton on the, uh, I believe it was Silver Springs Boys soccer Twitter account that he he had retweeted it. Nice. And um, yeah, there there were some people giving both the Lady Cats and the Wildcats some some major respect. That sure would be something. Oh yeah. And again, good opportunity here, but Bullard's just really good defensively. Eric Rodriguez wanting to do something here. Yeah, he's sneaking in there. This is the guy you'd want. Got his Chick-fil-A cup. Woody's coming in. He cu- he stays ready. Man, that is just a great job defensively. Yep. <laughs> yeah, settle in, Woody. It's going to be a long night. Woody, how was the drive over here, my man? Easy peasy. There we Easy go. Peasy. Lemon squeezy, baby. Woody, welcome in, buddy. I didn't realize we were going to get you for this long. You're on pretty much all night with us now. There you go. It was. Uh, we were listening on the way. It was pretty neat. I remember driving a lot further than this for district not too long ago before yeah. we moved down. Oh, for real? You're having to talk about like going all the way to Marshall and <laughs> or a bunch of bunch of long drives. Hallsville. Marshall was. Yeah, Marshall was a beat down. We did that a Louisiana. few times. You're getting home at like after midnight. Woody, what are the vibes like today for this doubleheader? But you know, I the the vibes for the doubleheader it's pretty cool, man. It's yeah. unique that we got to do it last year, but getting mm-hmm. to do it again. The you know same same exact you know school playing boys and girls back to back, pretty neat. Obviously, I don't know as much about the boys right. team just because we always play at the same time they right. do. Right, never really getting to see them like that. But what a cool thing for the fans. 1, a lot of people, unless they have kids that are boys and girls that play soccer, a lot of the fans don't have a chance to see. Right. Very you rarely know, get to see both of them play, yeah. So, looks like we got a few a few folks down here, and as, you know, people get off work and trickle in, mm-hmm. I think, by the second half and going into the girls' game, I hopefully bet we'll, we'll get, have a good crowd. get these stands pretty packed. Yeah, not only do you get to see two Silver Springs soccer teams play tonight, you get to see two district champion Silver, Spring, Silver Springs soccer teams play tonight. And uh, Corey was just telling us this right when you walked on air, but he was saying that there was a podcast he had seen that had predicted both the boys and girls to make it all the way to the regional final. Hey, that would be be, be pretty good. If that happened, that would be – I believe that would be records for both of them. That would be records yeah. for both of them, I believe. To do it at the same time would be cool. It's like corner kick Sulphur Springs. Nice corner, and Jackson hair takes, taking it up. I heard you guys talking about the interesting hairdos. Yeah. And I've seen a couple of interesting hairdos. Yep. Jackson hair, one of yeah, them. Jackson sporting hair, there. one of them. That's that's my neighbor. So if I had some hair, I might. All right, I was about to say, are you not going to do that for the playoffs? <laughs> Get the playoff beard going, maybe. You know, and I, I heard y'all talking too. It sounds like that this Bullard team is like a possession. They uh-huh. like to they ping passes together. Yes. One thing you know about Alexi's teams, they're high paced, mm-hmm. and they they're trying they're going to try to hit some counter and and build it up pretty quick. So Can you kind of walk styles. us through that? What it's like when those two different styles kind of clash with each other? Well, I mean, if you're a possession-based team, you know, you're you're going to exa- – that, that's the whole intent. You're trying to work the field up, uh, work the ball up the field with passes. Mm-hmm. And it's not always forward. It's pinging passes, you know, using the width of the field, creating some lanes, and just more of a slowly work and maybe pick it, picking and choosing. Probably more similar to the way the Lady Cats play. We mm-hmm. try to choose our lanes and choose our time. They're going to try to catch – our Sulphur Springs uh, Wildcats, they're going to try to catch Bullard – uh, you know they're pressing forward. They catch a mistake, and they're they're going right right off the bat. I guess try the, to hit uh, a lane, try to make a run. I mean, and, and like you know, shove it down their throat. The, the turnover and the counterattack is typically pretty good on an Alexi Upton team. I would guess the advantage in that would be if you're Sulphur Springs and you are the more fast-paced team. If you can get a one or two goal lead, now you force Bullard to really yeah, play a different would, style of soccer. It would it would, uh, it would definitely change the dynamics for sure, especially in a playoff matchup type scenario. So anyway. That's typically what I'm used to seeing. Mm-hmm. You know, I just got here, uh, but I I, uh, I fully expect to see something along those lines as well. Just always fast-paced, always in shape, pure athletes. They're going to be out there, you know, working hard from whistle to whistle. Hey, 
I will say I feel like it's been fairly even as far as the possessions go here tonight. There's the pace we're talking about. And we're going to possess some too. I mean, we're going to find some feet and things, but we're trying to move it forward and, and create some lanes. And they just gave the ball right back yep. up to us. So see how that was just a, you know, a turn like right back, just right. going. And foul called. But we're going quick. But, it, you know, to ultimately your original question, in high school ball, if I'm painting with a broad brush, it's a lot of longer ball. Creating some runs, using gotcha. athleticism over the top. Try, I mean – if that's there, it's going to happen no matter what team. If they had an opportunity to do that, Buller's going to do that to For us. For sure. I mean, that's very, very common to use athleticism and speed and high school ball in more of a direct style of play. So they're just being patient. I like it. I, possess, I think possession soccer is the most fun to watch. It's Corey, just, <laughs> Corey, give me a nod of approval. I mean, it's just fun. I mean, right there, they're not in any hurry. Look at that, using the width of the field. Uh-oh, but, I mean, there you go. We're creating a little pressure, mm -hmm. but, hey. Finding fit. You can tell they, they they practice finding it. Look at this right winger out here. They close the gap on the lane. We're making it difficult yeah. on them, though. Forced a turnover. That's pressure good pressure. The pipe, Woody. Pressure so, I mean, the pipe. If, you, if you look at the just now the right wing, number eight, was wide open. They did not serve the ball over to him. And so, Sulphur Springs did a good job of getting right in the middle of that lane and, mm -hmm. and took away the passing option. And really, they had no options. Got dribbled it right out of bounds, but – like that was Nicholas Braddy who just checked in for the Wildcats. There you go. So, I mean, it looks – are we playing a three-back? Are we playing three on defense or was it the – we are? Okay. So, that is is that something we started – I heard you say that Jackson moved back there. Is mm -hmm. that something we started with was a three-back also? So, what you're going to see on that – is which you got to have some athleticism back there to do that and people that are going to be you know as close to mistake free soccer mm -hmm. that you can do but you're also going to have to have some winger support so when it's on the defensive side you're going to see the wingers pull back and assist on defense more and when it's on the fought they're going to be running and patrolling the sidelines all night gotcha. long they should be collapsing and helping the defense when when they're on, you know getting attacked and then then when they're part of the attack they should be up there pressing the back line so they're, it's really – they're counting on them for, you know, two different facets of the game uh, with this particular type formation. And there is Brady who checked in for uh, Garrett Robinson, giving him a much-needed breather. Yeah, and it seems like we're getting a lot of more of slow play – slow-paced possession soccer, which for the Wildcats we haven't really seen a lot of that mm -hmm. in district. They've Do you think that's something you see more of in the postseason? Probably. You're probably facing better, better defenses – um, it just depends on what – I mean, yeah, I, that's true. not many teams – I mean, I guess some of the elite level, these are going to win a state championship somewhere or another, but mm -hmm. not too many. Most of the time, you're going to see their style is their style. Gotcha. There's not a whole lot of tactical adjustment and in, in where they're going to completely change. Really, really good high-level teams can, can adjust depending on what's going on in the game. Most of the people – it is what it is. There's going to be some, you know, formation changes and things like that. But the style is the style. It's hard to flip a switch at this level and right. and uh, and change it. A lot of, I mean, a lot of it. Style is based on your personnel. I mean, and but you have. I mentioned Alexi earlier. I mean, he that his style is that, and that's kind of the players he's grooming to come mm -hmm. up from the next level to get ready for this type of of uh, high octane, you know, fast paced offense. And like I said, you're going to be in shape. Yeah, it's an interesting balance in having, like, your style and finding the personnel that fits it or finding a style, you know, having to adjust that to fit the personnel you have at any given time. Sure. That's part of coaching, too. they got to figure out the pieces of the puzzle, who they're going to sub in, when they're going to mm -hmm. sub in. You see, you know, Garrett came off, but now they're subbing somebody else back off yep. uh, and, 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 you know, finding different positions and things. Yeah, Robinson already back in there. Real quick, do you need a custom T-shirt, hat, or other apparel? The Gypsy Willow loves making your ideas come to life. Send them an email to sales at tjwcustomapparel.com or visit their website, thegypsywillow.com, to learn more and get started. Also, let me tell you about our friends Marcy Gamble and Mike Ashidi over at Amidus Healthcare, both of which have over a decade of experience. 
Amidus specializes in after-surgery care or after-hospitalization or a new diagnosis of chronic illness. They also offered skilled nursing as well as physical, occupational, and speech therapies on top of medical social work and certified nurse aides. And looks like throw in Bullard. They didn't like something we did over there. This first half flying by, just 16 minutes left here. So far, I mean, just uh, y'all have been here longer than I have the whole game, but it looks pretty evenly matched. There's mm -hmm. some, you know, back and forth, but it seems like we've pretty much kept it on on uh, that mid to to the Bullard side of the the field so far, and and uh, I would say possessions fairly even, you know, back and forth and everything. But where the actual ball's located, they haven't been pressing much since I got here. I hope it stays that way tonight. Yeah, I was definitely expecting low scoring. These are two teams that are allowing like less than or right at one goal per game. So. And this is interesting too. Set pieces, corner kicks, free kicks, all these. I mean, they're they're dangerous, and they'll. they'll uh, so that's something that we've done a couple of times. I've seen. I mean, we're we're, we're rainbowing these corner mm -hmm. kicks over, but it's coming way past the 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 far post. And so if we keep if we keep serving up balls with that much uh, leg on them, I'd see. Uh, I'd look for us to adjust and maybe have a couple of more. Uh, Wildcat players over there to, to have a chance for us. Or take a little bit off the corners a little bit. But, hey, it's playoff hype. Mm -hmm. They're excited. I get it. I will say, not to sound like a broken record, but Bullard looks very comfortable and confident down there. They yeah. don't they don't look nervous at all on the interior. Now they, they're, they're pretty, pretty patient back there. Love the look we had there from uh, Caleb Timar. So doing an incredible job as always. Are you say, uh, so basically? Obviously, we won district. You're saying they slipped to fourth this year? Yes. Yep. This was a four seed Bowler team. So they they know, and I haven't been. I haven't seen this too, but I'd like to see. I haven't really been paying attention to it as much because the the field hadn't been spread out. But at one point they collapsed. They might have been playing two holding mids. So I mean, if there's six people on defense. They might just be trying to protect it. You mentioned we scored 55 some odd goals. Mm -hmm. They know that too. They right. know we're fast paced. So if they're hanging back and and uh, going to play ultra defensive, then that makes sense. If if they're not going to be on the offensive as much, but they're counting on a mistake mm -hmm. and some kind of counter on the opposite end when you play that style. That's a handball. Uh, maybe not. So one, two, three, four, five, six ish uh, coming back there. And, I mean, so they're they're defensive heavy, they they're which that happens. A lot of people played the Lady Cats the same exact way when you scored sure. a lot of goals. Well, we'll say Bullard had just one game that went into uh, PKs this year. The Wildcats with three, and that's our only two mm -hmm. losses, wasn't it? Yep, went one and two in the PKs, and like you said, both the only two losses they had this year, both of yeah. which were in penalty kicks. Really strong touch there, but we got it right back with a turnover. Bullard's fans traveling a little bit, too. Yeah. It's pretty close for them, though. I mean, right down the road. I mean, it's not too far for Sulphur Springs either, but probably a similar amount of fans in the stand. Yeah, and like you said, it's very early for, you know, especially Tuesday evening. Might see more and more fans trickle in throughout the course of the night. I want to tell everyone about our friends over at Jayhod Chevrolet. They have the most awarded vehicles at the most awarded dealership. Their knowledgeable sales staff is ready to help you find the car of your dreams. They're even such big supporters of the Sulphur Springs Wildcats that they're located on Wildcat Way. Find new roads at Jayhod Chevrolet. And remember, don't overpay. Go see Jay. Twelve twenty-four left here. In the first half, I want to say about our good friend Katie Adair with Janet Martin Realty. When you work with Katie, you get more than just a realtor. You get a trusted partner who is active in the community and cares about you and your family's future. So if you're looking for a realtor who is passionate about finding you and your family the perfect home, be sure to call her at 903-243-2304. We've got some Sulphur Springs fans down there walking with all their posters and such. Oh, nice. I know the one lady very well. It's my wife. <laughs> Point down there. Corey, you keeping us updated on Lady Cat softball over there, huh? That's what a producer does. This man is just. Where they playing at tonight? Beyond. PG. Yeah. Oh my goodness, laser beam. 
They're at PG or they're playing them? They're they're at home against PG. Gotcha. Lady Cats off to a great start in district play. If I'd have thought about it, I have a thousand and one stats about the, the Lady Cats softball team. Could have brought some of those for you, but I'm nice. very much – I got all my soccer stats tonight. I heard Corey giving you a compliment. You, I know you shared some stats with me for the – for both games and everything as well. Pretty neat uh, to be able to have that info and uh, makes the broadcast yeah, for uh, sure. more fun when you kind of put some of the, the results into perspective as well and, and match up what you're seeing right there on the field. That's what you get when you've been a sports nerd your whole life. You're like, ooh, let me find any little note or nugget I can find, yeah. And I like this. One of the linesmen is a female. Mm -hmm. And so as a dad of uh, two daughters, that, you like to see that. You don't see that a whole lot in the soccer world uh, locally here, but – uh, you know, we appreciate the refs and have have three refs at the game. Absolutely. Uh, important playoff game, and refs are becoming few and far between, so we're, we're happy to have them down here. So, big night for them as well. And it's winding down, too. Two it minutes is. left in the half, so. We're going quick. Braddy coming up, making a play, and comes through the – I mean, my gosh, they're coming through traffic, and – so we can play a little possession ball too mm -hmm. when we really feel like it. They're capable, but they're going to try to they're going to try to create some run with that. And and because if you're if you're getting somebody with some speed running down your throat, you're prone to make mistakes. Right. And they're pinging passes and, and making runs. At some point, as there's a transition, I would think that's where you're going to see our speed, and and that's going to be the difference maker and figuring out if we can put the ball in the back of the net. And with them. They're packing everybody in and a lot of times leaving the Lone Ranger up top and it's three of our defenders versus one. They're counting on a mistake, a ball to slip through, something to happen, or a set piece down here to try to get a goal. That looks like kind of the game plan going into it from what I've seen right now. I haven't seen their team stretched just a whole terrible lot yet, um, but it looks like they, they're, they're, they're kind of moving in and, and, and spreading out a little bit more, so. But when it's when it's midfielder back, they're packing it in the back pretty good. But a lot of times you'll see teams never even move more than a few people up front. They're just on the defensive so much. So gotcha. at least they're you know they're they're on the attack as well. So while we chase that one down, when you have a sports injury, Christus Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is the team to trust with fellowship trained sports medicine orthopedic surgeon Dr. Christopher Meltzakos and hand fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon Dr. Christian Douthit. Your health is in good hands. To schedule an appointment in Sulphur Springs, call 903-885-6688. And nice corner kick set piece there. Got into some traffic, though. So throw in for Bullard. And while it did feel very even as far as, like, just possession goes, I feel like this is kind of the first we're seeing them having it on this side for, for an extended period of time in a minute. Yeah, they worked it out. I mean, that's what's dangerous, though. We talked about it a minute ago. The set piece, and that's a throw in that's like a mm -hmm. corner kick. So is that a goal kick? But the, when there's corner kicks, when there's free kicks, there's just stuff that happens. There's a little bit of luck involved and some positioning. And a lot of skill involved, but those are what make you nervous. That's what they want. They want to be down here with some opportunities, just like they got. So goal kick for Sulphur Springs coming out. You would mentioned more people with the fun hair. Number one, one Santa Cruz who just came off. He's got – it looks like red, white, and blue. I like that. Hey, man, that's whatever, whatever makes you pumped up. He's got like the, uh, the, uh, the white part looks like a mohawk mm -hmm. part of it, so – if I had some hair, you know, that'd be pretty uh – oh, look <laughs> at this ball. See if he can bring it down. He's totally on and using some speed. Let's see if they cross it. Nice cut. Nice cut. No, oh my gosh. Nice. Nice little negative ball over there from the right wing. I'm, who is that? Like, uh, do you know what number that is? I cannot I can't see, from see his here. number from here. But number 18. So, it looks like Jimmy Garcia. Yes. So, nice little run, use some use some technique and some speed, and that's a foul for us. No? Nope. No foul. I heard somebody hollering about it, too, in the stands. But uh, not, use some speed and some technical ability and and really created a nice little op opportunity for us, a goal-scoring opportunity. You know, passed it across the face of the goal, negative ball, and we had a one-touch opportunity. Mm -hmm. That might be the only way you get a score tonight. So, yeah. a breakaway doesn't seem like it's going to be probable – 
unless we get some type of mistake from, from there. They've got a pretty poised defense, it looks like, and they're not doing anything crazy or stabbing at the ball or anything. Yeah, they've been pretty solid down there. Almost ready for – or almost to our first A&S halftime show of the night. One of two, I guess, we'll be getting here tonight. There you go. Eric kicking it out to Brian Medina. Uh-oh, nice turn. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's a foul. That is not in the bite. I don't think it was. I think it was right outside. And and uh, it does look like at the 10-yard line looks at it, but the, the box is a gray line. And so I think yep. it was just a hair outside. Right outside it. Yeah, the gray it's does blend time, edges a little bit. Prime time yellow. We've got Brian Medina down here, I believe, Brito and Rodriguez as well. And their uh, ref stepping off the 10. So, yeah, a lot of time you're going to see – so who's going to kick it? Is it going to go left? Is it going to go right? What they're trying to do right here, for anybody watching that doesn't know at home, they're trying to confuse the keeper. Where are they trying to line up their wall? Which one of these – are they going to do a left-footed shot? Oh, oh, right, oh. And so they went left, right. Oh, oh. Sulphur Springs Wildcats, go! Let's go! That so we were just gorgeous. talking about it. So a little misdirection. Are they, are they going to go left-footed shot, right-footed shot? They did the old double reverse. Man, that was beautiful. What a beautiful goal. Set pieces. We just talked about yes. it. They're dangerous. What a finish. Who just got that, I believe guys? that was Matthew Brito. Wow. He was Good third job, on sir. the team in uh, total points this season with 13, second on the team in goals with eight, so now he's at nine and 14. Incredible job from him there. That is the hardest part, I would imagine, as a keeper. I've never been out there as a keeper, but just you're trying to line up a wall and you're trying to create the angle where you can be in the right position to give yourself the best probability to block the shot. So they're trying to anticipate who's kicking that ball. Mm -hmm. And they just created some confusion. And, I mean, even us, we were looking at right. it like, oh, oh, I mean, wow, what a finish. That was beautiful. Found the back corner. Nice wave. You know, four minutes left in the half, and we got a lot of momentum going. And, Ooh. oh, nice shot. <laughs> it was. Hey, something has to be said for Mojo. Like, I know y'all are all into sports across the board. Momentum is a real thing. Absolutely. It's amazing. Y'all are watching all this basketball going on. Y'all see it happening. One goal for us, and we are we have them on their heels. Yeah, that was a perfect timing to go ahead and get that first goal. First half winding down, just 420 left. And this is where you want to see. They've been pretty poised and intentional. This Bullard team's a good little team. Can they – I always talk about composure. Can they maintain it? Can they right. re get, regroup and keep on trucking and, and solidify their defense? Or are they going to get in and start trying to force something before halftime? Sometimes they do that, and, I mean, that goals comes in bunches sometimes. You know, that sometimes they do not. But, right. Boy, that would be sweet. To your point, I mean, Bullard had played pretty much mistake-free soccer up to that point, yeah. just allowing that opportunity there. And it was just a foul at a bad time. That's the mistake we're talking about. It doesn't necessarily have to be something where they stab at something, but that's, that's part of it. They made the mistake of fouling, which was darn near in the box, mm -hmm. but we still capitalized the same way as if it was a PK. And not another mistake, and that's uh, okay. And turnovers, yes, Sulphur Springs. Ernesto Serving Alvarez. it back up on the outside. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Nice, nice job by the outside back there for Bullard. Uh, really contesting the shot, not give us an easy easy shot on goal because that kid looks like he could have buried it if he would have been yeah, open. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that was Cristobal Torres over there. Yeah, that's – I think that was Jimmy Garcia, right? Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, I think that's the same kid that made the run a minute ago. Nice run on the outside. Really kind of started some momentum for us. Oh, okay. Here we go. We want to keep possession out here. I get it. And if you look at it, these boys are not scared for the 1v1 opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a foul away from the ball. And no call there. Making a little run for Bullard. They're letting them play advantage. Okay. Oh, nice tackle. So, essentially what's happening here, so it was a foul right by the, about the 42 where they're lining up for their free kick. The ref says play on. What that is, that's an, it's called an advantage. So, Bullard was on a run. They did have an advantageous position on the field. 
they're actually even carding our, our young man. But so they let him keep on with the run. So they're not penal. They got a foul, but they're not penalizing the team on a nice little run. They just let them finish it out, and then came back and carded, and so uh, and taking care of business right there. So it was pretty pretty hard tackle. I uh, can't say I disagree with that, but. A nice advantage. It's a bummer when you don't get an advantage call by ref and you're on a big run and you're, about, right. you're on a goal-scoring mission and they whistle the, the ball dead. So that's a, a really good job by the ref there. So time stops here with 2.29 left here in the half. A couple of hard tackles out there. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, well, that's soccer for you. And that's part of what we were talking about the other night. It's that ref's job. He, it's a playoff game. It's playoff soccer, playoff ref crew. And you know exactly what they stand for. Right. They've let them play tough and physical, but at some point uh, they're going to get it under control, and 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 everybody's got to be careful. Especially the young man just got carded. He's going to be playing a little more carefully for sure uh, throughout the rest of the night, because you know what happens if he gets another card. Yeah, you would have to miss. He's out the yes. rest of the game, and they're down one player the yep. rest of the game, and he'll miss the next game. Yeah, he'll definitely make so you play that, a little more conservatively. So the when rest you're of the game. an intense team and player and it changes the dynamic a little bit when when the cards come out you know yeah and to your point officiating i feel like definitely going to find a good line of finding that line between letting them play but also not and, letting it get out of hand or anything and, and uh really it's that center ref that's going to be uh, you know that's what you got to figure out what's the ref's line some people will let you play a little bit more some people will be a little bit more conservative and pretty much right into the game you're going to figure out what they stand for and good refs will make it real clear on on how they're going to manage the game and, uh, you know, it looks like these guys are doing it as well. So, Jackson Air trying to clear it there. Just 1.23 left in the half. So it wouldn't surprise me if we just kind of leisurely go walk. Yeah, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to kind of hang out. We got a minute left, minute 15. And uh, so our guy's barely jogging, and that's about what I would do, go into halftime for with, sure. a, with a 1-0 lead. And uh, that's good gamesmanship right there, uh, nonchalant. Yeah, 40, min 40 minutes ago, if they would have asked you, hey, we'll give you one of the lead at the half, you'd be like, yep, I'll take that for sure. Take it all day long. Especially with these two teams, again, playing very good, you know, essentially mistake-free soccer so far. Yeah. Into the final minute now. Uh-oh, so we're going to try to create a little run just like we're doing. Bullard's there. They're patient. But here we go. A bad touch, 30 seconds left. See if we can bring it down. Oh, nice touch. What just happened here? Uh, okay. Oh, they gave a throw in to Bullard. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. <laughs> you doing the LeBron over there? Just 10 seconds left in the half. And that might be card. I mean, it was he was slipping through the defense, and it was a very, very smart foul because we were not in a good position. And uh, he looks like – is he getting a card out? No? No, I don't think nope. Don't think he is. So, hey, smart foul. Hey, not all fouls are bad fouls. We were in a bad spot. The uh -huh. kid was – we were. We got caught slipping a little bit. He drug him down, stopped the game, ended the half. There you go. So that will do it. Uh, for the first half of this first game here in Lindo, we are now ready for our halftime show, which, as always, is brought to you by our friends over at ANS Air Conditioning. Are you having problems finding comfort in your own space? Let ANS find a perfect solution for your heating and cooling needs. They've been providing affordable heating and AC repair for over 31 years. Be sure to give them a call for their spring maintenance package, where uh, for $180, they'll check your system, check free on, and uh, clean coils, and then $110 for each additional unit. Also, huge congratulations to the to the new owners, Scotty Reed and Kevin Gibson. So, as always, we appreciate them for bringing us today's or tonight, today, both tonight and today's halftime shows. We've got plenty to get into, but first, let's hear from some of our friends, and then we'll be back for the ANS halftime show. Air Conditioning is your family-owned and operated hometown air conditioning business. We have been serving the heating and cooling needs of Hopkins and surrounding counties for over 31 years. We work hard to provide award-winning customer service on every call, and our friendly service techs are available 24 hours a day. We offer the industry's highest rated products, servicing all brands. Whether it's new or existing, residential or commercial, ANS Air Conditioning is here to serve you. Call us today at 903 885 8072 and let us help make your home or business comfortable and more efficient. Hi, I'm Erin Neal, the principal agent and owner of Hamby Insurance. 
I am passionate about serving the local community and the surrounding areas. My goal is to take the hassle out of buying insurance. I want to educate you on what you're buying and help you make an informed decision. Whether it's personal or commercial insurance, my team and I will be here every step of the way to make sure you are getting the satisfaction you need and the coverage you deserve. My promise to you is that we will never hard sell you insurance, use slick sales techniques, or pressure you into making a decision that you're not comfortable with. Call us today at 972-285-0381 to find the best coverage to fit your need. My commitment is to give you unparalleled service, and remember, Hamby helps. You ready to make your dream of owning a new home a reality? Look no further than Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs. A little over an acre of land complete with rock driveway and a spacious two-car garage on a solid concrete slab. Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs is offering you the chance to buy this incredible lot and pick out the perfect home. Visit Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs today and let us help you turn this beautiful lot into your very own sanctuary. Come see me and my team at Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs and experience the difference. Our experienced, dedicated team are your local roofing experts from repairs to complete roofing systems. With competitive prices and free consultation, Triple Crown is the choice when it comes to roofing. Triple Crown Roofing offers the highest quality craftsmanship and customer care, specializing in all commercial and residential roofing systems. We believe in personalized service and are with you every step of the roofing process. Contact Triple Crown Roofing today. Triple Crown Roofing, roofing done right. With Weary Pools, your backyard oasis will always be in pristine condition, leaving you more time to relax and enjoy. We have the knowledge and expertise to keep your pool water crystal clear and perfectly balanced so you can focus on making unforgettable memories with your loved ones. Whether it's routine maintenance, pool repairs, or equipment installations, Weary Pools has you covered. We take care of the hard work so you can simply dive in and have fun. Don't let pool maintenance become a hassle. Contact Weary Pools today and let us handle all your pool service needs. Because when it comes to your pool, only the best will do. problems can make you feel strapped down. Let Essential Business Solutions take care of all your IT needs. Managed IT services, disaster recovery and backup solutions, new hardware, and other IT services as needed. Yes. Set up a consultation today. Whether you're looking to shop for the right set of Michelin tires for whatever you drive, brakes, or are interested in customizing your ride with a suspension lift kit, you can rely on Discount Wheel and Tire of Sulphur Springs for accurate, knowledgeable, and friendly automotive and tire services. Since 1994, we have built a solid base of customers and established the reputation of being an automotive repair facility with service you can count on. We believe in personal customer service. We consider it an honor to serve you and our community. For reliable tire and auto repair, look no further than your local discount wheel and tire. I'm Josh Boatman, your local and trusted insurance agent. With a family of my own, I understand the importance of protecting the ones that matter the most. I understand that no two families need the same covers. That's why I will make sure to customize plans to fit your specific needs from auto, home, farm and ranch, commercial, and especially life insurance. Don't just take it from me, but from one of my clients who has stated, it has been the easiest insurance buying experience I've ever had. Life insurance is one of the most important coverages that you have to protect your family. If you can protect your home and auto, why not yourself for your family? Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost ready for the second half of our first game, the first game of this doubleheader tonight. Silver Springs Wildcats currently leading over Bullard with a, a score of one to nothing. It was a goal late in that first half that gave the Wildcats a lead. Almost ready for the second half, about 420 until we do get started. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with us during the ANS halftime show. A few other of our friends that I want to tell you about. The stadium at Burgerland. Go see our friends over at the stadium at Burgerland where they pride themselves on exceptional food with equally exceptional service. Their Burgerland promises that the tea is sweet. The burgers are greasy, and the large fries are indeed large, where the food is fresh and they cook right in front of you. Don't take our word for it. Next time you're in the mood for a good old-fashioned burger, visit their lively hole-in-the-wall joint on the square. Come see how they are creating Burgerland fans one burger at a time. Their hours are 11 to 2 on Wednesday, and then 11 to 8 Thursday through Saturday. And you can usually find Corey and I there about once a week, so stop by anytime. 
will probably be there. I also want to tell you about our friends at BT Medical. Go visit their store where you can find wheelchairs and hospital beds as well as many other necessary medical equipment. And don't worry, if you can't leave the house, they offer convenient delivery as well as 24-7 on-call services. Keep your business local with BT Medical. And again, we, we thank every single one of our advertisers so much. We wouldn't be able to do all of this uh, uh, without them. We've been having a great year, and uh, we are very much looking forward to continuing next year. If you want to be a part of it, if you want to join uh, as an advertiser, please contact Mandy, Mandy at chadsmedia.com. A few spots left, so hopefully uh, she'll be able to get you in. But, yeah, almost ready for the second half of action here live from Lindell. Again, it was a late goal in that first half from, uh, I believe, Matthew Brito, who had uh, was able to, to drain that. And again, both of these teams have, for the most part, played mistake-free soccer through that first half. Bullard makes pretty much just one mistake there on the defensive end, but it does cost him uh, with a goal from Matthew Brito. Yeah, it really was just the foul that kind of led to that, you know, shot on goal. And I think Woody, you know, kind of explained it perfectly, what they were doing with the three guys up there, you know, quote-unquote taking the kick, you know. And so great set piece and, you know, it's it's when you when you anytime you get a chance with your set pieces you really need to have a good opportunity yeah. on goal and it's not an easy shot if you think if it, if it's from further out you can beam one in from you know over the line and maybe dip it in but from the it's, the the outside box that's they call it the 18 cuz it's 18 yards from the goal and so you so you're lined up literally 19 yards out and then the and then the they have to the defenders have to be ten yards away from where you're kicking the ball, yeah. and they they had to wrap it around, and so that that's because they couldn't go over, but they just misaligned and and, and couldn't misdirected go them, so over it, good. it can't yeah. go under. There you know, you got to go through it, but no, that's my that's my toddlers speaking through me, you know. It but happens. no, you're you're right on. That's a tough shot, and hats off to Matthew Brito for, I mean, just nailing it, man. That was it was beautiful. It's perfect. How long of a halftime was this? Ten minutes. Man, it sure didn't feel like it. No, it didn't. Well, I think they started it as they were walking off. Like it, it I think it was like nine twenty by the time uh, we went to commercial break. So, yeah, they're getting after it. Almost ready for the second half again. Thank you so much for joining us here for the second half for Bullard versus Sulphur Springs to see who will advance to the area round where they would face, I believe, the winner of uh, Palestine Sabine. Is that correct? I had it written down. Yes, Palestine and Sabine, which would be if the Wildcats do win, and so does Palestine, that would be a rematch of the area round for them. And then don't go anywhere because right after, what, maybe 15, 20 minutes after, maybe not even, we'll have Tyler Chapel Hill versus the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats, which is a rematch of last year's bi-district match for them uh, where the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats were able to win, I believe, a 9 to nothing shutout. So very excited That's correct. for all of that. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with us during the A&S halftime show. We appreciate them, as always. Uh, for bringing us all of the halftime coverage. Almost ready for the second half, but before we start, I want to remind everyone that April 15th is right around the corner, so be sure to go see our friends over at DMB Loans. Walk-ins are welcome, and they currently have both extended hours and Saturdays open. With over 30 years of tax experience, they're the team to trust. They also have electronic filing available to make that uh, a little more convenient for everyone. And we also want to tell you... Sorry. We also want to tell you about our good friends over at East Texas physical therapy they are a provider of physical therapy and rehabilitative services here in Sulphur springs after a visit to east texas physical therapy each patient will know what it means to have service beyond excellence and they hope that you will return to their facility for all your rehab needs wasn't able to get that dmb loans logo up in time so i want to make sure we give them some uh, some love again april 15th right around the corner they've got 30 years of tax experience they're the ones you're gonna want to call so our good buddy joel t meyer texted me he's here he's like y'all need to get me on i was like hey Come on, dude. Come on. Come on. You know the Let's soccer. Go. He can he can help us weigh in on the way Bible by, dude, player of the game. I think he hey, should get to pick. Oh There's nobody. There, oh, there he is. There he is. Here nobody better suited to do so. <laughs> What's going on, man? What's going on, guys? How are y'all? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. You're not not used to talking to a mic at all, huh? <laughs> Once in a while. So you gonna help us pick tonight's way Bible church player of the game? Oh, we I'd feel love like to. No one more more suited to do so. Be pretty pretty cool. So, were you by chance listening to the game on the way over here? Sometimes it's a little spotty reception on the way from Sulphur Springs, but actually we uh, got here early. I was listening to it down okay. there. Oh, okay, cool. While watching it, so you saw the goal. That was yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. It was man. gorgeous. What a, I mean, that's what we were just talking about too, Joel. 
it was right about 19 yards away. By the time you back him up 10 yards away, that's not an easy goal to bury. No. Really, he, I mean. He buried in the back corner. It was solid. A little bit of confusion there. They, yep. I mean, I was a little, it was pretty Yeah, they lined up three guys and they didn't know which one was going to take the shot. Yeah. So, it just makes me feel like they might have lined up, you know, they did the best they could. But, man, it was exciting to, hey, man, anytime a goal scored, it's exciting. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Man, I came up these stairs a minute ago and I was like you know I get off work I ran up here like skipping a stair and I came up here <gasps> so I had to like get, catch my breath before yes. I came up here put the headset oh, on it took you so long to get in here <laughs> well no, I had to make a little pit stop you know but uh so, yes yeah, how you walk in gave your daughter a hug that was awesome yeah proud right. of her well yeah she's having a good season and it's always fun right, oh here goes a little run but Sulphur Springs Juan Santa Cruz Juan Santa Cruz turning on the Jets and nice uh, defensive battle there. Number one, left outside back. Uh, really, really, you know, changed the play a little bit. Played him good. Yeah, Bullard's defense, they, they're they playing solid. They're staying in mm -hmm. good position all the time. And and they really relatively mistake-free other yeah. than they fouled, you know, yeah, right that one outside foul. the box. Yeah. And, I mean, that's – whether it's a – they're stabbing at something or whether it's a foul at an inopportune time, mistakes are mistakes, and yep. who can capitalize on it. And, and really, in playoff soccer, the, the deeper you go, who makes the least amount of mistakes mm -hmm. a lot of times is going to be the winner of a game. And so we, we haven't done anything real wild. We've had some fouls and things towards the end of the first half, but uh, nothing that we can't get past by any means. And hats off to our, hats off to our defense. They play good positioning. They're uh, double teaming up on some people when they get a run. And watching Jackson Hare back there, man, these they got some athletes on the defense. They for sure do. And, it, you know, interesting thing we were talking about, too, Joel, we're playing a three-back setup, which obviously you have to have some speed and athleticism and some toughness to be able to do that. Right. But our wings, uh, our wingers have some speed because they're going to be, all right, what do we got? They're still playing. Okay, I thought there was a foul, but but we, we definitely not – turned it up a notch or two from a physicality standpoint. Um, but we just play quick. Yeah. We turn and burn, and we're trying we to do. connect passes, and we're trying to find lanes. And uh, they are closer to more of a possession style. And nice shot. Oh, that's great, Ooh. great save. Keeper. Nice dive. And All right, time putting to us under pressure a little bit. But, hey. So, I don't mind that at all. And we just spread it back out and kind of reset. So, they're going to yeah. play it back to their keeper. More. Oh, no. Oh, and there's a mistake. mistake we talked about. Oh, Dude. my gosh. That needs to be a goal. It is a goal. Sulphur Springs. Go. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go, Wildcats. What a great. So, it talk about goal. mistakes. It is. Corey, that, help the, me out. What I number mean, is this? Who wow. we got? What a great finish. Sometimes those are the hardest ones. They are. You can hear the footsteps coming. I can yep. see. You can hear the – you can almost feel the whole stadium looking at you. Is it 18? But he finished. It could have been. Uh, let, let's look at the replay. I don't know. Well, we don't have it, unfortunately. Oh, you don't have the replay. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I was too busy trying to see who scored. Oh, I, if go. I would have had the replay, it could have uh, – There you go. Because I believe it was Jaime Garcia's. But you know what's great? So, I mean – that's the two mistakes, two goals. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes teams can make mistake after mistake, and we can't capitalize in right. general. But they've made two mistakes only, and yeah. we've got two goals off of it. That was that's awesome. You played a lot of soccer in your day. You know how yeah. big time that is. Absolutely. And as a defender, that's the worst feeling ever because that's what I played. When you when you just stumble like that and they're able to get around you, and then they just capitalize on it. Man. I will say anyone watching at home, if you had a better view of it than I did up here in the press box, go back. You can on YouTube go back and uh, actually – Rewind and go see the replay as well. Let us know in the comments if I missed who uh, who got that goal. Joe, I said earlier you could help us pick the way Bible Church player of the game. Hopefully, we'll have two of them tonight. Yeah. Man, this is pretty exciting. What? That's tough because we're, we're playing in your face, yeah. tough, fast, physical soccer, and they are hanging back, possessing, and things like that. And that's going to be a tough scenario for these boys. Yeah. I mean, they've they've got to make a little bit of a tactical adjustment. Because there's a lot of time left, but they haven't really done a ton from an attack standpoint. Right. And it's like what you were talking about earlier. When you're a possession team and not an attack team, when you get down, it's hard to make that comeback that you're needing to make. Mm -hmm. And every and it, to and I'm sure too, like they're 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 doing a little bit of a longer ball there. Nice, nice win there. Nice ball brought down. And uh, but. Everybody in high school balls knows how to long ball it when the opportunity is there. Right. So if they get into that mode, that that will be very easy for them to try to you know find somebody and hit a long ball or whatever and use some athleticism. But that would be more of a. It seems like it's it's not necessary yet. A lot of soccer left, but at the same time, protect the set pieces. Absolutely. Corner kicks, free kicks. We don't want to do anything crazy by our box. 
Yeah. We got up a goal with it. We certainly don't want them to get boy like a what one of those type scenarios to be a brand new ball game. But we put a another goal in it, and that's a that's going to be that'll be game. They, they're yeah. they're going to be on their heels already. They're going to second guess yeah. several things happening. And and Sulphur Springs is keeping the pressure on them. They're not letting up. It's they want to put it away and let's get it going. And that is a Lexi Upton style soccer. Right it is. There. I mean. I'd be good for – with at that pace, I'd be good for about three to four minutes of play, and I'd be asking for a sub. I'd be out. <laughs> yeah. And I think three to four minutes would be generous. Yeah. <laughs> the conditioning of these athletes is, yep. is, is amazing. And, so, then, and then so – and obviously I don't get to watch as much because it's always the same time as the Lady Cats, but, like, are they, have they been playing a three-back all year? Is that something special for this particular game? Do you guys know the answer to that? They've been pretty much playing three-back all year. Have you? Yeah. And that's an interesting setup. It's a re- very, very good uh, – are they playing like a 3-5-2? Is that what they're typically yeah. doing? Because obviously as they're expanding and condensing, it, if they're doing it right, it's hard to tell what, what formation they're playing. Yeah. And it's it, – you know, that's kind of what I gathered they were, uh, but, but two center forwards that way. But if a three-back, if your wingers are helping like they're supposed to as well, man, it's it, difficult to deal with. It is because then you have that offensive power. you got that extra guy up front. And they're and clogging up the mid a little bit more too, right? So there's a little, uh, you know, a nice little run here, nice touch. But you got Jackson Hare is a problem yep. to deal with. Absolutely. So, because yep. the style we played when when we were growing up, we played uh, in high school. We played all always play it to the outsides, bring it up on the outsides, and cross it in. Yeah, because we had some tall guys up front yep. to head it in. And Alexi style is like we're going straight down your throat, sure, down the middle. Hey, and you know what? And if there there was a nice little run uh, towards the end of the first half, uh, we called his name out, Jimmy Garcia. Mm-hmm. He had a, he started kind of the mojo happening. Had a nice little run on the wing. Uh, did a little negative ball over, and we had a little one touch. Nice opportunity, and almost scored on it. But uh, they're they're going to go full force. Yeah. However they can get it to get there. That's it's fun to watch for sure. Now we were talking before too. I don't know if you're listening. Now possession's fun to watch. It is fun to watch. But at the same time, when you're going out there and you're a high-octane, fast-paced team, that's fun to watch, too, when it's working. When it's working. It's fun yeah. to watch. When it's not working, it's like, oh, we're so close. You can Sometimes if it's not working, you can kind of feel like you're a turnover machine when you keep trying to you know, right. send it down so much and everything. But it's fun to watch tonight. It's working. You mentioned Garcia not only kind of got the run started late in that first half and then obviously starts the second half with the goal. So Yeah. It's Definitely got to be on the radar for the way Bible Church player of the game. I agree with that for sure. And I just like the unselfishness of the last goal. Like you had two people yeah. up there. He could have dribbled straight up to the keeper and for took sure. the shot, which I've seen done a lot of times. But that, he's like, this guy in the center has got a way better chance, and so I'm just going to play it that, over. He could have been selfish and taken a terrible angle shot. Yep. But, man. Yeah, he I, just I, delivered I, a great ball. So that was uh, Juan Santa Cruz on the assist, and that assist actually now puts him in the lead for the team. He and uh, J.J. Gomez, Eric Rodriguez all were tied at seven assists this season. That was uh, number eight for him. Tough physical soccer. I mean, here we go. Yeah, and the refs are letting him play. I heard you all talking about that a little bit earlier, that they're, that they're letting him play, and I like that. And, you know, and we got a card at the end of the game. That was pretty, that was pretty uh, strong foul. I, yeah. I was okay with the card. But uh, towards the end of the, the first half, uh, right at the very end, ooh, they, they almost caught a slipping, very smart foul by us. Yeah, when he pulled him down. down by the I mean, jersey, that's just yeah. soccer for you. Yeah. I remember doing that multiple times. There you go. Now, I, I would not have been surprised if he would have come over with a little waving a card. Yeah. Kinda, I felt like we might have gotten away with one. But at the same time, this ref has drawn the line. He's going to let him be physical. Sometimes yep. it's like every little touch – Gets a whistle, but this one I like the, letting them play. It's not too crazy. Yeah. It's just a physical game, and it's more fun to watch when they're out there battling. It is. Right, Let right them compete. Right. Another little stat update for you. That was goal number five for Garcia this season, and now four of his five goals have come either during district or the postseason. So that's when you want doing a lot of his work here late in the year. That is when you want them. So it seems like they were th- this Bullard team was a little bit more condensed uh, and compacted on the defensive side, 
but now it looks like they've spread out because they, yeah. well, they have to. They, they, at one point, we were counting six Pretty defenders pretty much at any given me. time when they were on their heels. And uh, they've, they've really spread it out in, in a true – more of a true midfield yeah. now. Was that kind of what you were seeing in the first half, Joel? Yeah, the first half they were playing more possession defense, and now they're stretching it out because they got uh, three of their forwards yeah. right up here at the midfield when normally they'd be back at the 40. And, and they had one guy, one lone ranger up there pretty much the entire first half. So they're, they're looking – they're looking to split this defense. Yeah. Who's, who's faster? So – yeah, and right. I don't know who the fastest kid on the team is, but we've got some pretty we've got some speed back there on the defensive side. Oh my! Oh, Pretty Rodriguez and Eric almost found another deep one. Sometimes when you're feeling it, you're feeling, feeling it. it. Yeah, we've seen him make multiple from uh from that far out this year. Real quick, while we do have a quick second, we want to tell all of our friends about uh Elevate Aesthetics in Silver Springs. They are the elite med spa for all your anti aging treatments. They offer Botox and fillers as well as B12 shots, skinny shots, and more. They also offer medically supervised weight loss programs. Not all plans are created equal, and that's why they will work with you to find the plan that fits you. They also offer telehealth appointments with their physician. For more information, go to their website, elevateaesthetics.com. So 30 minutes left in this game. They do say, they meaning the experts, that 2-0 is the most dangerous lead in soccer. I've heard you say that before. There's a lot of things that could happen. Yeah. We get up a goal, it might change, but if we give up a goal, boy, that could change. I mean, it – And here they come on the counter attack. I mean, and so, that, that, that they got a little a little speed there going, found a little lane. I mean, that's where it, it makes you a little nervous because momentum is a real thing, gents. And it like is. like, that's where we got to, you know, solidify this, put our foot in their throat, we need another goal. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds selfish, but, man, that would change it to where uh, – we're not complaining about 2-0. Right. But, man, that's why I like us. We're still pressing. We're still playing hard. We're still fighting, just like it's a 0-0 game, and that's what we need to keep doing. We okay. mentioned earlier how many synchronicities there have been, like, in this entire night last year. Both Lady Cats and Wildcats played a doubleheader to start. Um, there was very much a good chance that the Lady Cats will – or they're opening their postseason against the same team they did last year. Um, the Wildcats won their by district game last year by a score of two to nothing, which is okay. where we're at right now. And they went on to play Palestine in the second round, who a very strong chance is who they would play in the second round again. So a lot of a lot of synchronicities here tonight. You do see a lot of the similar deals. If we were to be so fortunate on the Lady Cat side to get through, the, there's a high likelihood we'd play Palestine next mm -hmm. round. Um, I, I think that's just the way these things yeah. go. Now in the on the girls side. We always say all roads lead to Salina. All roads lead yes. to Salina. And so we so uh, we have some friends out in Sunnyvale. They were they were uh, dish, they they beat Caddo Mills. They were district in the in the lead, and just struggled their last two games and lost them. Now they're the fourth seed and oh. they're playing Salina. Oh dang! First no. round of the playoffs, I believe tonight. Wow! And so uh, that's that's uh, that's the difference. That's soccer for you. It is. And uh, we're we're glad that we don't face uh, Salina. Good that effort early. from Rodriguez there. Oh, my gosh. Nice job by good the keeper, job, keeper coming out. Great job. Very good. Sometimes in high school ball, you'll have a keeper that'll stand there like a cone. Right. And uh, you just make it real easy to go get goals. But that, that kid just saved him a goal and uh, kept their team in the game. But that's a good good size athletic kid there, too. So, he wasn't scared. Yeah, he, he wasn't scared to go out after it. Something tells me he probably plays football for uh, for the Bullard team also. Who knows, though. But uh, good good job by the we'll keeper. Next yeah. yeah. Oh, probably. yeah. Okay. I always like a keeper that's not uh, afraid to come off his line and come out like that and, and just make a play. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that's when you see some, you see it a lot in high school ball. You, that you just stand, uh oh, here comes a set piece again. Here we go. Free kick. Man, that'd be good to bury this. Let's go. Nice ball. Ooh, just outside. That made, that gave me a heart pitter patter. I was ready. <laughs> Man, that, that's, uh, I was about to go nuts in here j jumping around. We were talking about something, and it was awesome, and I forget because I thought we almost scored a goal there again. You know, Joel, we were talking too. We, we do play, uh, you know, a, a direct style and finding lanes really quick, counterattack, and we're dangerous. But when we need to possess and get out of trouble, we're, yeah. we're capable of doing that. Yeah, they've been showing some good possessions tonight, yeah. the Wildcats have. I've been impressed with them because I knew Bullard was a possession team, but, but the Wildcats have been – Hanging on their own. So here's where we talk about mistakes. It was uh, it was not purposeful, on purpose, or whatever. But uh, it looks like we we had a bad touch. Went out now. Corner kick for Bullard. This is what they just, want. Yep. They want a set piece. Uh, that's just like any other opportunity. They coming up here set pieces. 
Oh, uh, man. When, when you're doing them, you're like, oh, this is going to be hard. But when they're when you're on the receiving end of a set piece, make you make you a little yeah, nervous. Yeah, it makes you nervous. And that was a great ball. Good job, Wildcats. Win it in the air. Nice uh, header by – I don't know who that was out there, but we there certainly we go. want it. Nice turn. Nice ball. Look at this. Wow. Great look at run. this. Great run. Oh, my gosh. Look at it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my oh gosh. Go. Wildcats, go. what a shot. Go. Oh, Ernesto my gosh. Ernesto Alvarez. Let's go. You, hey, guys. I mean, he saw the keeper come out. Come that keeper, exactly what we just said. You got to respect the keeper. He's yeah. trying to create a mistake. Hey, man, I really thought he was going to slot it up to that, that runner coming on the left side. I did, too. But, oh, my gosh. Take a look gosh. at the replay here. Here that we come. Ernesto Alvarez. Watch this runner on the left. I really thought he was going to slip it through when the keeper came out. I did, too. But look how far the keeper out, and what an eye by this yeah. kid to go finish wow. with some finesse. That was oh awesome. Oh, my gosh. That was perfectly placed. That I So, as the game, as the play was coming around, I did not realize how far that keeper came out. Yeah. That was – The keeper was off, uh, on the 10-yard line right there. The the last defender, he kept backpedaling going back rather than coming from out and making something. distance. That's one of my favorite goals that I've seen oh, in a yeah. long, long time. That was guys. a fun one. <laughs> that was fun. Need to go oh. back and see who uh, got the assist on that because he had you – know, In my, in my head, him, I mean, just the soccer guy in me, in my head, I was like, here comes the runner. He's going to slide it up, yeah. and they're going to just tap it in around the keeper. No, he just went – Straight, Straight up and up. over, yeah. and it was the right call, obviously. Oh, yeah, he did so good. And wow. He did, and he looked calm and collective. He wasn't nervous at all. He was just right in stride, great strike on the ball. Seventh goal of the season for Ernesto Alvarez. Sulphur Springs Wildcats. So, there's that 3-0 we were talking about. Yep. And, you know, there's 25 minutes left. And we do not again. look like we're slowing down whatsoever. And nice ball. Here, here we go. Oh, Ooh. and a collision with the keeper. And that might be one we're not winning, though. That's a big kid, as we talked about yeah. before. Nice job by the keeper. Uh, and here's the thing, though. I mean, you can't blame the guy. Our Their team was stretched out. He oh, came yeah. running out. He was fearless. That's his job. That's what yeah. we were going to talk about before on the other goal scoring deal. It's his job to cr make us make a mistake. Yeah, and, and cut off angles and force you out to go outside. So, But 3-0 now, that changes the whole dynamic of this game. Yeah. Now. If this was a FIFA soccer game that you're playing on your PlayStation with your kid, it'd be a great time to just be a possession team and waste time. Right. I have a feeling we're not going to see that. No. I think they. I don't think this team wants to put a, a statement that no. we came to play soccer. And like you said, momentum's a real thing, and you don't want to take your foot off the gas and just let the momentum slide and then go into the next game. Oh, they've got it. I mean, not lackadaisical. You know, you want to keep the keep it going, keep your. And they're playing physical, they but are. it is yeah. it is uh, we, we're we're giving it right back. And nice ball, oh, a little a over. Little. That's all right. 1v1 confidence is through the roof right now. Look Absolutely. at this. And I don't mind a shot from there. Yeah. Because when I'm like this, I don't want my team to let off. I want them to finish strong, finish out real good, and then go be ready for the next game. And even though the scoreboard says 3-1, oh, they changed it back. It's still 3-0. We got our scoreboard cover right here. We Corey, the producer, making sure there you go. the fans at home know the score. I was looking at the uh, Lindell Eagles scoreboard, so there was a little uh, brief minute there. All right, there nice win there. Nice There's battle. Karate. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, nice turn. And sometimes the balls just uh, – they just go in our favor, and, and we come out the other end of a, of a battle, and yeah. they just roll our way. So – Get good bounces, and then sometimes it's just – it's just going your way, and you want to just keep it keep it going. I've always enjoyed this stadium. It's it's not only close to home. It's it's. I feel like once you're here, outside of the track being in the middle, it is similar. It's a similar feel to ours. Uh, it looks brand new, actually. It does. This is a great facility. Matter of fact, when I walked in here, somebody complimented me on how great our facility was, and I had to let them know that I was from Sulphur Springs. They were Bullard Media. <laughs> Bullard Media. And uh, but yeah, so it's it's neat seeing all the different ones. We have some some interesting. Uh, Interesting stadiums across the 4A district across East Texas. There's some phenomenal ones, and there's some ones that are not as phenomenal. It makes you appreciate the, the community that we live in and the facilities that we enjoy. And uh, so it's uh, – you get to see a little bit of everything. Right. Little tumble right there outside of the – And we've got uh, poster boards everywhere and – Hand clappers and, and uh, cowbells coming up for the yep. Lady Cats game. 
you know, and that's going to come on at 7.30. We're going to get a – this. we've got 20 minutes left in this game. We're going to have a little bit of a, of a warm-up and, and pregame going on. But lots of excitement. Hopefully – I was just looking at the uh, at the viewers uh, – the viewer count on, on YouTube. And pretty neat. I figured a lot of people, while they're on the way to the game, they're probably listening right now and being able to enjoy. I think we'll have some overlap, you know, by the time this one's over. And hopefully some people will stay. But – being able to enjoy both of it. And maybe if people are on their way back home, they'll be able to enjoy some of the Lady Cats game on their way back home too. So uh, we hope they stay, but not everybody can. We certainly get that as well. So luckily we have a very active chat tonight, and I believe I misspoke. I believe from up here it looked like number 14, but I believe Garcia scored the the third goal as well is what the chats let me know. So if that's the case, that is his second goal of the night. And, again, like you said, he really kind of ignited that run there late in the first half as well that hey, led to a goal. So I'm going to tell you what, this this kid has been – hey, there's been a lot of kids that have been doing a good job, but at the end of the day, uh, you start and create a little momentum and you go finish on a couple of occasions. Man, that's pretty pretty incredible. It's, so It's exciting. You know, you are going to have a big say-so in the uh, player of the game chat. I always abstain because my daughter's on the Lady Cats, and so I never contribute on that part. But uh, so it'll be neat to you know be able to discuss that part with with uh, the boys team and everything as well. But really cool way to come out and, mm -hmm. and uh, come out really fired up, playing some good soccer. It's fun to watch for sure. As always, thank y'all so much for having me having my back in the chat. I don't want to get any of that stuff wrong. And it's always it's happening it quick. We're up here, can't always see. So if y'all have a better view than I do, please. Anytime I'm wrong, y'all y'all correct us. I wonder if the people in the chat. If, they, if we were more excited up here during the goals that have been scored or they were more excited down there. So we did get this comment from Jordan Horn. There you go. Let's go. Yeah. Joel, I'll somebody, from, somebody, somebody from Georgia. Oh, come on. That's awesome. There we go. The chip of that goal was awesome. I mean, pretty exciting stuff. It is pretty exciting. I mean, I don't care who you are. When you see some goals scored in soccer, oh yeah, this stuff's pretty, oh, pretty yeah. incredible. Got Papa T. Tory Humphreys in the chat. Shout there out Papa T. And you know a big deal right now that's happening right in the middle of high, there's a little there's a player down, so I'll transition over this. But right now the Dallas International Women's Cup is happening. It's uh, they, you know teams from all over the world are coming to play right here in the heart of Dallas, and so there are several a handful of girls on art on the Lady Cats team that are playing in that. So uh, my daughter has a game Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, and so they're, they're playing a team from Minnesota, and then they're playing a couple other teams. Actually, one of them is the Solar ECNL team, which is going to be bad news. I okay. Mean, uh, she's on a really good ECNL regional league, but they're playing Solar. Thank goodness one of the girls, if you've heard the name Kennedy Fuller. Yes. That's Kennedy Fuller's club team. Kennedy Fuller, thank goodness, okay. though, she, she signed a pro contract, and so she's not playing with them, but I'm sure they have plenty of depth. Yeah. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be, a, be a tough game, game no matter who you are. They're, they're uh, upper crust of the uh, highest level you can play at. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, a 17-year-old Kennedy Fuller uh, from uh, South Lake Carroll signed a pro contract, and they do some stats where they kind of accumulate what uh, your impact on the game. And out of – that was her first pro game, and she had statistically the most impact of any player on the field that day. Wow. That's as awesome. A I mean, as a 17-year-old, yeah. So, I'm just thankful that my daughter didn't have to play her. Right. And she's <laughs> – Oh, my oh, gosh. She's just over the top. Yeah, so she still hasn't graduated high school and is now a professional yep. soccer player. And it's my understanding – it could be wrong, but I think she ha she had committed to play uh, D1 soccer at uh, North Carolina. Bypassed that, went straight to the pros. Good for her. So, wow. Good for her. That's Baller. awesome. Yeah. Do, were you able to watch the uh, Mexico-USA game? No. Uh, was that – what, night, night before last? Yeah, two yes. days ago. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't, but I saw all the all the highlights in a, you know, crazy, crazy game. Yeah. Crazy game. U.S. spins national team. They've been, you know, they've been – they've been – they've been yeah. – the record looks good, but the way they got there right. uh, they by the skin – on yeah, their they're, teeth, they're oof. It, it's it's a definitely an interesting time. So uh, the expectations always high for the men's team. I know that's. I think that's oh part of the gosh. issue. We walk in there with our expectations really high, and let's just let the men's national team let it, let them prove it out. I'm assuming you watched that game, huh? I watched parts of it. Yeah, I it's always watch a, all it's of it. always yeah. the, like the biggest rivalry known to man. It is. Yeah, anytime <laughs> USA Mexico get together, it's. 
that they're out to play. And it hadn't been uh, if you're a, if you're a United States fan, it's been very fun to be a part of the last several years. But if you're a Mexico fan, it has not been fun. Uh, we've just had the better of them on the majority yeah. of the occasions. So it's just been uh, a good rivalry over the last decade. Oh yeah. Just 17 and a half minutes left in this one. Wildcats with a three-goal lead. Trying to get back to the area around for the second year in a row. And, you know, this is tough. If you look at the body language on the Bullard boys, you know, you, you, you feel for them because they, you're, it's starting – the reality is setting in that a lot of these kids, that might be the last time they ever lace up the cleats. And you hate that for any – I mean, I've got a senior. I, I get that. We're going to go at some point. Statistically, not everybody can go win a state championship, mm -hmm. and so at some point, it's going to be my kid's last game, and it's going to be sad. And and uh, and, and if you look at the body language, they're kind of they're not as active as they were, hunched over, hands on their hips. Their hips. That's what and, I noticed. And and you just kind of you, you kind of feel like the reality is certainly setting in. But now they're still playing hard. They, yeah, don't get absolutely. me wrong. But uh, they they would love to just uh, start it with a with a goal here. They they would love to do that. But uh, so you, you, that's just the tough part about sports, high school sports. Some of these kids might be playing at the next level. Some of them may not. But uh, either way, high school as they know it in sports is about to be done it's for these boys. It's about to change for, for, for a team, for sure. Just 16, 24 to go. Our keeper's finally getting some action. Maybe that will uh -huh. take a goal kick. So we've got three captains on this team, and are all three – on the defensive side of things, is that what I'm seeing down here? I see two, two orange up. captain bands, and then I yeah. see one that's like a uh, neon color, or whatever. So interesting. So we've got the uh, leadership of the team starting from the defense and uh, working their way up. Man, they're th these guys from from back line all the way up to up top have been playing good tonight. They've certainly been fun to watch. As I mentioned before, Joel, it's always during. Lady Cats games. So I'm obviously at Lady Cats games watching my daughter. It's always a pleasure to watch these young men play. It is. And I hope it works out to where we can play on the same field again uh, next week. Next if, week if, the, uh, yeah. if the, you know, if the games turn out the way we think they can and should, man, that would be nice. Some great ball down the side. My gosh, we are still great playing run. right to the shot. goal. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Nice job by, by the, the keeper. keeper. Save, yeah. That turn right here, wow. right in traffic, and wow. just nice little cut. What a great opportunity. He basically turned that in from nothing to an uncontested shot. Absolutely. Great job by the keeper there. Yeah. I know that. I know he would love to have finished that thing. Yeah. Anybody I, you would know he that, wants that back yeah. because – he he kicked it right to the keeper's all hands. All that all that work, but uh, man, you you know you're. I mean, you are in traffic. You created a lane, but oh yeah, just to make that turn and that cut and get the shot off was was amazing to see. Oh yeah, still play. Hey, and you know what? Sometimes though, you're up three goals. You got a little swagger, and we start doing dumb things. They hadn't done it. They're they playing. Had, They're ready to go get another one. And right to the there keeper, the end. and it's in. Sulphur Springs Wildcats, right let's go. Yes. Wow, what a tough goal to give up for this keeper. He's wow. done such a good job. He let that one go through. We, we really did pin it right right to him. Yeah. But, uh, hey, they all count the same. Shot. Yeah, it was exactly a good, right. had some good pace on it, and it uh, and, and uh, that's just part of the game. So, 4-0, Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Let's go. My gosh. 14-24 left. That's a fun game to be in the booth it is. with a lot of goals being scored. And I believe that is number eight, Gael Garcia. Yeah. And you're starting to see, you know, some more fans trickle in, starting to see the Lady Cats come out, and they're probably starting about to get their workout or their uh, warm-up regimen started. Uh, you see some some of the kids down here. And, it, you know, the, the stands right in front of us that you can't see on TV right now, but there's a, another level of fans that are that are down there a little closer to the, the track and everything. But it's nice to see this thing filling up a little bit. It is. Community coming out to support these young men and women. And that's very what cool. I love about Sulphur Springs, man. We, we are a school that travels very well. Oh, yeah. Our fan base is so great. And, I mean, close game. And then uh, Bullard's not too far away either, so probably yeah. equal distance. Bullard sounds closer, but – it really is on the other side of Tyler, so it might be similar distance, but uh, maybe a little closer distance. But getting here, going around Tyler, probably yeah. takes. Yeah, they probably had a little more traffic than we did. All right, corner kick, Sulphur Springs. 
and cleared it right back to us. So we're gonna reset and then uh, give it another go. So we basically had two corner kick type scenarios from there. And so you see right now, we're, they're, they're taking a few more chances, taking every 1v1 opportunity they ever wanted to. They've been doing that all night with confidence. Yeah. And uh, so, all right, and that's a foul, I guess, on Sulphur Springs. So free kick for Bullard. Now what do you, we can expect, what, like a 15-ish minute break between the two games? Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but in that general. Probably so, something like that. I mean, I, I believe don't Corey show up went that back early to looked. games, but – Last uh, from last year's by district, I believe he said it was 15. But yeah, so and it, so right now it's 7:01 with uh, you know 13 minutes left in the game time. Yeah. you know kickoff time 7:30. So yeah, yeah, that'd be about right. So and they they've been right on the money now. What well, you know if this was a different tighter game and they played some extra time, that right. would throw a, a wrench in the plan. But uh, this is right on the money. So, but y'all don't go anywhere. We're not gonna. I mean, we're gonna stay on air for for all of that. We'll hear from some of our advertisers, and then we'll be back to to talk and get ready for the the Lady Cat game. Recap the Wildcat game. So, don't go anywhere between games. We'll uh, be right here on air the entire time. So, sun's starting to go down. Shadows creeping in. Uh, a, a, a brisk wind. You know, the temperature is going to drop just a little bit. I think that will be. And you know, it's not. It's a. It's a reasonable temperature right now. But those boys are probably pretty warm. Yeah. But this weather is a little cooler. It'll be perfect for you know the girls that are when they get to running out there and everything. So really yeah. good soccer weather. As yeah. Much if you're as, if you're a fan, you may be a little chilly. But yeah. if you're a player, you want you want these temperatures. If you're in the broadcast booth with Chad's Media, it's perfect up here. It it's, is great. it's like a. It's perfect, like 68 to 70 degrees. I'm wearing zero Lady Cats playoff. <laughs> t-shirt uh, i brought a jacket in case i felt like i might need it walking to the car you know yeah the only thing we're missing is um like they have in the professional ones where they bring you food all the uh -huh. time yeah time to step it up we got to work what on in the that. world that's next year <laughs> you, you don't want to hear us smacking on air i can assure <laughs> you i can get after some pizza and by the way congratulations to you on the state cook-off 13th place yeah, man. Out of it 400 was, state. It was it was pretty people. cool. We we uh you know every everybody that is there. You don't just sign up. It's an invitation. You have to go win something big to earn yeah. your golden ticket. And so uh, 400 people from all over, teams from all over the world. There's people. There's a Japanese team all over Europe, New Zealand, Australia, Mexico, Brazil. I mean everywhere. Wow. And a uh, ton from the United States. So, uh oh, here comes a little run. Bullard on and, the run. Great defense. Yeah, great. Was great. A little, little frustration going on. A little foul. A little chippy. But uh, so back to the steak deal because I'm going to work in some steak conversation. Anyway, Somebody's getting a card if right you, now. If you bring so. it up. Yeah, they are. They're card in Sulphur Springs, it looks like. Yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, so you, basically on a Saturday night when it was raining sideways and thunderstorming, or Saturday afternoon, that's what there were eight groups of 50 teams. And so basically to get to the next round, you have to get top 10 in your group. And so right. basically the top the, the top 10 from each group, along with the four overall points champions from around the world, uh, that go for the top 94 in the finals. Wow. Well, I was fortunate enough. I cooked a really good steak, near perfect one. I won my group. First, uh, you know, first place out of 50. I actually had the second highest points out of all 400 turn-ins that day. Wow. So the next day I competed, and uh, and uh, my, my flavor was a little bit less, even though the same seasoning and things, and that was the difference between winning the whole thing and 13th. But I still got to go on the big stage against the best of the best, and that was the goal, just make it to the, final. it to so the finals. Pretty yeah. cool, man. I got to tell the story. I, I did a little uh, pep talk for the girls at Burgerland last night for their team dinner and kind of told them, you know, they're playing for something more with uh, with Kendall battling leukemia, yes, and with with Kylie and her ACL injury being out for the, for the season, and uh, I got to tell them a little bit about my story and why I do what I do, take cookoffs, and how it relates to my dad, and I kind of honor my dad and those things, and yeah. you know, and that's my more. So we talked about what's your more, you know, and digging deep when when you when you face adversity, and because adversities may not adversity may not have found these Wildcats tonight. But adversity is going to smack them right in the mouth at some point as yeah. the playoffs go along. And same thing with the Lady Cats. And how do we respond and how do we, we find our more at that moment? Absolutely. So, anyway, One of my yeah. favorite quotes of all times is uh, from Mike Tyson. He said, everybody gets a, has a plan until he gets punched in the face. Yeah, exactly. And then you got to – what are you going to do with the yeah. adversity, you know? Everybody has a plan. Yep. And now that's, that quote's coming out right now, so we're going to see if Jake Paul has a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't. I'd love to see – Mike Tyson, what, 59 years old or uh, 50, something? He'll be 58 during the fight. He's That's 57 crazy. right now. And his training videos right now are obscene. They are. They are wild. 
I mean, I'm scared of him just watching his training videos. You couldn't could pay me. Oh, yeah. But now here's the thing. I mean, Jake Paul is a marketing genius. I mean, and and people buy his stuff. And he's, I mean, if you look at him, he's legit. He he, is, he'd take yeah. care of all four of us one oh, by absolutely. one. absolutely. But, yeah. like, but, but I don't know, Mike Tyson. He, he better be lucky he didn't try to call out Mike Tyson in his prime. Yeah. I don't know, Woody. You got some jujitsu skills. You make it take – Take him down. I'm too old, man. Yeah. I, I would get tired thinking about all that. The older you get, the more you feel it in that world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think there's a reason old Jake Paul sticks to boxing with, with older people that are past their prime. Absolutely. He, yeah. He's not calling anybody out this he, primetime MMA, if you noticed. Right. <laughs> like you said, he's a marketing there great job by the keeper. Yeah. Man, guys, we've got cheerleaders down here. We've got fans trickling in. They are bu- starting to bundle up a little bit yeah, down there. I've noticed that. But that's that's exciting stuff when we get the, you know, you can and here see. We go. Oh, break here, yeah, here we go. Oh, oh, and nice job by that center back. Just tripped him up. Just, just tripped him bit. up and uh, and changed the pace. So, and they, they are spread out. But, man, we're winning every ball, 50-50 yeah. ball. I mean, they're flopping around everywhere. Frustrated. I get it. Yeah. Oh, he's trying to slip one through. I saw it. But here we go, winning another one. Yeah. And and Bullard looks like they're getting a little bit fatigued, and the Wildcats, man, they're not missing a step. They're playing with that momentum and that adrenaline. And oh. what I – uh-oh, offside. Here we go. So, that's coming back. Good call and then that's Brett. another thing, too. We've done three and four subs at a time. we got another sub coming in right now. But what I'm noticing, too, I so I don't know the players as well as I do on the girls' side again because I'm usually not here. But – with that being said, I don't notice a drop off. We're doing it looks like a hockey sub or an indoor sub yeah. multiples, and I don't see any drop off whatsoever. And no. that's awesome to have that kind of depth out there. And Alexi's keeping fresh legs on the field, and that's I think that's been to our credit in the second half yep. of why we're able to uh, stay one step quicker and win balls like that when in the air. And uh, he's got fresh legs out there all the time. Yep. Like you said, there there doesn't look like a drop off in uh, talent or execution uh, with the subs that come in. So that. And I don't guess I realized how many goals we'd scored. They were going over the stats, and it makes sense now. I mean, we we get, we put one in, and it's it, it's yeah, it, you'll put them on their heels, and it makes sense why they were playing a little defensive heavy to begin with too. But we, I guess this will put us at sixty goals. And is it since district started or the whole season? Since di- district. The, okay, since the game wow. before district, sixtieth goal. Last fourteen games, last 14 games wow. sixty goals. So, that I mean that's pretty pretty impressive stuff. Definitely impressive. Uh-oh, we're finding some feet. Here we go. A little bit hard in that pass right there. And sometimes the ball just uh, goes right where we're at. Yep. Take our time. Good possession. I mean, I, I like it. We're, we're taking our time a little bit more. Yeah, making good passes. And so foul on Bullard. A free kick, Sulphur Springs. 531 left. We have slowed it down. We're not turning and running. We have slowed it down a little bit. Man, I, I, it's just something about it. My favorite part of the game. If we if we just passed it back to our keeper and slowed the game down, it is so fun to watch when you're yeah, up. Just it sucks playing keep when, away. You are, when you're the oh, one, yeah. when it happens to you. But if you're playing keep away and slowing the pace down and just making them run when they're exhausted and frustrated, it's a great way to end it. But something tells me they want it. Oh, my gosh. Great Not ball. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> foot skills right there. And nice ball. Nice no, turn. No. Here we go. These, uh, these boys want another goal. I get it. They do. They're hungry. 4-0 puts a little, little, little notice out there that, hey, we came to play. Yeah. But th- they want 5-0. There nice little turn. Played all the way across. Good ball. They're just, just tough, man. We're, we're, uh, we're battling. All right, so – Bullard working it up the field. Basically a 2v1 scenario. Keeper's got it. Good nice job. job. Way to call it and come out and get it. Right on him, Jackson Hare. Making it difficult. Not giving – oh, and we just turned the ball over. Mm. Throw in Bullard. And they're making some some changes that, you know, you don't know. This might be some seniors getting, you know, finishing the game out. Yeah. Uh, there were some tired-looking legs out there. I know we're making a keeper switch. Looks like uh, Bear Tessing coming in at keeper. And they're going to finish out this game. Starting keeper did an outstanding job. Made some good uh, – what was his name? 
he did – Brandon Tavera did a good job, you know, one of these diving stretched out saves uh, earlier in the game and uh, did a real nice job. And uh, coming out of the box right there on a little run just now, I mean, really, really fine job. Yeah, Bullard Ken. switched out their keeper as well. Got a different keeper in there. And, yeah, just letting maybe some younger players get some playing time and, and letting the seniors finish out. And Yeah. Soul Fred. Springs looks like they're moving to the next round. Yeah, moving to the re next round for sure. I mean, and uh, what a cool experience to be able to do that. You know, winning districts is, is cool, but the playoffs start officially. And then coming in here and getting the by district title as well and going on to the area round, what a big deal. That's a big deal for our program and our community. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can, on the girls' side, we can, we can do the same thing and, and join the party. Yeah. Put the challenge out there, girls. We want you to match four goals. Hopefully we can do that. And there we go. There was a little bit of a flop. All right, guys. Oh, yeah. Three minutes and 16 seconds left in this ball game. Full command and control for Sulphur Springs Wildcats. And uh, these Bullard boys, I'm sure they had a good season. Yeah. But, you know. And it, party's it, it, over. Yeah, you do feel bad for the seniors because you know it's their last time and it's tough on them. But uh, super excited for our Sulphur Springs boys and the way they played tonight and moving to the next round. It's, it's going to be fun to watch them continue this journey. And congratulations to Coach Upton and his team and Coach Sal down there. And the, the expectation of, of uh, being a playoff team on a regular basis and, and going as deep as you can and, and, and I mean, they – at one point, they I think last year graduated, or year before last, graduated a lot. Uh oh, here we go. Nice little run. Here we go. Here we oh, go. There we go. But mm. they graduated, had a young, really young team, team last year, and they came back this year and, and really solidified that and, and battled through district. And so it, it's neat seeing that program and the culture of winning that, that uh, Coach Upton and, and Sal and everybody else has brought to the program. It's neat to see that. and Because uh, their expectation didn't just to – go do okay in district or win yeah. district. They want to go deep in the playoffs. Deep in the playoff run. Make a good run. You still uh, hitting up CrossFit with old Sal? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Sal doesn't come much during uh, soccer season, but when soccer yeah, season's done, he, he makes his way back there. And so, yeah. I would imagine his travel schedule would be a little bonkers. Right. Yeah. Fun times at CrossFit, hanging out. And, yeah, Coach Sal's a great guy. All right, so we're kind of winding it down. Yeah, just 90 seconds left in this one again. Wildcats looking to advance back to the area round, which is where they were beaten last year, and it very well may be against the same team. Uh, ran into Palestine last year, who made it all the way to the state final, and if they beat Sabine tonight, that is, uh, it will get a rematch of that area round from last year. So it's not too often that you have a representative of the Way Bible Church right. that's actually able to contribute in the Way, the Way Bible Church uh, player of the game. But we have a unique opportunity. Is this the first? It is. Yeah. A live yes. Way Bible Church, Church player of the game announcement yeah. by the pastor of the Way Bible Church. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's it, it's fun to it's fun to have our church support the player of the game, man. We we love encouraging uh, the youth and the young people, and man, we we just love supporting them. Oh, here we go again. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. good save, right keeper! <laughs> wow, good save, keeper. Yeah, and Woody, you're fixing to watch your daughter play. It's it's fun watching my son in action down there, running the camera, and he's gonna be embarrassed that I'm even talking about him. <laughs> and so, parents, don't let him know I mentioned his name on the air because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, he does a good job. Yeah. I've gotten to, gotten to know him a little bit and see him, send him, you know, do a selfie and send you a pic right. of you know I when love we're doing that. the. Calling the games in Sulphur Springs. Yeah, he had a great shot, the first goal that was scored. Oh, they've got Let's the Gatorade going go. for Coach. Gatorade uh, all over Coach Upton. Let's go. By a final score of four to nothing, your Sulphur Springs <laughs> Wildcats get the win, and they advance back to the area round of the playoffs. We're about to announce 
the Way Bible Church Player of the Game. But first, we want to hear from them, and then we will be back to announce that. I'm Pastor Joel T. Meyer of the Way Bible Church. And we are so excited to invite you to one of our four Easter services this year. We have a Saturday service, March 30th at 5 o'clock, and three Sunday morning worship services, March 31st at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30. We have powerful worship, fun for kids of all ages, and a dynamic message that will impact your life. The tomb is empty. The price has been paid in full. Come join us for Easter at The Way. It is playoff soccer. We have not only our first playoff soccer uh, Way Bible Church player of the game for this season, but as Woody mentioned, we have the very exciting opportunity for Joel from the Way Bible Church to yeah. to name our Way Bible Church player of the game. Where are we going? Yeah, well, man, all those soccer players did a great job tonight. Truly excited for them. Uh, had multiple people score goals. But, man, who stands out is we have Jimmy Garcia. He had mm -hmm. two goals tonight. And so excited for him and the, the way he played and performed. So, Jimmy, congratulations being the Way Bible Church player of the game. It's an honor to support you. And uh, love watching the kids lift up the, the trophy right there. Great shot. Uh, of the kids celebrating. So, congratulations, Sulphur Springs Wildcat soccer. Yes, he had two of the goals tonight. And as uh, Woody had alluded to earlier in the night, he also played a big role in that run late in the first half, which led to the first goal of the night, uh, which was for Matthew Brito. It was his ninth goal of the season, 14th point. After his two goals, uh, Garcia is now up to six. And then Gael Garcia also scored a goal. That was his fifth of the season. So huge win for the Sulphur Springs Wildcats. They will advance to the area round, but don't go anywhere because we are almost ready for our second game of the night, our second part of this doubleheader where the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats will go on to face Tyler Chapel Hill. Uh, we've got, they haven't put it on the clock yet, but we're going to have a little bit of time uh, between these two games. So we want to make sure that we get to hear from some of our uh, advertisers that make all of this possible. Uh, like our good friends, excuse me, just trying to pull it up, like our good friends over at Elevate Aesthetics. Elevate Aesthetics is the elite med spa for all your anti-aging treatments. They offer Botox and fillers, as well as B12 shots, skinny shots, and more. They also offer medically supervised weight loss programs. Not all plans are created equal, and that's why they will work with you to find the plan that fits your needs. They also offer telehealth appointments with their physician. For more information, visit their website, elevateaesthetics.com. Like we said, don't go anywhere. We're going to hear from some of our advertisers that make all this possible. We've got 15 minutes on the clock now, so that'll uh, give you an idea of when we get started. And then we'll be back to uh, preview this match between Tyler Chapel Hill and the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats. Whether it's in the clinic, in the water, or in the comforts of your home, East Texas Physical Therapy can provide you with an individualized treatment plan to meet all your rehab needs. Whether it's physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy, our experienced staff understands the importance of personalized care and will work with you to set and reach your goals. In business, for over 12 years, we're committed to helping you get back to living life to the fullest. Call us today to get started on your journey to healthier living. Your original hometown clinic, East Texas Physical Therapy. Treatment you need, care you deserve. At d &B Loans, we make the loan process easy. Our competitive rates and quick application process make us one of the largest in the industry. With over 30 years in the business, our team of loan experts will work with you to find the loan that fits your needs. We also offer the best furniture and appliances around with great financing and free local delivery. With low rate loans and high quality furniture, we offer a wide selection of styles and designs, plus TVs, mattresses, and much more. Just visit our showroom or give us a call. DMB Loan is your local loan specialist. When you need cash, trust a hometown business. Alliance Bank is a community bank. We believe that the future success of the bank is linked to the future of our communities. And that as our communities grow and prosper, the bank will grow and prosper as well. Our bank employees live and work in the communities we serve. And like everyone else, we want a safe place for our children with good education systems, the best medical services, and job opportunities. This is why you will find Alliance Bank employees volunteering in local service organizations and helping our communities in many ways not directly associated with banking. This has been the Alliance Bank way since 1927.
My name is Bill Holden, and along with my business partner, Tommy Anderson, we own BT Medical in Sulphur Springs. In our store, you can find lift chairs, hospital beds, and wheelchairs, along with many other necessary medical equipment. We even have a respiratory therapist with a staff willing to help you with your CPAP, so you can get that healthy rest your body needs. If you can't leave the house, we offer convenient delivery and 24-hour on-call services. From all of us at BT Medical, thank you for shopping with us, and please keep your business local at 201 Linda Drive in Sulphur Springs. Remember the name, BT Medical, supplying equipment with care. Hey y'all, and welcome to the stadium at Burgerland. Here we pride ourselves on exceptional food with equally exceptional service. Our Burgerland promise is that the tea is sweet, the burgers are greasy, and the large fries are indeed large where the food is fresh and we cook right in front of you. Don't take our word for it. Next time you're in the mood for a good old-fashioned burger, visit our lively hole-in-the-wall joint at 210 Main Street. Come see how we are creating Burgerland fans one burger at a time. Again, we are almost ready for the second part of tonight's doubleheader. Again, huge congratulations to the Sulphur Springs Wildcats for picking up the 4 to nothing win and advancing, advancing to the area round of the playoffs. A number of great players who are uh, definitely all worthy of tonight's Way Bible Church player of the game, but it ultimately went to Jimmy Garcia, who had a pair of goals. Speaking of the Way Bible Church, they want to invite you and your family to come and encounter Jesus with them at the Way this Easter. You have four different services you can choose from starting Saturday, March 30th at 5 p.m., and then also on Sunday, March 31st at 8.30 a.m., 10 a.m., at 11.30 a.m., experience powerful worship, fun for kids of all ages, and a special message just for you. The tomb is empty. Your debt is paid in full, and they cannot wait to see you. You can see there on the uh, on the scoreboard a little over 14 minutes before we get started tonight. We've got plenty to get into uh, with both of these teams. A very exciting matchup. Again, a rematch of last year's uh, by-district match. But before we do get started, Again, some more friends of ours that I want to tell you about, like our good buddy Josh Boatman, who is your local and trusted insurance agent. With a family of his own, he understands the importance of protecting the ones who matter the most. He also understands that no two families need the same coverage. That's why he'll make sure to work with you uh, to customize plans to fit your specific needs. Whether it's home, auto, or life insurance, Josh has you covered. Also, our friends over at Discount Wheel and Tire of Silver Springs, they offer a full line of Michelin tires. When you're looking for the right tire, the choice is easy. Michelin packs more science into their tires to bring together safety, durability, fuel efficiency, and performance without trade-offs. Match the right tire with the right service today. Discount Wheel and Tire, proudly serving our Wildcats and Lady Cats for over 25 years. And finally, your organization's network and IT problems can come out of nowhere. Let Essential Business Solutions do all the IT work for you. From managed IT services, disaster recovery, and backup solutions, new hardware and other IT services as needed. Give them a call at 903 903- 335-7581, Essential Business Solutions. They make technology accessible. Chloe, how are you doing out there? You having fun? You're working very hard, doing very good. It's cold. It was a good game. Wildcats pick up the four to nothing win. Hopefully you see them celebrating there. I love this. That's a lot of fun, Corey. Yeah, and this is a big deal for these guys, you know? This is a very big deal. It, 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 you don't you don't really know. I mean, for me, I never really played in a playoff game um, during my high school career, so I don't really you know that's kind of lost on me. I know you have, but um, winning a playoff game is not easy. Yeah, it is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, no matter what the expectations are for the season. Yeah, and again, we mentioned it before the game, but that's a very 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 good bullet. Team. Yeah, usually I mean, you know you want to win your district so you can get the four seed, give yourself kind of a, an easier road during the playoffs, but that is not an easy. Four seed. Yeah, and you can see it on these guys' faces. It means it means a lot. You it know? does, as it should. So, it's just another as gold ball to put in the trophy. And like Coach Faircloth says, it's a great day to be a Wildcat. It's always a great day to, wild, but to be a Wildcat. Hopefully, it's going to be a great night to be a Lady Cat as well as we are a little bit uh, – well, they keep – okay, a little bit over ten minutes away uh, from getting that matchup started, the second part of tonight's doubleheader. I'm going to have Woody and Joel join me again just in one second. Uh, but first, a couple more friends we want to tell you about, like our friends at Weary Pools. Uh, whether it's uh, routine maintenance, pool repairs, or equipment installation, Weary Pools has you covered. They take care of the hard work so you can dive in and have fun. Give them a call because when it comes to your pool, only the best will do. Also, want to tell you about our friends over at Triple Crown Roofing.
Triple Crown Roofing is your local roofing experts from repairs to complete roofing systems. With competitive prices and free consultation, they are the easy choice when it comes to roofing. With competitive prices and free calls, oh, I'm sorry, they are the easy choice when it comes to roofing. Contact Triple Crown Roofing today at 903-689-0800. Triple Crown Roofing. Roofing done right. Then also I need to tell you about our friends over at Clayton Homes. Clayton Homes of Silver Springs is dedicated to helping you find the perfect manufactured or modular home for your family. Whether you're still researching or ready to find your dream home today, their team is committed to answering any questions you may have. Visit ClaytonOfSilverSprings.com or give them a call at 903-438-0829 to see how they can make your family's dreams come true. Again, we're going to have uh, – Woody, sit back down with us in just one second. Woody and Joel both are still here with me. Real quick, we're almost 10 minutes away, so we're almost ready to get tonight's, or I guess tonight's second Bell Concrete uh, pregame show uh, started. But first, want to hear from a couple more of our friends, and then we'll be back for that. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds. The team of world-class orthopedics and sports medicine specialists at Christus Mother Francis Hospital Sulphur Springs are experts at caring for bones, joints, and muscles. In addition to treatment, they also provide special programs designed to keep you in optimal shape and improve athletic performance. So whether you're a student athlete or weekend warrior, they'll keep you at the top of your game. Christus Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, taking orthopedic care a step further. KDA Deer with Janet Martin Realty. I'm also the proud mother of two boys and an officer in Mother's Culture Club. I understand the importance of a safe and supportive community for your family. That's why I'm passionate about helping people find their perfect home. When you work with me, you get more than just a realtor. You get a trusted partner who is active in the community and cares about you and your family's future. So if you're looking for a realtor who is passionate about helping you find the perfect home, Make sure to give me a call. I look forward to helping you. Here at J. Hodge Chevrolet, we have the most awarded vehicles at the most awarded dealership. We are proud to offer an extensive selection of new and used vehicles. Our knowledgeable sales staff is ready to help you find the car of your dreams. We also provide a top-notch service experience with our state-of-the-art service center and our award-winning team of certified technicians. We're such big supporters of the Silver Springs Wildcats that we are even located on Wildcat Way. Find new roads to J. Hodge Chevrolet. Give us a call at 903-307-2077. Don't overpay. Go see J. Bell Concrete, your hometown concrete supplier, has been a part of Sulphur Springs for over 70 years. We are a locally owned, family-oriented small business. We are proud to support the communities we service. Our plants are located in Sulphur Springs, Greenville, Mount Pleasant, and very soon we will open a plant in Blue Ridge. For the best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas, give us a call today at 903-885-3126. We appreciate your support, and go Wildcats. We are almost ready for the second part of tonight's doubleheader. Again, the Silver Springs Lady Cats going up against Tyler Chapel Hill, which means since we're almost ready for the second part of this doubleheader, we are ready for our second Bell Concrete pregame show of the night. Bell Concrete is your hometown concrete supplier, and they've been a part of Silver Springs for over 70 years. They are a locally owned, family-oriented, small business, and they are proud to support the communities that they service. They have plants located in Silver Springs, Greenville, and Mount Pleasant. For the very best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas, give them a call today at 903-885-3126. So, Woody, we have a rematch of last year's by district round where the Silver Springs Lady Cats ended up victorious by a final score of 9-0. to They would also go on to win in the area round, making it all the way to the regional quarterfinals. Yeah, that's right, and, and uh, that is correct. And, you know, you don't want to take this lightly you still got to come out here and you still got to play a game. I mean, they, I think by their district record, Tyler Chapel Hill looks like they struggle a little bit in district and everything mm -hmm. coming in in the fourth seed spot. But, hey, these girls are almost all adults and they're gamers, and so you definitely want to take them seriously. So, But I also know the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats take this game seriously as well. So it's an For exciting sure. time. We're glad to be here. Hopefully we can uh, just duplicate what we just saw on the Wildcats front and uh, come away with a strong win. That's what everybody expects. Uh, they just got to go out there and do it. Yeah, now they just got to go out and execute. It, about six minutes from now, we'll uh, have the kickoff to it. And I'm excited to see uh, how the girls bounce back from their exhibition game and get some confidence back and 
uh, yeah, with Chapel Hill. We played them last year, and they, like you said, they struggled in district a little bit. But th that's the scary thing. You can never underestimate a playoff team coming out with nothing to lose, you know. So Correct. you want to come out focused, intense, play your game. Don't let them get you off your game because uh, that's what happened a little bit uh, against Mesquite Poti in the first half. We were off our game a little bit. And uh, they came out the second half and played great. Uh, look like look like a different team the second half, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm anxious to see them come out the first half here and uh, put a couple in the back of the net and and really take control of the game from the so beginning. So before that game against Mesquite Poteet, they had been on a nine game winning streak in which they had outscored their opponents 42 to three. We obviously got to talk about that a little bit on air because we broadcast that game. But do you think a game like that was necessary going up against a bigger opponent? Um, the best opponent you had seen in, in probably six weeks, maybe even a couple months, facing another team like that before going into the postseason. Absolutely. It's a 5A ranked team, 5A, you know, highly ranked mm -hmm. team. I think they were 20 or 21 and three. And uh, they were a good, they were a very good team. It was terrible conditions. Uh, it was, you know, it raining sideways, no lightning. Uh, but, you know, they're just playing. We were without, you know, an integral part of our team. That's not. That sound like it's excuses or anything, but Rowan Faircloth was taking a breather, didn't have her. And when you have somebody, an impact player like that, that definitely changes the game. We ended up taking a 1-0 loss. And to answer your question, I'm glad. If I'm glad we didn't go smoke them 7-0 because mm -hmm. we need to know what adversity feels like when it smacks us in the mouth. And we felt it, definitely felt it in that first half. We really did settle down and play more of the Lady Cats brand of soccer second half. If you hadn't watched the broadcast, that it's like the tale of two teams out there. So, uh, down one, you know, down one zero, a game that didn't mean anything other than help them out and and get a little taste of adversity, what they needed to, because they'd had no adversity in district, not one ounce of it. They really yeah. dominated all the way through, uh, went undefeated for the second year in a row, and that's fun to watch. Yeah, but it doesn't really prepare you for playoffs like some of these other teams that are battling, battling and battling yeah. and battling. And so I'll tell you know, not taking anything away from the other teams in the district. Pleasant Grove has a pretty decent little team out there, but still they 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 had they really didn't pose any threat in in terms of putting us on our heels and thinking we're going to lose a game. Yeah, and, and and you want to be tested before you go into the playoffs. And so when you can play a game like that and get tested, uh, you know uh, what your competition is going to be like two or three rounds deep. Because if yeah. you want to make a deep run, uh, the worst thing you can do is just cruise control all the way through district and then. Then come into to playoffs and start playing teams that uh, are of a higher caliber or a stronger team, and then you then you struggle against teams that you should really should have put away. And I think that was a, just a just a good gut check when you when you look at it to say, hey, now it's time to now it's time to go deep and you know, make a we, run. We did now we're, that's district district specific. We did play some very tough opponents. Hey, we played some familiar ones because we it wasn't too long ago we were in five A. Yeah. We played Mount Pleasant, took care of Mount Pleasant. We played Pine Tree, took care of Pine Tree. We played T High, we took care of T High. We played some very good teams out there, uh, and that did prepare us as we went along in the season. Yeah. Now what the the un, we dealt with some injuries and some different personnel issues, and being able to have a district like we have help us work through those and some new personnel changes. And I think some of the players we'll talk about it in a little while, Joel. They landed in a position that what their new home is that we probably would have never tried out before. Absolutely, and yeah. it's working out better than you would have ever imagined. Yeah, it's, and then we have a, it's a more depth that we didn't know we had. Some girls coming up from JV and getting some valuable experience in minutes. And I think you'll see some of those as the game goes on and we get some rest. Uh, you, you might see one or two one or two changes and 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 have some of those opportunities for some of those girls that are just seeing the bright lights out here on the the varsity soccer field yeah and anytime you can make adjustments that create more depth on your team it's just going to make you stronger for the long haul and when you have kids that can play uh some of these girls that can play multiple positions now yeah um that's gets exciting to watch and it's exciting for them yeah and one one person to you know there's several we'll keep keep in mind but you know emma romero is one of those people that you just mentioned that plays multiple positions she's played left back her whole entire career mm -hmm. uh we had some personnel changes she ended up going more of the center back route and we moved Kylie Clark up to holding mid. Kylie yeah. tears her ACL. And what do we do? Well, Emma's come up to holding mid and played lights, lights out. out. She yeah. takes so much pressure off the back line, wins balls all day long, distributes real well. She finds her midfielders. She finds her wingers, battles. And it's fun to watch. You're about to see her play, and she's done a real fine job this year. Yeah, she's actually out right now. Her and Anna both uh, representing as captains out there doing the coin toss. And so, yeah, so that's just one – one of many we're going to be able to highlight tonight, I have a feeling. 
Yeah, I do want to give a, a shout out to the the girls that couldn't be here because of injuries. And uh, Kendall Farrell, want to yep. give her a shout out. And I'm uh, sure she's going to be watching and tuning in. And so, just our heart goes out to some of the girls who couldn't be here tonight sure. or couldn't be on the field. And and uh, we want them to know, hey, you're you're still just as much a part of the team. That's and, exactly and we right. We love we love it. And hey, and Kendall. I guarantee you she's watching. I'd bet you a hundred dollar bill that says she is, but she's watching it from home tonight. I saw a Facebook post and her numbers kind of got a little bit better, and they let her go home. Awesome. Uh, Jeremy and Juan Olvera, I believe, kind of redid her bedroom and, and gave, so she's getting. I don't know for how long, but I just saw her mom posted something. So that's at least outstanding. Being able to watch the game in the comfort of her own home, and I know she's probably ready for a little change of scenery. Absolutely. And, uh, and worked hard and, and battled through some things in order to to get there. So uh, very cool. So Kendall. Man, we love you, girl. Uh, we love you. We're excited to, you know, play for something more. These girls are playing for something more. Uh, we had the team dinner last night. Uh, they, uh, Yori and the crew hosted it at Burgerland. Uh, for those of you listening, it was pretty neat. And uh, Kendall actually sent a note, and uh, one of the moms read it. And uh, just a, a note of encouragement to the, the people she's played with since kindergarten and uh, the little kittens, as she called them, the right. people that are coming up. And she wishes she could have had some of those experiences with them. But really an emotional you know some of those girls were, were teared up and yeah. man, they should have been it was a very powerful message from Kendall who was by the way I don't know if you knew that but she got named captain along with Anna and Emma when the season first started just never got to go on the field so right that's a captain's mentality uh, absolutely and, and taking care of her team even when she's not there in person yeah so. that's great leadership way to support your team and and yeah we're pulling for you keep fighting what it looks like we're about to uh, have the the starting lines for the announcements of all the players and then the um, the national anthem Oh, yeah, perfect timing. So we will step out of the way to make sure y'all get to hear all of that, and then y'all will be stuck with us for the rest of the night. First, your lineup from Chapel Hill. Number one, Emmeline Brown. Two, Gabrielle Kissim. Three, Nelly Amaro. Four, Rachel Hawkins. Five. Leandra Martinez. Six. Natalie Laura. Seven. Sky Figueroa. Eight. Adriana Martinez. Ten. Ruby Martinez. Thirteen. Emily Vasquez. Fourteen. Layla Ruiz. Fifteen. Sophia Aguirre. 16, Yoselin Lopez. 18, Ani Borja. 88, Clara Brown. The Capitol Lady Bulldogs are coached by Haley Collins and assistant coach Jerry Vieira. Now, the Silver Springs Lady Cats. Number one, Anna Williams. Two, Addie Jones. Three, Rowan Faircloth. Four, Mackenzie Adams. Five, Emma Romero. Six, Valerie Flecker. Seven, Addie Fenton. Eight, Camilla Meja. Nine, Haley Schultz. Ten, Julia Moore. 11. Ashley Monavayas. 12. Beta Palomino. 13. Kendall Farrell. 14. Brianna Ruiz. 15. Aniston Price. 16. Joby Brown. 17. Katie Ladino. 18. Edith Martinez. 19. Rosa Lopez. 20. Hannah Bletso. 21. Zoe Crump. 22. Rainey Johnson. 23. Kylie Clark. 24. Natalie. Sofradia. Double zero. Maya Olivera. 99. Addison Schubert. 
Uh, head coach is Adrian Brenna. Assistant coach is Angel Tavera and Becky Medlock. Please stand or move your hats for the playing of our national anthem. And again, thank you so much for spending your Tuesday night with us here on Front, Por Front Porch News and Chad's Media. We are almost ready for the second half of this doubleheader. We now have the Silver Springs Lady Cats taking on Tyler Chapel Hill. Again, one more time, thank you to our pregame sponsors, Bell Concrete. Before we get started, we want to give a huge shout-out to our friend Aaron Neal, who is the principal agent and owner of Hanby Insurance in Rockwall. Aaron began her career back in 1999 and was born and raised in the Dallas area. If you're in the Rockwall or Dallas area, give her a call at 972 285-0381 to see how she can help you today. Also, Sabo Provision goes above and beyond to create an extraordinary experience for their valued customer. Their store is not your ordinary men's boutique. It's a paradise for the modern gentleman seeking style, relaxation, and enjoyment all in one place. Do yourself a huge favor and go pay them a visit on the square. And finally, Cody Drug provides a unique and personalized experience that big chain pharmacies just can't match. They also offer vaccines and B12 shots. Be sure to take advantage of their convenient delivery services as well. Make the easy transfer to Cody Drug today. Woody Joel, how are we feeling? Ready for part two? Hey, pumped up. Pumped up right now, man. It's exciting. Uh, we got 40 minutes on the uh, play on the time clock up here. Everybody's getting pumped up, ready to break out and uh, get their starting lineups out there. This is playoff soccer, boys. It is. Congratulations Girl. to the Wildcat boys who just won their playoff mm -hmm. game, and now we're looking for win number two tonight. And uh, I believe the girls are going to come out confident and strong um, uh, after refocusing. And, yeah, we got all of our players back and healthy, and so we're excited uh, about that. And, yeah, it's playoff soccer, and let's make a deep run into the playoffs, ladies. I Very exciting that. stuff. It is fun. And, uh, you know, what? I, my, it's probably my – I have lots of favorite moments this year, but watch them break it out. If you could, if you heard it, they'd say, one, two, three, Lady Cats, clap, clap, 13. Every time. That's Kendall's number. Yeah, yeah. So, it's pretty – they honor her to start off every time. Here they go. You just heard it. Yeah. I mean, it, well, Lady Cats, That's... clap, clap, 13. There you go. Shout out. Hat tip to Kendall. And so, that's their more. They're coming out right now. And playing for something more, just like they have all season long. And uh, let's go, Lady Cats. Playoff soccer about to begin. Lady Cats take the field first. And uh, Chapel Hill coming out on the field as well. And we're about to get underway, guys. Yeah, and this is a rematch of last year's first round of the playoffs where the Lady Cats came in and uh, – and Handled the handled the first game well last year and put a, a good good win on the board early and so uh, yeah we're looking for the rematch and excited for uh, to see the Lady Cats come out strong this evening and uh, hopefully get a couple quick goals and then really settle in. Looks sure. like the Lady Cat crowd can yeah the prepare sign there's a dozen signs, signs yeah. there and, and uh, they're they're bundled up on the sideline got the cheerleaders going nuts. You down told here. us we might see some signs we that's a ton of them you and can't got, see them from up here so it's and cool. To, I've been told that the case of clappers were ordered and passed ooh. out so yeah. Uh, here we go, Lady Cats. 
Gonna be a pretty loud, energetic crowd. So we got Rowan Faircloth kicking it off to Anna. She's at holding or at uh, attacking mid. Lady Cats in the black. Ch uh, Tyler Chablu on the white. Addie Jones at left back, and we got Haley Schultz at uh, left forward up there. And so now we're using the whip of the field right off the bat to Jolie Moore. Nice little run. And uh, we're, they're going to see her speed tonight, I have a feeling. So here we go. Nice turn. They're, they're, they're bottling it up. One, two, three, four, five, six defenders. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. That's the way, the way a lot of people have played us this year. And so there's Emma Romero that we talked about winning balls right off the bat. Emma to Anna Williams. Anna to Addie Fenton. Wide open. Lots of space. Take the shot. And oh. nice, and it looks like it's going to be a corner kick for Sulphur Springs right off the bat. That's what we'll take uh, straight out of the gate. So, on the back line, you know, you have Rainey Johnson, uh, big tall center back in the pink boots out there. She came right off the basketball field. Uh, also, you have Aniston Price. She's a senior playing center back with her as well. And then you have uh, you have McKenzie out on the right wing uh, as uh, as a young freshman out there uh, getting the nod uh, the majority of the games this season as well. So, uh, nice starting lineup for our back line there. And then uh, holding mid, we mentioned that it is uh, Emma Romero. We have Haley Schultz playing on the left forward. We have uh, Jolie Moore out on the right wing uh, or forward. And then we have Rowan Faircloth playing up top. So, uh, And then your two attacking mids, you have Addie, Addie Fenton and uh, Anna Williams. So that's the starting lineup, folks. That's what we see most of the, uh, the time when we're starting, when we're all healthy. And then we have, uh, of course, Maya Olvera uh, back at keeper, and uh, she got the nod as well and is, is primarily the starting keeper for us. So pretty exciting stuff out there, man. Yeah, we're excited to see it. Good throw in by the by the Wildcats, and Anna had a great run and a great shot that was just deflected off just a little bit. And so uh, exciting to see the Wildcats coming out and attacking and uh, really ready to make, uh, make some waves here. Yeah. So corner kick, and I can't see who's taking it. It's too far down there. And I've got pretty good eyes. Nice. Fanned oh. it across. And goal kick, that was a header off of Anna Williams. I think that might have been Addie Fenton that took that corner kick. Yeah, so I believe it was. They're mixing it up. A lot of times this season, Joel, you'll see Haley that's been taking these. She's got a pretty powerful leg. Uh, and so that they, I think they've backed off some of that power, switching over to doing Addie, some of the corner kicks, and, and more rainbow in some of these opportunities. And got a nice little head on it, but just a little bit wide. So. Yeah. And something I like that I'm already seeing from the from the Lady Cats tonight is is the quick give and goes right at the beginning, and then automatically switching to the other side of the field when they clogged up the the, the left side over here. They just automatically switched it to the other side and made that run with Anna. And uh, yeah, it's good to see, good to see the ball movement. Hey, and shout out to Den Tram. We see down there on uh, on our our side of the the uh, the field and everything. And so uh, he he's traveling. He's probably got a lot of good opportunities, uh, you know, getting some shots of both the boys and the girls. And man, he's a road warrior. He's been, he's yeah. had some great shots of my daughter and the entire team and, and pretty much every sport that Sulphur Springs offers. So, and there's Rowan back to Haley. Nice little give and go patient. right there. Here she comes over mm. the middle and nobody home that time, but we're going to go right back and intercept that pass. Uh, and we're going to start right back out on the outside. I like us turning it back around, not forcing it. Take good, our time. Let's good use drop the right there. And so we, we've got lots of opportunities here. And uh, right there you have Addie Fenton, and her ball skills are, are phenomenal. And she's probably going to win that 1v1 all night tonight. There's a little Rowan Faircloth. Speaking of 1v1s, and a nice defensive effort there by the uh, Tyler Chapel Hill girls. Yeah, and the girls, uh, uh, like we mentioned earlier, watching the boys' game, the girls have a possession-style game where the boys is more uh, – Run it, run and gun, and so it's it's fun to just watch the girls possess the ball, keep it under good control, and good throw in right there. And you know, if you kind of see too, what I like, it's not always been that way, but more more controlled offense. If they're if they're bottled up and and they've got a good stacked up defense, we don't mind turning the ball around, using a little width, or even playing negative. Right. It, and it, we're just going to take our chances when they're there instead of forcing them. Sometimes you force. Uh oh, there's an intercepted pass by Anna Williams, passes it back to her left outside back, Addie Jones, back Give to Anna, go. back to Haley. And uh, so that, mm. I think you're gonna see some of those options uh, all night long. We really do, uh, we, we have mastered the give and go and uh, it, it makes it really dangerous. Nice, nice Great job by the, the goalkeeper keeper using the width there. And uh, here we go, making a run again. And nice good save, save. That's, hey, good shot by Tyler Chapel Hill. Yeah. That's what I say. Don't sleep on these guys. They 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 want to they want to win just as much mm -hmm. as we do. So yeah. 
So there you go. Nice little, nice little ping and shot by Tyler Chapel Hill. An even better save by Maya Olvera. And uh, there we go. That's a good way. It's kind of action-packed. Five minutes into this game. Yeah. I think what you'll see typically now, you'll, you'll start to sl slow the game down a little bit more and, and we'll attack. Right now, a little bit of jitters. Everybody's frantic a little bit and yep. moving a little faster. That pace is not going to sustain uh, the entire game. You're going to see it. You know, you're going to start to see some some lanes pop open and some some. Uh, you know, there's going to be some. Uh, there's going to be a lot of open space and a lot of a lot of room to dribble here coming up. I would imagine. Yeah, and usually about the 10 to 12 minute mark, everybody settles in and gets a feel for the flow of the game, and uh, that's always important in soccer because there's there's so much running back and forth. Once you get past that first 10 to 12 minutes, uh, everybody really begins to settle in and play their game because, like you said, you got the uh, first playoff game jitters and you just got the adrenaline going and. Um, once you actually uh, get into the flow and the rhythm of the game, uh, everybody settles in, and then you'll see the Lady Cats really begin to, uh, I would like to say, insert their will upon uh, upon Chapel Hill. And then, like, when, when in doubt with this team, I say it all the time, if you've listened to the broadcast, when in doubt, find feet, control the pace, and, and pick your options. When we get in and we try to start forcing options, that's when we turn the ball over repeatedly. We, we take, you know, it, we create a lot of, put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And so that's where we need to win the ball, find some feet, and regain possession of this game because they've got a little momentum going. They're not really, you know, taking quality yeah. shots, but they've they're kind not of really hung threatening out down here. We've, yeah. we've turned the ball over a couple of times. That's where we just need to solidify, calm mm -hmm. down, find some feet, and, yeah. and play our game. Start yeah, they're, over. They're, they're not really posing a major threat, but they are. They do have a little bit of momentum on their yeah. side. They're they're uh, winning the balls in the air uh, more than the Wildcats are right here at the moment. Sure. Um, and so that's always a, a telltale sign of of aggression and how they're coming out ready to play. So we do have some options here. We have some options out on the the width around the ten yard line on both sides. Um, Randy can certainly. Uh, Lob it right in there. So here we go. They, we, we've gotten it right back to them. But another turnover. There's Rowan turning it around. Okay. I, I don't mind that. Just well, let's work it back. Let's make some good decisions here. So finding feet. Here we go. Good ball to nice Anna Nice turn. Right there. Nice turn. Oh, oh, oh. We got a little cut here. And foul. There we go. So we'll get a free kick and we'll line it up. Oh, no. He didn't call it. He said play on. Wow, that's surprising. Yeah, I thought that was going to be a free kick. That wasn't much of one. Yeah, it went straight to the sidelines. There wasn't much advantage on that call at all. So that's fine. Getting the jitters out of the yeah. way, it doesn't matter who you are. You can be first place or fourth place. There's always going to be jitters. There's a lot of pressure when you're doing real well. Everybody expects your best. They've got a different kind of pressure than the Tyler Chapel Hill girls do right now. Um, but there's a lot of soccer to play tonight. So... Uh, that's what we should need to keep doing because we, we're, we have the talent out there to do it and we've got the right people and personnel out there. And so that's uh, – here we go. Yeah, and like, like we were talking about in the last game with the the no call right there by the ref, the refs are going to let the ladies play tonight. And so that's good to know from the beginning of how they're going to call the game. And um, if they're going to let them play, then, then so, so and, be And it. that's going to be a battle. You have this uh, – she's a good-sized athlete. Uh, they have a couple of them right there in the midfield. And so the girl that's playing holding mid for them, she's a good-sized girl. So at some point, who's going to give it back? If they're going to let them play physical, are you just going to get beat up or are you going to do some beating up? And that's a physical game. I promise you that uh, the girls are going to remember. Uh, oh, my gosh, there what a go. great, 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 great little pass there. And that's what we need. We need to win the balls in the air and take control uh, instead of letting them win it and try to take it away. Oh, my gosh, oh, Eddie wow. Fenton, what a great shot. Nice. Created some space, uh, cut the ball back, wide open shot, yeah. and uh, wow, just right a, up. just a little bit over, a little wow. bit over. So that that's a that's a bona fide scoring opportunity right there. Good job, just you know, bringing the ball down with some some poise and being able to. Anytime you're in the box right there, it's a nerve wracking. Yeah, and in the traffic and everything, still being able to think about that and create some lane or some space for yourself. Yeah, and to just get that shot off was was pretty awesome because there was a lot of traffic in there and. A lot of ladies around her, kicking at her ankles, ready to trying to steal it. And so, great job. Uh-oh, there's the turn. Look nice. at that. I like it. All night. Here comes Jolie. Watch her up the edge. Nice, nice ball. ball. Great job. Jolie Moore to Rowan. And mm. here's a foul. Are we going to call it? Nope. No, no ball call. whatsoever. Finish it. 
Mm, wow. So that, that's that's where you got to notice, though. I mean, it is what it is. You can't make him call it. You can't complain and make him call it. But you can certainly serve it back. Absolutely. And so how, Absolutely. how many times are we going to get fouled without giving it back? And, uh, and and fouls are part of the game. And so we have a few girls that are that are not going to – that are. oh, here we go. Here we're battling. And they're a nice, nice job. That's going to be a battle right there. Uh, you see the players kind of talking to the refs. That's part of the game. Yeah. Well, while we got a quick second, we've been telling you about all our friends. We told you a little bit about them earlier, but I want to give another big shout-out to our friends over at the stadium at Burgerland. Go see them. They pride themselves on exceptional food with equally exceptional service. Their Burgerland promise is that the tea is sweet, the burgers are greasy, and the large fries are indeed large. Corey and I can attest to that. The food is fresh, and they cook right in front of you. Don't take our word for it. Next time you're in the mood for a good old-fashioned burger, visit their lively hole-in-the-wall joint on the square. Come see how they are creating Burgerland fans one burger at a time. Their hours are Sunday through Wednesday from 11 to 2 and then 11 to 8 on uh, Thursday through Saturday. So plenty of opportunities to go visit them. Oh, there's a great scoring opportunity, right? Oh, it's a good throw in, good scoring opportunity. We're still battling though. Oh, oh! great turning shot. So, I mean, that's – it's obviously – they have some good size athletes on their team. They know our capability. And their game plan, it's real crystal clear. They're going to be real physical with us. Yeah. And so that's part of the deal. we got to be able to weather the storm, and we have the personnel to do that. We can be a physical back, but we got to be real physical right back right now. Yep. We don't need to wait till the second half to have the coach talk about it. We need to, you know, Start look at what's physical. happening. And, and, and the ref's drawing the line right off the bat. All right, here's a, here's a, uh, here's a 1v1 with the keeper. And nice job, nice job. Vera. She came out a little Good late, job. but still solidified yeah. and uh, and saved a goal scoring opportunity. Good That's what they yeah. want. They're playing heavy on defense. Caught us slipping, slipped a yeah. ball through, and uh, and almost came out. And that's a that's a big deal. Yeah. So great job by our defense and by our keeper Maya. Yeah, uh, being able to save that goal there. All right, there's a turn. That's a big athlete, but uh, we got a little bit of speed on and her. Oh, wow. That one almost went through. And we're, we're at that point where we were about uh, just a little over 12 minutes in. And uh, besides that last uh, little shot by the Chapel Hill, it's been on the Wildcats scoring in for, for a good bit. And we took three good shots. And so we're starting to get some opportunities as they're settling in. Yeah. And we're getting a little ambitious out there. With I mean, I, I understand Anna was teeing it up, looking for Jolie to make a run. Jolie did not make the run. But with that – we slip those through, though, sometimes. Yeah. Not, as long as we don't do it all the time. I don't mind taking a, a couple of chances like that. But that's a couple in a row where, uh, boy, that that would that'd be nice to have one of those slip through. But uh, they're certainly – that's certainly their game plan. They're Absolutely. Gonna, this that's little girl right here looks like she's got some speed. But uh, hopefully we, we learned our lesson there and, and we're not going to let them have one. So finding Emma to Anna again. Right. Oh, and nice job by the defense. And throw in Silver Springs Lady Cats. You're going to have Addie Jones down here on the left side. You probably saw McKenzie on the on the right uh, uh, the right defender side out there, right outside back. She can throw the ball in. She can chunk the rock. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's, like a, it's like a corner kick if she really wants to let it go uh, down there when it's inside the box in that area. She did a good job getting the ball back on defense a second ago. Yeah. And it, it's going to be with, with some experience, she's going to get better and better. Right now what she – Lacks in some technical ability, just with some experience. Boy, she makes up for it with uh -huh. athleticism. Absolutely. She's an athlete. Yeah. And, uh, and she'll battle out there, too. You wouldn't know she's a senior, uh, a freshman, uh, by the way. She really, really does go out there. All right, here we go. Oh, oh nice there, ball. great ball. Run onto it. Mm. Throw in Sulphur Springs. Yeah, and it's exciting to see the, uh, the freshman come out like that and play tough, and you're just uh, excited about her potential over the next oh, yeah. three years uh, as she continues to develop and mature and – um, yeah, so exciting exciting years ahead for the Wildcats. All right, 25-55 left. Sulphur Springs throw in. And here we go. Here we're throwing Faircloth. Slice hey. and dice. Ooh. And nice ball. Oh, great oh, shot. Throwing here we Faircloth. Go. Let's in go. There. That's what we're talking Took about. Took the cut and ripped the shot. Here, that's Amazing. the problem. Wow. Hey, they, they had it defended well. Yeah. But she, slided, she slid over. Uh, sliced and diced him a little bit. Yeah. Wide open shot. You can't let Rowan do that. Oh, yeah. She she just unleashed on that one. Y'all can see the replay here on your screen. There's that Great cut. ball control. Yeah. I see lots of clappers going. Wow. Actual clappers and clapper clappers. Yeah. 
And that's the thing. You got a big physical defense, and they've been they've been coached and properly so instructed to be physical. Yeah. And I've always been told you're either bigger or you're faster, and you got to figure out which yeah. one pretty fast. And I think we just found out we're faster, and uh, we're going to have to use some ball skills uh, to to get out there, and we're going to have to get out there and get ahead and, and use our talent and get around these guys. We can yeah. do that with passes very easily. Absolutely, and the quickness of our of our ladies up front. Uh, was just shown right there, and yeah. on how she was able to just make that one one move, and then quick turn and take that shot, and just bury it in the back of the net. Woody, I believe that's goal forty-one. Yeah, that's for forty-one. Fair play. That's remarkable. Yeah, forty-one. Forty-one goals, and she did not play the last couple of games, and so uh, all right, here we go. Here's uh, here we have. Oh. Number 19, Rosa. Rosa Lopez. So, Rosa Lopez, we've talked about her a couple of times. She's one of the freshmen that came up. Rosa's been doing a real fine job with just maintaining control, the way she receives the ball, the way she turns, the way she distributes. Sometimes she gets out of traffic with some good ball skills and everything like that. It's been nice to see that level of depth coming through. So, it's, it's uh, very cool, very cool to see. you got multiple – Young players getting playoff experience. So, anyway, all right, here we go. And so that we're seeing the long ball. That's the game plan for Tyler Chapel Hill. Long ball. Try to catch a slipping and meet Randy Johnson. Randy to Rosa. There's Emma disrupting the play like she's been doing all season long, making it really tough. And then that looked like a handball, but it, it slipped right through. And nice, nice turn by. And they're they're taking some shots from 30 yards out. That's going to be hard to put in. Um, I'm not I'm not seeing I'm not seeing that a lot. Yeah, and with, with shots like that, it's like the, there's not enough power on them to even make our goalie flinch uh, from that far out with Chapel Hill. And and the crazy thing is with Chapel Hill hanging back with so many defenders, uh, that's their only hope right now is to to get a long ball going through and catch us slipping in some way. But uh, the Lady Cats are solid on defense, that's for sure. And so it's it's good to see how they're they're holding their positions and playing playing the ball around uh, from one side to the other. Now we've got a throw in happening by the Lady Cats. And we tried to stay – we tried to save it, but hey. And so you don't remember personnel from over a year ago, but I, I, I do – that I feel like the athleticism is – that probably comes with age. They're, they're, you know, they might have been a young team last year, but I feel like uh, this is a way more physical team than we faced last year. Uh, they came to play. They're battling. And, again, that's they probably prepared for us differently too. They know yeah. we're going to come out and score, and they probably looked us up on max preps. And so you got to give it to them from a, from a tactical standpoint and game planning a little bit differently. That's really what you got to, you know, commend them for because we're, we're a tough team to deal with. Uh-oh. Yeah. Great. Great nice ball turn. in the inside. And, hey, being patient. There you go. And good drop back. Oh. It's a good little so drop back we're, pass. We're but collapsing on that, yeah. so that's fine. We'll restart it again. Yeah, win it back, and now we're in control again. And here comes uh, Emma Romero to Addie Fenton. Addie Fenton. Nice oh, shot from cannon. Addie. Wow. Wow, from about 35 yards yeah. out. That was a shot. I mean, I, she must have seen something we can't see yeah. from up here in the booth. And she caught the keeper off a little bit because that keeper had to make make a run to get it. Yeah. So it was a good good look by Addy right there. Chapel Hill's making a run down the sideline right now, but we got four Lady Cats back there with nobody else, else helping out Chapel Hill. And we just win the ball back. Here we go to the outside. And working it up the middle. We goes. do a very good we, – we can work from the width of the wings, but we do a fine job of working it up in the middle, as you've seen tonight, Joel. I mean, they're, they're just uh, – the, the holding mids, winning balls, and then finding those attacking mids pretty regularly. And then yeah. on occasion, even finding some of the wingers out there. And so that's just kind of like uh, – it feels like almost a point guard in basketball, working the ball intentionally yeah. up the field. And you see it over and over and over. And that and when we do that in repetition and find the lanes wherever they may be, 
Sometimes we get bottled up. We'll turn it back around and use the width of the, the defense and go on the opposite side of the field and everything. That's Lady Cat soccer. Yeah, and, and I so, love watching the Lady Cats play because it, it doesn't matter where the, they're at. You always see them in triangles. So they always have two options yep. for a give and go either direction. And, and they've like you said, they've mastered the give and go. And it's just it's fun to watch them play control ball and, and really play in their game. And you can tell they've they've scouted Rowan. I mean, they've basically got somebody on her at all time. Looks like they're man marking her. Thirteen yeah. is right there on her, and it's still hard to deal with. Uh, and they are just clearing the ball out of there. I know you, when you hear Rowan's feet pitter pattering, uh, you're ready. But if you look at thirteen, uh, she's been really close to her when the ball's in her general vicinity. Uh, you know, the past couple of times the ball's been down there, but they're they're not going to leave her alone. I can assure you, they've you know we've broadcast these games. I'm sure they've watched these games. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, every, everybody knows who Rowan is. Yeah, we, I remember when when we were playing in high school, we were playing a, a team that they had a, a great transfer player uh, from Brazil, and he was their forward. So uh, our coach just got our best athlete on the team and said, "I want you on his hip the whole time and be under his ankles, kicking at his ankles, and just." Frustrate, frustrate him, and that looks like what they're trying to do to Rowan. Obviously, she got the one great so shot that, off already, and that is like the right here. That's the defensive makes we can't continue to make. Yeah, it's the mistakes like that. It doesn't matter right now, but if we play somebody that has a good forward, that right there, we misjudged it, and we gave them literally. Luckily, they gave it away for us for free. Right, but that could have been a breakaway. And yeah. those are the things we need to clean up right now. Where we're where we're playing when we got the in the first round. Yeah, a little bit of a run right. Right there, keeper came out. Yeah, but but I agree. Those, those plays, we got to make sure our defense is dialed in and I mean and intentional that. about about that. Couple quick score updates for y'all. The Silver Springs Lady Cats softball team a huge twelve to one victory is what the update we got from Game Changer. And then we mentioned the boys would play the winner of Palestine and Sabine. Palestine currently with a two goal lead in the first half of that one. So very well may be a uh, area rematch for those two. And we'll take a little mag through there. Let's go ahead and be intentional with some passes. You got plenty of options. Now Haley. And there we go. Rowan just stole that like candy from a baby. Let's go. Here Straight we go, to Rowan. The post. Take that shot. Oh, nice. Over to Jolie. Nice. Negative ball over. And we're just not ever going to call a foul, even if it's in the box. If it's not in the box, there's not been a foul called. Yeah. There's not been a foul called yet, I don't think, has there? No, and there's been three questionable calls. At, questionable is uh, putting it gently um, that should have been called. So, obviously, our fans in the stands did not like that either. I'm not down there. I don't mean to sound critical, but at some point. Yeah, you yeah, got to point, you got to draw a line in the, in the sand. So here comes Anna Williams back in. Uh, she took a little breather out there. And uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, she'll come back out there and make a difference. But uh, she had she had a little break out there. So not sure what was going on. But, hey, good job by Rose out there solidifying the midfield and distributing it very well. All right. Great kick coming over. Oh, that's oh great just cross. over Anna's wow. head. Here comes Addie. She'll come over here and cross it. Playing it back in. And they're just doing a good job of clearing the ball out. They were yeah. definitely – Feeling the pressure right there. 1740 left in the first half. If you're joining us late, it was a Rowan Faircloth goal with 25 minutes and 45 seconds left in the half that got us started. And turn and shoot. Great oh shot. Oh my gosh, oh. bro. Like that's that's a tough deal. They yeah. know she's coming. Yeah. They really do know she's coming. The crazy thing is they know she's coming, but they're still not able to contain her. Which that's is right. awesome to see. She's got did, did, did the great step over again. It was almost just a direct replay of her previous goal. And then they're packing it in pretty good, but if they're smart, they will key in and probably double her. When that happens, you're going to have Addie and Anna uh, that are going to have a little bit more space to, to do. Right now they're playing pretty evenly, but yeah. that's dangerous when you do that because you're leaving Rowan with a 1v1, and she's winning those battles right now inside the box. Yeah. She just wasn't tuned in on that last shot like she was on the first goal that she made. Yeah. But if you keep giving her opportunities, they're going to go in the back of the net. That's yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't miss very many of those. And still, it wasn't even a, a, a horrible miss. It was just outside the pole. And so there's the uh, the long ball that they are accustomed to playing. and it's uh, But th it's those that's, mistakes that's that we mistake, keep right? doing. we gotta, we got to stop doing that, girls. 
And when you're going back and listening, looking at the broadcast, I want you to go back and look at that play. That's what we've got to stop doing. Yeah. That is the part where there's no reason to create pressure, and we just do it. And, yeah. and we've gotten away with it in a weak district. We can't do that in the playoffs. Right, because when you start playing some of those teams that have some of those power forwards up there that uh, are really aggressive and, and got a little bit more speed than uh, Tyler Chapel Hill's ladies do, they're going to they're gonna capitalize on some of those. And a little ambitious out there, but she could put it in. Yeah. Uh, but she did not get a hold of that one, so uh, I can't blame them for shooting. I know she saw – there was – if you're going to pack it in, you're going to have some space out there. And, and yeah. uh, so if they're going to crack some shots, that's going to have to be where one of the goals come from. And so nice battles going on out there, though. Yeah, and, and I'm not mad at taking shots from 30 yards out. I mean, no, uh-uh. Not when they got the they're, leg to do it. They're fully capable. Yeah. I'll tell you, the Addie Fenton shot a minute ago, that surprised me. I didn't see it coming. Yeah. She beamed that one. Here goes Rowan taking off down the side. Two on one right now. Rowan crossing it in. Oh, how do you tackle somebody in the box and the ref not make a call? Guys, this is uh, this is unbelievable. That hey, we'll call we'll call a throw in, but we're not going to call a foul in the box. Neither one of them. Right. Yeah, that throw in's about all we're going to get that tonight was tough. as far as calls go. Well, and this is the good thing about this, Woody, is what you talked to the girls about at the uh, dinner the other night is, hey, how are you going to play through adversity? How are you going to play through when the refs aren't calling it for you when they should? And so, and that's part of it. You can, and you can complain and the fans can holler and the announcers and Chad's media can give them a tough time, but that's yeah. not going to change what they're doing. But, you know, that's just part of it. At some point, they might turn it on and, uh, and it might be a difference, you yeah. know. Good oh, here we go. Amanda nice there. give and go. And we tried to turn it back. Nice job by the by the uh, defense for the Tower Chapel Hill girls. It's a way for our ladies to win it back right there. Good job. Making a run down the side. Oh, dangerous. Oh, get there. And they're just, just going to pop that far. ball out of bounds. And here's what you're going to see, too. We're, we have They've had a couple of runs. I don't know if they had any runs last year. So, hats off yeah. to Tyler Chapel Hill. But at the same time, we've had the ball down on our side. We've been pressing. That's exhausting when you're ch constantly chasing and feel a threat of a, of a goal-scoring deal. How long, how long is their stamina going to last? Right. That's what I want to know. We start getting into the second half, and we start getting into to, uh, you know middle part, deep into the second half. What's that going to be like? Yeah, and uh, and so I think that might be our, our conditioning is pretty good, and we've got a little depth, and so uh, uh oh, yeah, and, and I liken it to the the football analogy. It's when the fourth quarter comes, and you want that offensive line to have exhausted the defense and just lean on them all game. So then they just the offensive line takes over in the fourth quarter, and the more pressure we keep on their defense uh, up there trying to score, the the defense is going to get exhausted, and they keep pulling back uh, more and more, and, and leaving just one lone person up front to try and make a run, and so. So I believe our game plan, it, it, they're doing pretty good with it. What, and we, we need to, like, we have, we're, we're pressuring them. We need to be really, really intentional with our passes. We're trying to force a couple of things, and yeah. we're right there. Let's let's be intentional. They're playing us right on, but uh, they're they're one v one right now. But they're it's tough. This girl's this girl's pretty good little player. Right on Rowan. Yeah. That's that thirteen again we talked about. Man marking Rowan. Um, that's her assignment tonight. She's yeah. given up one goal, all right, but not not a Hattie. Yes. And so you know, I, you know, if if that's my, if I'm that coach at halftime, coming up in about 12 minutes, I'm saying, hey, check that out. Yeah. You know, you've made it difficult and not giving her a wide open look every time. To the wild thing that I don't think we talk about enough with Rowan is she somehow is quicker with the ball. Yeah. I don't know how that's possible, but she's she's ridiculous. And nice shielding there by Addie Jones. And so Haley up there to we Anna. Go. We got all day of space. We got speed or you got strength. Which one you got? You got uh, passing. Is Great ball to Rowan. And, speed. and, and there Rowan goes Rowan right on a breakaway. Her. Take that shot. Oh, nice, nice Rowan. Oh, oh, I right thought across. that was going in. Got a little curl on it. Nice job, Rowan. 13 right on her. Uh, Rowan's got some speed and technical wow. ability. And if that's their game plan to leave her one-on-one, -on -one, I don't know that uh, 13 is going to win that battle over the course of the night. She's done yeah. a fantastic job. That's something to look out for. We're seeing it over and over. A lot of teams we're playing are doubling her. Rowan, yeah. And so, you know, that might be, you know, that might be the entire game plan. It wouldn't surprise me if it is. She's making it difficult on Rowan. Rowan gets yeah. some easy goals, and we're not getting any easy ones tonight. No. And so – 
And 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 I love the way Rowan's competing against her though. She's yeah. not backing down. And from our vantage point up here, it looked like it was going to hit the side of that net. It did. And it, it, did. it just and curled it just, at the last second. Yeah, it just curled at, right it, at the last second. You know, we're, we're giving shot, though. we're giving the the girl from Tyler Chapel Hill a lot of good kudos, but at the same time, she's under a, a, an extraordinary amount of pressure. Uh, she, you know, she feels it. She knows she's got ball skills. She's one mistake away from giving up a one v one. She feels it, uh, and so that, that's that's going to be an interesting matchup every single uh, time this happens tonight. So there's a physical play by Haley, state champion power lifter, came out to play right there. Oh, and uh, nice, nice uh, job by the center back there. Almost fed the ball to Rowan, gave it up at the last minute there, and caught him sleeping. Let's Great. go, let's go, Romero. So we're keeping on going. They're stressing a little bit. And that's what happens when, when you're under pressure. They're trying to pass responsibility, go anywhere. They pass it right out of bounds, turnover, right back to us. Yeah, and, and I love the aggressiveness of our, of our team. They're, they're, they're not letting Tyler Chapel Hill win the ball. They're going after to win it. And, and that's what you want to see. You want to see them winning every ball, controlling it, keeping possession of it, and then taking, taking some quality shots. But the, the, the story of the game so far is – the physicality, and there's not – I don't. has there been a single foul called? Not a single foul. I don't think so. And so that's surprising. There's been some rough play, and that gets a little dangerous out there. Yeah. You, you know, you kind of want to go out there and, and make sure that – but they're, they're certainly let them play. That's the speech at halftime. Yeah. They're letting you play. You beat up or get beat up. Yeah, go play. Yeah, and, and we're not talking, talking anything dirty. We're just talking – if they're going to put bodies, put bodies back on them. Don't be intimidated right. by it. Fouls are part of the game. Yeah. And fouls and toughness, it's, it's definitely part of every – oh, oh my gosh. And oh. a left-footed shot. Haley's not a lefty, but she will surprise you. Yeah. And she'll pop a left-footed shot in sometimes. But on the run, one touch. Yeah, that, was, uh, it's that hard, was tough. It's hard for anybody, even if it was a left-footer. Yeah. Great effort. I would love to see her just uh, take a one touch on that and, yeah. and settle it down and then rip the shot. But, hey, I'm not complaining. I'm not down there running with them. So there you she, go. She put out a ton of effort. And when you're on a dead sprint like that, just – just gain maintaining control of the ball. It's it's unbelievably hard. So we got a little bit of a shift. Jolie Moore on the left uh, left wing now, and then you have uh, Valerie Flecker out on the right side. So subbed in for Haley Schultz. And so nice win by McKenzie. Yes. Tough play. Let's go pass it. Be intentional. We've got options. Let's go win the ball back. Right now, let's go win the ball back. Don't let them dribble. Win the ball back. Put That's pressure. what we need to do. If we don't go win the ball back, we let them pass it into space. And now they've gotten two complete passes. Let's battle. Let's go win the ball. Now they're on a run. And then shield it all the way up. And now we got a goal kick. So it was a good job. But that's what you know, typically we do a really, really good job of. We lose the ball and we're right back in there. We usually don't give them that much time to just tee it up and pass and do it. We, we, we get in their grill yeah. and, and, and really create a little bit of pressure. So, But it is late in the first half. I get that too. But that's what our claim to fame is. is yeah. Is and, you and that lose sequence the ball, that they, go win it. That sequence that they just did, that, that's uncommon to see done against our Lady Cats. Yeah. They're usually uh, a little bit quicker and, and a little bit more pressure to win the ball back. But, uh, yeah, they're playing hard. They're playing good. Emma Romero looking oh. for Flecker over there. Back to Emma Romero again. She'll find Anna right here. No, no, turn it around. That's fine. Yep, she did find Anna. There we go. In some traffic. Whoop. Right there, Anna. A little rope of dope, a little up to Rowan Faircloth. With her. Here we go out to the left wing. Rowan was three on one right there. Yep. Oh, oh here we great. go. Oh, oh, nice shot. Anna Williams. She, yeah, she was 3v1. Yeah. I was looking. It looked like on the left side, Jelly will make runs, and she was looking for it. And she was yeah, ready. She, she was ready. We, we got to be ready for her on the left side. Had a lot of space over there. That's dangerous. She can finish. Yeah, I think one of the uh, things we need to focus on, even at halftime going into the second half, is is finding uh, how to include more players other than Rowan right yep. now because they're bottling her up pretty yep. good. Like we just said, it was three on one, but but Jolie on the outside who can finish too. It's uh, some some of the other ladies. Let's let them step up and finish finish some shots. Uh oh, slice and dice, slice on, and Anna. dice. Uh oh, oh 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 oh, and she just got rolled. Are we ever gonna call it? We got okay. We got a PK. No, dude, that's like three. Our, our three fans, of them. Our fans right now are livid. These aren't even our fans, and they know. Like my <laughs> gosh, wow. 
I mean, at what point do you get clobbered on inside the box it's, or out yeah. and actually get a call? It's ridiculous. And it's, and it's changing the dynamic of the game. It is, yeah. It's definitely affecting the game. Good thing this is on film so everybody can see it. I, I hope they go back and watch the performance. And I don't want to complain about refs, but like yeah. at the end of the day, enough is enough. It's 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 uh I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Like we have people in the booth next to us that are that are not Sulphur Springs people. I don't I think they're the the running the the uh, the scoreboard and everything and they're just the hometown folks and they yeah. were just looking at us like, "Oh my gosh, I can't like, believe that's what happened? three times now." Yeah. I'm like, "A neutral third party agrees with us too. Not that that matters or it's going to change the refs, but um, you know, we go out there and and clock somebody and, and from behind in the box, we better not get a foul either." Yeah. And, and I can remember three blatant fouls. There should have been about five called for us that there were just – there's been nothing called. And I'm not asking for a card necessarily, but, my gosh, a, a call and get control under the game, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. All right, here goes Let's Addy. Mm. I mean, and, my gosh, and we're going to keep talking about it because it keeps happening, but at some point, hey, they're going to keep tackling us inside the yeah. box because there's zero consequence there's no whatsoever. Call. And they're making a, we're making a run right now. Somebody chime in on the chat here and tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm just complaining to God and everybody over here on Chaz Media <laughs> because I, 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 I try not to be a homer, but I know soccer, and it's just like, my gosh, like, like give us a chance out here. Yeah. So, And it's different if they, were, if they were actually gaining the ball or going after the ball, but when you're just putting a body on somebody and not going for the ball, that's, that's the difference. So if they did a slide tackle and got the ball and, and we rolled on it, that's different. Uh, but when they're not even going after the ball and they're just going after the body, that's where you got to step in and say, say enough's enough. Call the foul. All right, so 427 left in the first half. We've got a goal kick, and this is, uh, this is a really good half of soccer if you're a soccer fan, and it's a really good half of soccer if you are – if you're rooting for the Tyler Chapel Hill group, uh, being down 1-0 uh, last year, it was it was quite a bit differently, uh, and so you, you got to go in with a, a little bit of confidence, saying, "Hey, that we, you know we, our, our game plan's coming to coming to light." Now, I don't know if the game plan necessarily is let's keep fouling them in the box and count on the refs not giving a, you know away any calls whatsoever. Right. That's helpful, but uh, you know I, I'm shocked that it's just 1-0 right now. Uh, we've had our chances. Uh, we just have not been able to take advantage of take advantage of them. A PK, at least one of them, uh, was was warranted. So, uh, but that's part of it. That's part of the game. We can't do anything else about it right now. We just got to go play soccer better than they do. Yeah, and, and that's that's the key part right there. When the refs aren't going to call it, you just got to stick to your game. Make sure you're not getting uh, frustrated. They're not getting in your head, and just just keep executing. All right, here goes Jolie. Great cut back. Here, here's uh, oh. Anna coming for some assistance. Take that, Anna. And a nice shot, nice save by the keeper. Uh, didn't get a hold of it like uh, like uh, she has in some occasions. It was a really good low, low yeah. trajectory shot over there on the yeah, near right side. Yeah, right to the corner. It was so. Uh, I guess in my mind, I was thinking it was going to go upper ninety on the right side, but it just didn't. But it was still a good, 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 good pace on the yeah. shot. Yeah, when the keeper got to lay out for it to get it, it was it was, it was definitely a challenging. She shot was for the concerned keeper. enough to lay out for it. Yeah. There we go. Keep battling. Jolie's going to battle, Jolie. too. There we go. Come on, Rowan. Let's get one before half. There we go. Finish. She's going to finish. There it goes. Let's go, Lady Cats! She's going to finish. Hey, that. that's what you that can do great. when you don't get fouled from behind in the box. That's score awesome. a goal. Here we go. We've had plenty of opportunities. Refs can't do anything about that. 2-0, Lady yeah. Cats. Let's go. Great job, Rowan. That's the way to keep control, keep composure. That is what you – like, Joel, you just said it. We can't control anything anybody else does. We can just play our game. That's what we do. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Yep. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Um, I'm 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 happy that she was able to weather that storm. It gets frustrating as a player. It keep does. Getting pushed down and fouled and things like that. Yeah. But hey, she plays it the highest level you can play at. She plays yeah. on a on a true ECNL DKSC team. She plays against every player she ever plays with in her club ball. Just that much contact. Just that much pressure. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's how you do it. Put it in the back of the net. Two goals for the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats, both of them by Rowan Faircloth. That is up to 42 goals on the season. The previous single season Wildcat record was 38. Wow. And uh, she broke that uh, several weeks back and uh, got a couple of games for rest. And here we go again. 
And uh, we got two more minutes to make a little run. Momentum is a real thing. Our girls are coming alive and feeling it. Yeah. And one of the craziest uh, soccer stats that there, that there is is um, after you score a goal, usually within 90 seconds, if you're not on your game, the other team scores. Yeah. And it's crazy to see how quick the momentum can shift after a goal. So we saw how quick the boys scored. Yeah, absolutely. But you can feel us come alive right now. It's like, my gosh, we got a little breather. Let's, yeah. I mean, let's get this thing going. Yeah. And I think, I think after halftime, I think the girls are going to come out and they're really just going to lean on them heavy and keep playing their game and start to pull away a little bit. That would be my prediction for the second half. But uh, super proud of the way they battled through the first half. I mean, there's sure. been some, some tough hits, some tough fouls that didn't get called. And like you said, they haven't called one foul the whole game. And that's unheard of in a soccer match. Nice give and go, give and go, back and forth. Let's Ooh. go. Okay, pull the trigger from back there. Man, she's seeing something yeah. in wide open lane. But I like that. Addy to Anna. Anna to Addy. Um, yeah. Wide open shot. That's dangerous. They're really concerned about Rowan. Right. That creates some space. And it's really loosened up in there uh, towards the end of, of this half for sure. Yeah. So, and, and I'm not mad at those shots because they got five. Man. They got a five defender wall go. back there. And just to try and play it through is is difficult with all the, with all the traffic going on. A lot of on. traffic, yeah. for sure. The only, the only thing that they might have could have done different is if they could just chip it over their head a little bit and let them run onto it, but that's even that's even really difficult. Emma Romero slowing it down all over this girl. And then, a, a, uh, I mean, it was a shot, but not a, yeah. not a quality shot. Emma Romero all up in her face. She was on a full sprint run, slowed down to a walking pace. Uh, that's, that's what her specialty is. Swarming yeah. up. She's not huge, but my gosh, she plays big. Yeah, just, just great defense right there. Way to break down, way to slow that girl's pace way down where she couldn't uh, keep running on and, and wait for some help to get back. So now the Lady Cats are driving. And All right. And so that's going to be about it at the uh, first half. 2-0 Sulphur Springs Lady Cats. We had uh, midway goal and one towards the end of the first half. Uh, lots of controversial stuff that maybe I don't agree with, but I'm not yeah. the one down there. I'm not the one calling the game. We still appreciate the refs being here and having a three ref yeah. crew. There's been some times where we'd only have two. Two, yeah. So, that's, but that's, as a fan and as a dad, man, it gets out of hand. And yeah. you got these girls that are, I mean, adults, and that's where injuries happen. We got to get it under control. Yeah. For the love of the game, let's get this thing under control. Yeah. And don't change the dynamic of the game. Right. That and, and changes and for both the teams. dynamic. Yeah. They you don't want somebody getting hurt, and then yeah. whatever team goes on, you definitely don't want them getting hurt or struggling. So. We've reached the midway point here in Lindell. Sulphur Springs Lady Cats leading 2-0 with a pair of goals from Rowan Faircloth. We are ready for our second Bell Concrete. Or, uh, I apologize. We've done two Bell Concrete pregame shows. Now we're ready for our second A&S halftime show of the night. A&S Air Conditioning, are you having problems finding comfort in your own space? Let A&S find a perfect solution for your heating and cooling needs. They've been providing affordable heating and AC repair for over 31 years. Be sure to give them a call for their spring maintenance package where just for $180 they will check your system, check free on and clean coils and then uh, for each additional unit would be another $110. Also, huge congratulations to new owners Scotty Reed and Kevin Gibson. We appreciate everything they do. Always helping us bring you all of these broadcasts. We're going to hear from them and some of our other friends and then we'll be back to recap what we've seen in the first half. A&S Air Conditioning is your family owned and operated hometown air conditioning business. We have been serving the heating and cooling needs of Hopkins and surrounding counties for over 31 years. We work hard to provide award winning customer service on every call and our friendly service techs are available 24 hours a day. We offer the industry's highest rated products servicing all brands whether it's new or existing, residential or commercial, a &S Air Conditioning is here to serve you. Call us today at 903-885-8072 and let us help make your home or business comfortable and more efficient. And I couldn't walk, I was doing the couch surfing and uh, Dr. Cardell said go to Dallas, so I did. And then I, they, I said, they asked if I wanted help at home and I said, yes. Oh, it was, it was awesome, it was really good. We, we contacted them while we were still in Dallas and sp told them which specific company that we wanted to use in Sulphur Springs. We had already talked to them and checked all that out. And it, th the care was great and it was, it, it made you feel secure. It, it was major surgery and we just wanted somebody there to make sure we were doing everything that we were supposed to. 
and Peggy wanted to get well as quick as she could. And I was a nervous caretaker and it just, it gave us a level of comfort that uh, we just felt good about. It started getting a whole lot better pretty well, quick, didn't walk. it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a big thing. She yeah, could yeah, walk was, actually. Uh... The care was great, the people were nice, they, they cared very much. They wanted you to feel as good as you possibly could. I would absolutely recommend Amethyst. Yeah. Anytime, every time you need some home health care. They're not awesome. Very often. <laughs> but they're awesome. Turn your ideas into unique giveaways, gifts, and uniforms. TJW Custom Apparel in Sulphur Springs specializes in creating personalized apparel for individuals, sports teams, businesses, and corporations. With the highest quality printing and customer service, we guarantee your vision is brought to life with precision and speed. Our in-house graphic designers and experienced team are all you need to create a statement piece that is truly your own. Call or visit us today to experience the difference at TJW Custom Apparel. You think it? We create it. Welcome to Muddy Jake's, your home for delicious food and the best sports entertainment. We have something for everyone, from live bands on Saturdays, Kids Eat Free Tuesdays, Wing Wednesdays, and Happy Hour All Day on Thursdays. Come for lunch, dinner, or late night snacks. Our freshly cooked meals will make you feel right at home. Whether you're looking for a hearty burger, some tasty wings, or just a cold drink, we've got it all. With a lively atmosphere, friendly service, and great prices, Muddy Jake's is the perfect place to watch the Silver Strings Wildcat game every Friday night. Muddy Jake's, where the food is always hot and the fun never stops. Clayton Sulphur Springs is hiring home building team members. Join an energetic, collaborative team and play a part in opening doors to a better life for families across the country. Home building team members, Clayton Sulphur Springs, starting pay is $23 per hour. We provide excellent benefits, including paid time off after 30 days of employment and volunteer time off to support causes you care about. Join our team and build your career with Clayton. Interested in becoming a part of the Clayton Sulphur Springs team? Call 903-439-0242 and apply today. At Gary's Termite and Pest Control Company, we help homeowners and business owners control bug and pest problems throughout the Mount Pleasant, Mount Vernon, Winsboro, Pittsburgh, Sulphur Springs, and the surrounding East Texas areas. Don't let pests take control of your life. Trust our reliable pest control service to eliminate unwanted guests and provide you with peace of mind. Safeguard your property and the well-being of your loved ones with our effective pest control solutions. Call us today to find out for yourself why Gary's Termite and Pest Control is your pest control company. Alliance Bank is a community bank. We believe that the future success of the bank is linked to the future of our communities and that as our communities grow, and prosper, the bank will grow and prosper as well. Our bank employees live and work in the communities we serve, and like everyone else, we want a safe place for our children, with good education systems, the best medical services, and job opportunities. This is why you will find Alliance Bank employees volunteering in local service organizations and helping our communities in many ways not directly associated with banking. This has been the Alliance Bank way since 1927. Welcome to our family-owned hardware store since 1994. Here at Hooten's Hardware, we offer a wide variety of tools, materials, and supplies for all your home, business, and outdoor projects and repairs. With over 40,000 square foot of materials in stock, we're sure to have everything you need for any job. We only carry the highest quality products because your satisfaction is our top priority. Our staff is knowledgeable and experienced and happy to assist you in finding the right materials for your next project. So stop in and experience the Hooten's hardware difference today. And remember, we're more than just nuts and bolts. And we are almost ready for the second half of action here in Lindell. Lady Cats currently up 2-0. It's a pair of goals from Rowan Faircloth, the first of which came about midway through the first quarter with 25 minutes, uh, 45 seconds left. And then she got another goal right before the half with two and a half minutes left. We'll take another look at that real quick during our ANS halftime show. And she just does such a good job in these situations. Again, like y'all have been pointing out all night, Defense has been incredible on her tonight, but she just finds a way to get past it, gets her second goal 
of the night. We're almost ready to return. Again, we want to thank ANS so much. Always doing the halftime shows for us. We have such a we, – we appreciate them so much for always being able to bring you the halftime shows. We wouldn't be able to do it if it weren't for them. A couple other friends I did want to tell you about as well, though. That's our friends at Alliance Bank here at Chad's Media and Front Porch News. We know the love and support that Alliance Bank has for the Silver Springs Wildcats and Lady Cats. Stop by and see them on the square or use one of their many convenient drive through services. You can also visit AllianceBank.com for all your financial and banking needs. And then also our friends at Triple Crown Roofing. They are your local roofing experts from repairs to complete roofing systems. With competitive prices and free consultation, they are the easy choice when it comes to roofing. Contact Triple Crown Roofing today at 903-689-0800. Triple Crown Roofing. Roofing done right. Now, Joel, we had talked about it a little bit earlier. Obviously, we've already had one Way Bible Church player of the game tonight. We are very much on our way to a second one as well. And during that read earlier, I had been talking about the uh, the Easter sermon that you have coming up this weekend. Tell us a little bit about Easter at the Way this weekend. Yeah, we're excited to have four Easter services uh, this year. It's going to be an amazing time. Um, we're going to have a Saturday service at 5 o'clock. Um, so for those of you who have to travel and go out of town maybe to see family on Sunday, we'd love for you to join us at 5 p.m. on Saturday night. Uh, and then we'll have three services on Sunday morning. We'll have an 8.30 service, a 10 o'clock service, an 11.30 service. And we're going to have some, some powerful worship. We have uh, activities for the kids, and we have some gifts for them that we want to give away. And so uh, plus an amazing message for all of the kids at TWBC. And uh, when they bring their friends, it's just always good to see that. And, uh, yeah, we got a, got the message ready. I worked on my message for Easter Sunday afternoon and completed it, so my staff had time to do all the graphics and everything. And so uh, it, it was just a, a fun time, and looking forward to Sunday. And I love uh, Easter. Four services in a row is a lot. And so Sunday nights I'm usually spent and crashing out after a good little nap. And then, uh, yeah, and then Monday you're still, you're still feeling a little, the fatigue a little bit uh, from back to back to back on Sunday. So, But, yeah, we would love to have anybody and everybody come and join us 5 o'clock on Saturday or 8.30, 10 o'clock or 11.30 on Sunday morning. Yes, sir. We appreciate y'all so much for one being a part of the broadcast, but we know so many of the kids and parents of these different athletes at, at Silver Springs obviously go to the way. So being a part of it and supporting them, we, we appreciate y'all so much for all of that. Yeah, thank you for the and opportunity. I also appreciate you being up here with us tonight. We are ready for the second half. As you see, the, the ladies coming out, the uh, the clock has hit zero. So, again, if you're joining us late, it is a 2-0 lead for the Lady Cats. Both goals in the first half coming from Rowan Faircloth, one about midway through the first half, and, again, with just two and a half minutes left um, in the half. Woody, Joel, what can we expect to see in the second half? And one more time, we want to give a huge thank you to our friends over at ANS for bringing you tonight's halftime show, as always. Yeah, I look to the for the Wildcats to start out uh, a little quicker the second half. I think they know that the physical play is coming. I think they know what to expect from the refs now. Um, at least we, we think they know what to expect from the refs now. And I plan them on them coming out playing a little bit more aggressive uh, than in the than parts of the first half. And then – uh, then I'm looking forward to them, uh, our forwards just leaning on that defense a little bit more, creating some more shots. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see a couple more goals and maybe they can match the boys' score of four to nothing and, if not, surpass it. We've been talking about what do we do when adversity smacks us in the mouth. That might be wind or rain or cold or hot or it might be the refs that, I, you know, we were talking about earlier. It is what it is. It's 2-0. We thought we'd be up more than this. Hey, 2-0 is nothing to complain about at halftime. Score. Absolutely. I mean, it's still, a, it's still a good deal, and we battled for, for both of those goals. We didn't get little easy goals. Uh, we really battled for them. So uh, the momentum and the mojo that was going the last several minutes of the game, like right after we scored that second goal, I fully suspect we come out with that same type of intensity. And, uh, and, and you know, the sooner we can get uh, a goal number three – the easier the rest of the game will be. And, and that's Brandon, it. We, we do have to admit this. Uh, the Lady Cats have spoiled us a little yeah. bit. We're, yeah. we're used to seeing three and four goals in the first half and then Cruz controlling it. And so, so when we only see two to nothing and we say only two to nothing, that's a great score at halftime. So, so they've done a great job spoiling us uh, with, with a lot of goals, especially Rowan. She scored 42 goals uh, this season. So, I mean, yeah. we're spoiled. Yeah, it's spoiled. And so that's it. We're underway. 40 minutes uh, left in this ball game in this second half, and uh, your Sulphur Springs Lady Cats are, are hard after it. So right off the bat, turnover and throw in for Sulphur Springs. So 
let's work the ball up the field like we've been doing all night long. Yeah. That's what I'm ready to see. By the way, I want to point out not just the 42 goals. She's also second on the team with 12 assists. So There you go. Wow. And at a total of, what, uh, 50, 56? Yeah. 54. I mean, that's, uh, that's a big deal when you you know talk about your contribution in one form or fashion or another. Yeah. And, and I like what I just saw with that throw in there, Woody. It's like the girls didn't just do a short little throw in. They threw it down the field ready to uh, play a little bit more aggressive, uh, make a little run down the side. And um, it obviously got uh, kicked out, so we're about to get another throw in. But but I like, I like how they're starting out. This stadium here, guys, I was looking. If you ever wondered what Gerald Prim Stadium would look like if we had a track in the middle yes. of it, it would look I exactly literally, like this. I literally had that exact same thought earlier today. I'm it's like, it's it, very it, it's, reminiscent. It looks, ours looks more compact because we don't have a track. You don't realize how much space that adds. Yeah. But it really looks exactly like ours. But they've got a little end zone seating as well. Uh, a little bit difference, but the you know they've got the nice back seats there in the middle parts, and uh, they even have some back seats on now, the, at the side. Yeah. At the old Prim. Before we had redone the prim, I believe there was the end zone seating. Was there not? Or am I making that up? Yeah, there used to be some. Yeah, okay, end I thought so. Because yep. so. the, the band used to sit on yes. the end zone like that right there. And so, uh, but I like where the band sits now at Gerald yes. Prim Stadium. It, we it do as well. It adds so much more to the to the, the fun factor when you get the, the band rocking right there with all the crowd. And man, oh, man. That Wildcat band, they can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it when they get the tubas playing. And uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, they start rocking, man. They sit almost right in front of us where our press box is, and like you, you'll look down and they are they are rocking out. You can tell when they're getting. You high. can. You, feel it, you can. Oh feel yeah, it. yeah. The funnest seat in that whole stadium is where the uh, where the band sits, sitting about the next section over from them, like right even with the tuba section. Yeah. And like you just you feel the jamming. vibration. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like it's so fun, and those kids are fun to watch. They're they're hyped over there. So while we fetch the ball, they uh, stop the clock, and so I'd be curious to see where's the where's the other ball. I guess it's on the other side, on the uh, Chapel Hill side. But yeah, that we had to go to the forest to go <laughs> yeah. retrieve the ball. It's a good goal kick by the Wildcats. Yeah, unsurprisingly, yeah. Randy Johnson has a boot, huh? Yeah. Sometimes right here, I wish we would roll it out. We got both outside backs, center backs. I, we I got agree. We we've got it, and then sometimes we're 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 winning that battle right there. But sometimes we're not. So when they're pressing up so much, uh oh, here's a little run. There we go. Slice and dice. Here's Haley coming up. Oh, and just, right past. So her. nice wow. little run. That that's Lady Cat soccer. Th those runs right there, uh, very intentional, right up the gut. And yeah. uh, and so we're gonna see one of those finish here in a second. Yeah, one of the one of those are gonna connect. But but I agree with you, Woody. When the keeper has the ball, because we are a possession style team roll it out to one of the one of the left back or the right back and let them work it up because they're so good at the give and goes and just uh maintain some possession and move it forward we don't do that a whole lot but you know most of the teams are you know not pressing us uh right. up there like that and we have every opportunity but uh, you know I, i'd rather just clear it out when in doubt you know go yeah, ahead and clear it out know, yeah clear it out of there but uh it would be a good way though our style it would fit our style very well here's emma romero nice turn uh, nice battle, but – and then here's Aniston Price coming in with a nice win from her. Yeah. Play it outside. There we go. I got to say, she's always good, but and Emma's been – rough touch Emma's by been Haley solid Schultz there. We, we got to – that's one of the ones where we don't have any pressure. We got to – I mean, she didn't have anybody on her. We got to – we gave a little turnover there, but as we get deeper and deeper into the playoffs, those are the ones we're going to wish we could have back. Yeah. Like with just a, another run, run kind of starting there, but never really got the opportunity to build up, so – and there's Emma Romero again, and Emma ball, to Anna. Emma. Anna coming up the middle, somebody trampling, and here we go. Finish, Anna. Oh, here's Rowan oh. offside. Oh, she was offside I saw by it. a yeah. few yards. She was. But it was a good little run. Good look. Good and, pass. Uh, so that, that's, that's uh, cut that, that intensity we talked about, Joel. It's a yeah. little bit different pace. We're coming out with, with, uh, with some purpose. Yep. And that's really what I like to see right off the bat. Five minutes in, almost not quite five minutes into the second half, and uh, just a little bit different tempo as soon as the whistle blew. And what that's going to do, they're down 2-0. Oh, it's going to wear them out, too. That's yeah, tough. Absolutely. I mean, Here we go. Turn it into a track meet. Come on. Come on. Finish. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Wow. I thought we had it. And corner kick, Sulphur Springs. Hmm. So, who's going to take this? Looks like Addie Fenton's going to come over here and take it. I, I'm, I, that, that was interesting. I was, I was surprised that that, uh, that that was not finished right there. But it got a yeah. little congested. I don't know exactly what happened. It got congested, and uh, she had a uh, uh, 
it was bouncing a little high on her first touch, uh, and gotcha. she couldn't yeah. set, really settle it down to get tough, a good shot. Tough, tough uh, finish opportunity there. Yeah. Though. All right, Addie Fenton coming up. 34-35 uh, left. Let's fan this over, Rainbow, and let's get some kind of body part on this. Let's give us a chance. Let's go. Great, great cross. Got a little wow. bit of a head on it, but a little yeah. too much. And so, uh, hey, but I like it. We're, yeah, we're, we're, that's right where you want it. We're fanning those those corners right over. That, that I mean, sometimes we get cute and do these little plays and do some dribbling. I'd just rather do those perfectly yeah. placed. And Cross sooner or later, it. we're going to get a, a foot on it, a head on it, something. Yeah, give the ladies a chance to go up and win it. Just place it right in there. About five yards out where the keeper can't put her hand on it and let the – and there's Rainey Johnson over to Jolie Moore. Jolie's tough to deal with. Look at her. She's yeah. coming up, playing just as physical, and just comes Come out on, the Jolie. other side. Great attracting job. a lot of attention. She there's is. Rowan. Back to Addie. Nice. Uh-oh, hmm. little, little, a little, uh, little, bit off. little bit off on the pass. But, hey, let's recalibrate. Pass. Okay. And that's where I want mm. – that's where we got to be real careful. We're, I don't know if that was an intentional shot. The likelihood of a shot from that angle going in is not uh, not high probability. I'd have loved a little cross, easy cross. Right. Give us a chance. Fan you had across Rowan the face and Jolie the right there. They were in the perfect position. Yeah. That's where we got to take advantage of those. Um, now, I mean, Haley has Here put some go. of those odd angle shots yep. in. And uh, there she goes. Haley. Finish Haley. Oh. And another good opportunity. And, and we're just – Pressure, yeah. pressure, pressure, pressure. That's exhausting. That's what I love seeing in these first seven minutes is the amount of pressure. We've taken five shots in the first uh, seven minutes. Yeah. And so that's what you want to see. That's that's the lady soccer that we're used to. So goal kick for Chapel Hill. And we've seen a couple of little subs. You saw uh, you saw Rosa come in uh, the first half for a few minutes, and oh, okay, got got out of trouble there. You also saw Valerie Flecker come in uh, for a few minutes. Wow, great ball by Anna right there. And that's where the the tough angle shots. It's not going to work for us. Yeah, it's like even yeah. if it was a, even if it was the. I mean, she has a huge leg. Yeah, it's tough to get in from there. We've got opportunities to get some high probability goals in there. I want to see us start crossing those in. And they're, hey, and, and they're congested in the box. They yeah, had four players plus yeah, the keeper. Sure. So, yeah, and when you don't have the greatest angle, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough it's to tough. score those. Yeah. But I, at the end of the day, she has made an awful lot of those. Yeah. So, it, at the same time, you kind of got to pick and choose. And uh, everybody wants to score a goal, too. I get it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but at the same time, higher probability equals more goals. Yep. Oh, challenging in the box. Like those right there, mm. those are so dangerous. Oh, my oh, gosh. Great shot. Let's there it is. go. Let's, Let's go. Get it. Come Jolie on. Moore shot from great about, shot. what, uh, 18, 18 yards yard, out. Yeah. It was right at the, 18, at the 20 line. yards, yeah. I mean, just no chance. They they bottled us up, and uh, I'm glad we got got one from outside. Yeah. And uh, what a just a great look. That That's a, that's a, that's one we needed. For, like, getting that third goal like we talked about. Yep. We're not – it's not time to rest. Don't take our foot off the throttle. Right. Let's go. Yeah, she was right at the 15-yard line, 15 yards out. We, Great we shot. Need, I mean, to me, we need to get a goal for every one of the calls that we feel like we didn't get. <laughs> right. We need to go and, and, and put this team on notice. We yeah. can absolutely do it. We proved the first half we're capable of doing it. We're coming out and, uh, and, and looking like it in the second half as well. So, let's go. There's going to be some fatigue setting in. There's going to be frustration setting in. That's what you got to think about too, when you're terms of, of uh, the physicality. They're, yeah. you know, it, right now they're down. Their seasons thinking about. They start to see have reality set in. How frust are they? Gonna, there's going to be more frustration fouls. Yeah. That's where you got to figure it out. How's the ref going to respond? Uh oh, oh, Anna to Haley. Ball, Anna. Come on, Haley. Oh, just a little far. And good hustle by Haley. She yeah. saved it in though. It's still in play. Oh, there they go. Go kick. But yeah. that's a good little run. And so I, I like it. Yeah. We're not letting up. Uh, we're 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 going to finish this thing strong, and nice run there. I, and just it, over and over and over, we're working it up, yeah. playing our game, finding feet, and finding and taking our chances along the way, but not forcing it every single time. Yeah, and we're not even ten minutes into the second half, and and we've seen a uh, a different uh, aggressiveness of the Lady Cats come out this second half from what we've seen in the first half, and it's it's been good to see them come oh, out. Oh, they're all over these and, girls, and they're like yeah. falling all over themselves. Yeah. So that's all right. Hey, get after it. 
I mean, that, that, I mean, they got the physicality down. I mean, yeah. it's a, been a great game plan. Yeah. This is a closer game than anybody thought it was going to be. Yeah. They've, they, they, they've carried it out well. And, uh, and so, but at the same time, at some point, if we keep doing what we do well over and over and over and over, yep. that's, when, that's when it's going to be really, really, really hard on them. We just, we just got to keep doing it. Just like you said when you opened up the broadcast second half, Joel. Yeah, we just got to keep up, stick to our game plan, keep it, keep intentional about uh, not letting their physicality frustrate us, make the easy pass, look for the easy looks. Uh, yeah, like right there, great easy look, easy pass. The lanes are starting to open up because we're spreading them out some. And then uh, great pass oh through right there. Oh, my God. A little Rowing much. A li it was a little too much sauce on that one. They had, they had a little pace. She had a little pace on it, but she saw Rowan and I. Oh, man. But th those are coming. The, yeah. the opportunity after – and I like the – you know, the, the thought was there, and here it is again to Jolie. I mean, and Jolie's got the pace on this girl. Yeah. And that's a goal. That's a corner kick. That is a corner kick. Thank you. So, yeah, I like watching Jolie. She's got speed on the outside, and she's outrunning uh, both of those defenders on that side. she's an athlete, man. She's yeah. not going to get – she's not going to – you know, they're going to try to body her up. And, she like, sometimes when it gets jumbled up and mucked up down there – she comes out of the other end of yeah. the pile with the ball a lot. She's hard to bring down. Yeah, she's strong. She's a she's a good sized athlete and fast and got infinite energy. Uh, basically, I just described the opposite of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if that was going to come in because I was like infinite energy. That would be an awesome quality. Oh to my stuff. gosh! Oh, oh wow. my gosh! Wow! I thought she was going to. That was more of a laser beam. Mm. And and what we've been seeing when when Haley's got a lot of pace on these, and she's serving it past the the back post and we haven't had the the personnel back there to retrieve the ball and it's right. happening a lot so they started bringing in so we either need to take the pace off of it or have players in position right and we hadn't figured out that kind of mojo yet and so i think what they did to take some pace off they started having addy take some of these on the right side um but so we just need to adjust a little bit and, right. and make sure somebody's there because it's happening she's just got a strong leg man she always she does has. yeah and, and when you notice you've got a strong leg, just keep somebody hanging back just a little bit, lagging on the back side of that goal to, to be able to retrieve that ball and either make a quick pass to, to back to the center where there's an open player or even take that shot. Yeah. All right, so 27-46 left. Throw in Sulphur Springs. Really, really, you know, possessing the ball on, on the right side of the field and, and uh, pressure in their goal time after time. You know, controlling the pace of the game, connecting passes, winning balls. Let's keep that up. Yeah. Let's get a little takeaway right here. Come on, ladies. So there we go again. So here we're just – There just, it is. There's Emma Romero. We talked about her a lot. This girl is frustrated. Emma's got the speed. She's got – she plays like she's the same size as this, yeah. this uh, midfielder they've got here too. And she just won a 50-50 ball, and it's turnover. Throw in Sulphur Springs. Good job, Emma Romero. Yeah, Emma's playing shut shut down tonight. Yep. She's that that player is so frustrated every time she tries to make a turn. Emma's right there, just kicking the ball away, making the steal, and making a good pass. So, yeah, Emma's having a great game tonight. And I haven't seen the some a, a, a battle to watch out for. I haven't seen them try to body up uh, Randy Johnson. And all I gotta say is good luck. She's an athlete, and she's she doesn't go down very easily. Right. And she's she's uh, she's a, a big strong athlete, and uh, I think they're picking and choosing who they're trying to battle. Uh, but uh, so it, it's real. It, it's kind of either we've adapted or it's calmed down or a little bit of both. But it's it's a little bit it's a little bit it seems like a little bit less physical. Yeah, uh, a little half. bit less physical. But I, I would say more than that, we've adapted. Yeah. And our quickness, the the ladies are just utilizing their quickness, yeah. and they're not being able to play as physical. And it's really easy if we just if we just pass around them and possess, that takes all the physicality out, phys yeah. physicality out of the game. And, I, and we really have. If you looked around here when it was kind of the, the central part of the the uh, the midfield, we just t turned the ball from the far end and used our depth and width. Uh, and just really found lanes, and it's like we had that perfect little triangle coming in, and just ran them to death down here. And so that's uh, that's a good uh, equalizer to physicality is is passing. Uh oh, here we yeah. go. So here we go. That so yeah, right that's past that strong leg. We got that we, we got to take. That's not where we need a corner kick like that. We can have people back there, but that's not giving us a chance. Yeah. We need to take pace off of it, or or uh, you know, and that needs to just happen. Just, we need to figure it out. But yeah, every every one of them kick. can't go past the E. 
and I suspect to, to put one in. Yeah, we definitely need just a little bit softer kick and, and land it kind of if it was that far corner where that L is right there and nice. uh, on the field. There you go, Aniston Price uh, saved a little through ball opportunity, uh, took all the pressure off of our defense, and then she just found Anna. And then here we go. Oh, my gosh, look he at that. We got, we got a foul call, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a foul. He it is 24-59 left in the game, and we got a foul call, so free kick for Sulphur Springs. Let's Cor go. Corey, I need you to holler down at Caleb and see if he can get a good view of Woody reacting to getting the foul call. <laughs> I think the fans <laughs> would like to see that maybe. Good booth shot of Woody. I, I mean, it's, I really can't believe it. I almost need to have a replay. <laughs> <laughs> I should have queued it up for you. This one's for you, Woody. All right, so – there we go. It's it's five v two, uh, not giving themselves the best chance, and we need to go ahead and let our keeper have it. Yep. There we go. Good job, Maya. It's it's really tough on them. I mean, they're they're trying to create some some runs with some pace, but when it's five v two, yeah, it's really we'd have to make a couple of big time mistakes in order to, for that to actually happen. So let's find feet. All right, here we go. Here Good we ball. go. Middle of the field to there Anna. Go. Got somebody on her. Right back. There we go. Uh, we gotta mm, gotta control that one. Got Chapel Hill about to throw the ball in. So we're we're uh, we turned the ball over a few times here now, over on the right side. We really, we really with not a lot of pressure. Those are the ones we need to secure, and maintain possession. We're up 3-0. Um, the less we can turn the ball over, yeah. the better it will be in general at any point in the game, but especially right now, um, we can control this game at our pace when we feel like it. We've got to be really, really intentional every single time we touch the ball. I wanted to say I I'd pointed it out earlier but kind of got cut off, but Emma Romero has done a very good job tonight. Yeah, she has. She's done a really good job. Yeah, she's been a great anchor for the center of the field. She's controlling it, making sure she uh, wins the ball she needs to win, making some great passes. Uh, definitely frustrating the player that uh, is that she's marking, which is awesome to see. She's just playing a, has a playing a really solid game tonight. She makes it tough for them to to attack our back line with pace. So that uh, she's slowing them down, and and you know, I always say getting right in their shorts, just all over them, and and making them pass the ball and not challenging the back line. They still have gotten through a couple of times, obviously, but that's soccer for you. But she's really, really, really helped that back line just have almost a stress-free game. Not totally, but yeah. like, man, they she's have been under fire. She's taking a ton of pressure off the back line yeah, for she's, sure. She's, she's absorbing most of that pressure the, in the entirety of the game and, uh, and has done it nicely. Uh, yeah. Another player I want to give some credit to, you wouldn't see it necessarily in the stats because she doesn't have a goal or an assist right now, but Addie Fenton, I feel like, has done some very good passing. She, she, for the season, I believe she's third on the team in assists. Yeah. Yeah. She's always – She's winning battle, like winning balls and distributing is her specialty. She does it all the time. She knows where to be. Her positioning's right on the money. And uh, so, uh-oh, here we go. Nice little touch. There we nice go. Nice little touch by Rowan. Now we have uh, Jolie Moore. Got bottled up. I don't mind turning it around. Yeah. That's fine by me. And then Looking sometimes you're just in the right spot. Uh-oh. So, here we go. Look at that. Another we got a foul. Call. Let's go. Cue up the Different replay. Game. Here we go. Different game. Let's go. So who are we, who we going to have this taken now? So, I mean, Anna's put it on frame from here before. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I, saw, so I was about to say, we're, we're not far from just being able to take a shot. And hey, Emma Romero, I don't know who's taking it. I, I guess I think Emma is. But, I, I mean, but at the same time, okay, I see what they're doing. It's an indirect. Yeah. All right, well. It was on goal. So, in, at the end of the day, Romero can put it on frame from there too. Yeah. Right? She's got a big leg. So, all right, Anna with the win and another foul. And they let him play an advantage. I'm okay with that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Get Haley it. Schultz, there it is. let's go. We got it in the goal. Haley Schultz, let's go. tough angle, nice finish. Yes. Way to go, Haley Schultz. So what up? Who sent that ball up to Haley? It was too exciting. Yeah. Let's look at the replay. Why don't you, I was about to say, you can get a look on the replay. What now. a good finish. And it came. Uh, I mean, we were just short of it. Just short of it. We'll come up here in just a second. I think that was Addy. I think it was Addy. Was it? 
Uh, but it's hard to tell. I'm kind of looking over your shoulder. Either way, 4-0 Sulphur Springs. Yeah. 20 minutes left in the game. And so it's kind of kind of happening the way we expected we, yep. it now. Starting to lean on them more. They're, they're getting fatigued. Goal every uh, the, 10 minutes. The, We're the good. mojo's gone. Uh, the, their physicality has dropped off. Uh, and I think that I think that comes in with with a little bit of fatigue too, and then just but at the same time, that's the toughest part, man. I mean, yes, we want to beat these girls, but it, it, in all likelihood, unless something definitely changes, they're going to go home, and a lot of these girls, it's going to be the last time they lace up their cleats ever again in their lifetime, yeah. unless they go to intramurals in college or something. And it's that's sad, you know what I mean? And that's all setting in, and the reality of it is too. Oh, nice turn mm. by Addie. She almost got away with that little uh, little turn there. That was uh, goal number six for Haley, and four of her six have come in district for the playoffs. So nice. Another player performed at the end of the season. Very cool. Good job. And, and hats off to Haley on that because a lot of players shoot near post on that. And yeah. she, she looked far post, she and far post. she put it on the side net there, and that was a great shot. If I know her dad, her dad was saying to himself, far post, far post, yeah. far post. Yeah, I played soccer with Brian in <laughs> high school. <laughs> you know. We graduated the same year. It was, it was fun watching – uh, it's fun watching parents that you played soccer with watch their kids. Yeah, there you go. And so it's like uh, Valerie Flecker coming in for Haley Schultz there. Yep. And so it looks like what they did too. Again, you put okay. Here's Jolie coming up. And oh! goes, here we go. Jolie Moore. Let's go. For Springs Lady Cats. Hey, so check this out. Haley Schultz Let's go. came off. Valerie Flecker went in, and they flip flop. If you notice, Jolie came in from the right forward side. Thirty seconds yeah. into her new position, boom, scores Score. a goal. Perfect yep. cross. Who crossed that, guys? It was an absolute beaut. So the 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 uh, wheels are kind of falling off for Chapel Hill here. The momentum is hard to argue with. We've got yeah. it going on, and uh, this is happening the way that that we anticipate it happening. And so uh, that that's exciting to see for our Lady Cats. Yeah, that's what we talked about in the first half when they were kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, but they kept their form, kept their game, kept the right positioning. And we just, hey, keep playing your game and start leaning on them and play a little bit more aggressive um, to overcompensate for the refs. But, yeah, but now they're now they're just playing fun and playing free, and they're playing their style Look at all ball. this space now, guys. Oh, yeah, now they're, they've just These spread the field so well. These girls are walking. Uh-oh, here comes Jolie. Here comes Jolie. Watch her. There oh, we my go. gosh, here's another goal here coming. Go. Oh, oh a little bit in. Beat the angle. Oh, oh, that was such a good little idea. I saw it play out. Yeah. Really cool to see happening. And then Jolie, Jolie's finding it. Jolie and Addy have played club ball together for many, for many so, moons. Yeah, They've so got a lot years. of good chemistry together. And so uh, I, I feel like uh, we could have another one coming very easily as well. Yeah. By the way, that uh, goal from Jolie was our second of the night, and that puts her at an even 15 on the season. There you go. Good job, Lady Cats. It's a way to fight through the adversity like we talked about. There's Romero. Look at that, Again. Romero. Let's go. Throw in Zulfur Springs. She's, no, they gave it to Chapel Hill. She's done that to her all night. Yep. Just ran side by side with her and just shut her down. And so what I've noticed, too, so 13 is there's a lot of space now. They're not necessarily – all over Rowan. It's kind of broken away. Uh, that's probably the halftime speech that Coach Brenna uh, gave as somebody else is going to have to do the score and they're all yeah. over. And if you look, uh, it's been all around yeah. and there's a lot of space being created. So it wouldn't surprise me now that we're really utilizing the, the entire width of the field if you have another little opportunity for, yeah. for Rowan to come in. And, and that's uh, what we talked about at the end of the first half. We want to see some other players get involved at, since they're double and triple team in rowing and uh, start utilizing some of the other offense. And, uh, oh, that's – wow. At what point? At what point? They just stopped the run, trip from behind. What point are we going to do it? Continual fouling? Mm. That sounds like a good card opportunity, but they're going to yeah. keep doing it. Hey, it was a smart foul. I, can't, I mean, it's yeah. a, brilliant. Romero can serve this up, and I uh, hope we crash and catch it on the catch it on the bounce. Yeah. And we see one, two, three, four uh, subs getting warmed up for the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats, and uh, so I would assume you, you're going to have uh, some some rest coming in here pretty quick. Let's see here, who you have uh, coming in? You have the uh, Addison Schubert. She uh, she's going to come in uh, for keeper. That looks like coming in. You're also going to have uh, Bree Ruiz coming in. You're also going to have Zoe Crump coming in. 
And then also, too, who you saw earlier, you have Rosa Lopez. She's at that uh, attacking mid spot. She could go in at holding mid, depending on what's going on. Uh, but that's that's who's warming up currently or just got done warming up. So that's, that's coming right around the bat. Uh, I would say maybe usually about a 15-minute mark from what we've seen through this season if we're going to rotate some folks in. Yeah, and good job give it, giving some of the these players some time to get acclimated to the playoffs and give them some playing time. And looks like we may have a keeper change coming in with with one of those. And so, uh, yeah, it's just good opportunities for, for everybody to get in the game and, and get, a, get a playoff win under their belt and really uh, get into the ebbs and flows of things. And there's Rennie. I'm okay with the clear there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it really had the, – the whole – the pace of the game – uh, has slowed way down. I mean, we're still going to try to run with it, obviously. Yeah. But, oh, look at this there like right now. But, uh, okay, now they're uh – uh-oh. And that's not what you want to do. You don't want to give Rowan an opportunity with some space. Woo! Great, great ball. And so there, you hear a lot of whooping out there. There's some slicing and dicing. Yeah. Good job by the uh, Tyler Chapel Hill defense. And uh, back on the attack. But that's, that's dangerous. You do a 1v1 and give old yeah. Rowan – Time to to uh, to do a little do a little dancing out there. Yeah, and j just Rowan's touch on the ball, her feet skills, just just unbelievable. Yeah, watching her play. She's definitely somebody to be concerned with. All right, so looks like we're gonna have some folks getting a break, a much needed break. Looks like Anna Williams coming off. Looks like Rowan Faircloth coming off. Uh, who else we got out here? Looks like. Let's see. Gotcha. We got Mackenzie Adams coming off, too. So that's a much-needed break for some of these girls. Uh, some of these girls are playing in uh, Dallas Cup this week, too. So having yeah. 15 minutes extra of rest, that'll be it goes a long game way. changer. And so that's going to be part of it. They're playing uh, the Dallas International Women's Cup is coming in. We have a handful of girls playing in that, in that tournament with their respective club teams. Uh, pretty cool opportunity. Teams coming from all over the world in Dallas, Texas. Uh, and then also the, the uh, boys' Dallas Cup is happening right now as well. Uh, so there's teams from literally all over the world, like, wow. that, like everywhere. So this is a, a big deal for, for a lot of these kids. Extra rest is important. Yeah, and, and Mackenzie Adam had a solid game on defense. It, yeah. She made some Look great at Emma passes. Romero. Look at Emma Romero. Emma is just controlling the middle of the field. Oh, Jolie's hungry. Jolie says, I'm not done yet. 1v1. You got this all day, Jolie. Look at that. Right around her. Yep. Oh, and she just got massacred. Wow. I mean, I'd do it too. Mm. There's no consequence. Yeah. I would keep doing it. It's smart soccer by, by yeah. the Tyler Chapel Hill. If I don't the ref have a is problem not going to call it. it. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's just good. That that was actually not, I mean, as, as crazy as some of the ones we've seen tonight. Yeah. But, I mean, but that's that's part of the deal. It's, it's, yep. You can't be mad at them. I mean, that's they're, they're, uh, they, got, they, they executed their game plan. Uh, to the best of their ability. So. Yeah. It's just tough when you see literally a stiff arm on the field when the girls got a breakaway going to the goal. Yeah, it's true. And I like it. A little bit of gamesmanship. Addie's not a dummy. Uh, she's barely faster than walking back with the ball. Yeah. Uh, just killing the clock. You know, it's good gamesmanship. Not in any hurry whatsoever. If we were down a goal, she'd have already kicked the ball. You know, yeah, she's sprinting up. back to the so corner. So watch a little, a little less pace. This is going to have a little more rainbow, a little less pace, uh, and a good opportunity. Right oh, on. we just missed Th it. Those, that's that's really good place. But that's exactly where you want it. Yeah, yeah. That's and the place you want it. Right outside that ten yard line. Yeah, where somebody can get a foot on it or put a head on it and just put it in the back of the net. So 13 minutes left of the game, 5-0, Sulphur Springs Lady Cats. Uh, we've got a few uh, players in, getting some minutes, and uh, don't think that that doesn't mean they, want, they don't want to put one in the back of the net also. These girls know how to play uh, at all different depths, and uh, Emma Romero is certainly going to try to serve some up. She's still, she's still gaming. And, yep. uh, you know, and the players coming off the bench are hungry. They, yeah, they're hungry. They want to prove, prove that, they're, that they can play with, with all the starters. Joe, I think it's only right that the first time we've been lucky enough to have you in the stu or in the booth and, and broadcasting with us, we get not one but two Way Bible Church players of the game. You're going to help us with that one as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been fun hanging out with you guys. 
having a blast. We've loved having you. Yeah, if it weren't for, you for you and Woody, I don't know how, you know. The people need you and Woody, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Some pe- oh, 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 my gosh. Here we go. Here we go. Finish. Oh, my oh. gosh. Oh, my gosh. Follow it up. That was a great shot. Good save by the keeper. Everybody's down. Had three players down in the front of the goal there. Hey, but, you know, one thing about Valerie Flecker, uh, there was one game in district, stuff like that. She's She'll go in and battle, too. And she, she'll – hey – She'll go out there and score a goal. Yeah. I mean, and she like she takes advantage of every single minute she gets. And uh, one game during district, it was similar play. She caught the defense sleeping. Bad mistake. Went in. Boop. There tap we go. in. I mean, the tap ins count just as much as the ones from 20 yards out. Absolutely. All right. So we got another sub. So Addie Fenton's getting a little break. And it looks like that uh, Katie Ladino is coming in. And they might shuffle Romero up. Katie's going to probably play attacking mid right now, but she's been serving up, uh, you know, playing some good minutes at the holding mid role throughout District 2 on occasion. So, never know if uh, if Emma's going to end up pushing up or not. But I would be okay with her sitting right where she is. Being Absolutely. To find the, the shutout. That's, and so, that's another one we're bouncing over the head, but we good took control advantage ball. of it. Great ball out to the to the left back over there. So there's a little bit of little bit of space left, but they're battling. There's Rosa battling, and that's what, what a cool opportunity though. So you have, oh, let's see here. There you go. Good Just job. walk and go get it. Go tie your shoe. Yeah. Uh, so you have Rosa out there. I think Katie is a a freshman, I believe. Um, you have McKenzie that has obviously gotten a lot of minutes and uh, and is taking a little break currently. Rosa that we mentioned. So and then. Uh, you know, you have several girls that are getting such valuable experience because there's a lot of seniors this year that are yeah. starters on the field. And so being able to get some true bona fide playoff minutes under the big lights, on a big stage, the community watching, uh, live broadcast on Chad's Media, what a cool opportunity for some of these girls. And Front Porch News. Yeah, Front Porch News too. By the way, I was trying to find a uh, score update. We had mentioned if the girls win, which they're 10 minutes away from doing so, they would play the winner – of uh, Palestine and Spring Hill. Now, I'm checking on Max Brett's nothing there, but we had updated the boys' game. Palestine was up 2-0 against Sabine in that one. Um, Sabine has scored. It is 2-1, but there haven't been any updates since then. Yeah. And I don't know the answer, but I suspect that, you know, I, I, Palestine is heavily favored. That doesn't mean they're going to win, but that's what uh, that's what everybody suspects. They're a pretty good team, and, and uh, Spring Hill, they, they – uh, they they had a they had a decent season, but not as not as good of a season as Palestine did. You know the Lady Cats made history last season by opening their postseason against Chapel Hill and then Palestine. So I'm more than you yeah. know. Let's do it again. Let's run yeah. it back. There you go. Good job. Nice job by the keeper, Addie Schubert, uh, getting her getting her mitts on the ball and uh, protecting our shutout. That would be the number one priority. Uh, yeah. Just from a uh, uh oh, here we go, here we go. There we go. Valerie Flecker making a run. Cross it over. Cross it over. All right, coming to the back side. Ah. Pretty pretty neat scenario, though. You know, it looks like it's going to play out, or who knows, depending on the outcome of the, the next game we have. But very similar scenario. And uh, we could be both playing boys and girls. girls. Could be both playing Palestine in Lindale uh, next week. Wow. Or no, later this week. I think a Thursday game. I don't know that for sure yet. They're, they're contemplating Thursday or Friday, but Thursday was probable last time I heard. Yeah, wow, Thursday would be a quick turnaround. Yeah. Yeah, that, that extra day of rest nice between turn. Tuesday and Friday versus Look Tuesday at this. and Thursday. Look at that little ball skill, freshman, freshman, freshman. Yeah. yeah, they're playing good control. Say that again, Woody. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear what you were saying I about said, Thursday. I said freshman, freshman, freshman. There's one that I did not uh, – Camilla Mejia out there on the at right forward. I didn't see her come in the game. She just had a nice little uh, a series of pass and, and uh, you know and runs with with the other freshman out there. Oh, nice. Oh, nobody home nobody, though. Nobody, oh my. Nobody gosh. waiting in the city. What was it you said about Thursday? So it, it there, what uh, Joel and I were saying is very high likelihood it could be Sulphur Springs, both Sulphur Springs teams versus both Palestine teams right here 
uh, at uh, Lindell Eagle Stadium. And uh, it's supposed to be, thir it's probable to be Thursday is what I'm hearing. Gotcha. Anyone that wants to stay updated on that, obviously you can follow any of the, the Sulphur Springs accounts on their social media. But tune in to Front Porch News. Uh, we will have, as soon as there is updated information, we will get that out to you. And then you can always just subscribe on um, on the Chad's Media YouTube and be notified anytime we're set to go live. We always set nice that turn. in advance. So, you know. So, Woody, the reason they play Thursday is because Friday is good Friday and there's a lot of – No. There's, there's going to be high school soccer everywhere. Everywhere. Everybody. I don't yeah, know what the reason is. That's what I was but, wondering. It's like – You know, it, it could yeah. be – that very very well could be. But, uh, you know, good – like, and that's the crazy part. Dallas Cup is always Easter weekend. There'll be yeah. people, people playing for the championship of their life on Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, and yeah. And it's, it's wild, but it's always been that way for 20 wow. or 30 years. Yeah. You know, Dallas Cup is, is uh, a, a big deal. So – but uh, I, I, I don't know the reason for that or why the probability was high. It might be based on location. Uh, you yeah. know, so this seems to be a, 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 a good meeting point or what have you. So, la but now it could – they're saying here, but last year we played at Tyler Rose Stadium, which is a which true, was beautiful super, stadium, that was, that by the way. That was super yeah. cool. We this were very lucky too. to be in that press box. That was nice. This, this is too – I mean, we had leatherback chairs with, with like, embroidered roses on them. I mean, it was it – Wow. Was, which, by the way, if it is here again, we would gladly come back. lindell has been amazing to us, giving us all the you know resources and access that we need. So we would we would gladly be back here, and we appreciate them for for having us and helping us out. So what yeah, you need to do it. is go, stay updated on Front Porch News, and uh, subscribe to the Chaz Media YouTube. Come out and support the Lady Cats and the Wildcats if ever given the opportunity. If not, you can join and watch us. And then this weekend, go celebrate Easter at the Way Bible Church. There you go. I'm good with that plug. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate that. Hey, how's the new, uh, the uh, new sanctuary and everything? I know y'all y'all had a uh, building, yeah, you know, brand new facility very recently. How's that all going? Yeah, yeah. it's going awesome. Uh, it's too small already. So, no way. yeah, we're, we're That's out a good of space. To have. Yeah, so we're looking <laughs> at figuring out how do we do three services on a regular basis and having to expand the parking lot uh, again. So that's in progress right now. So we're believing for. A miracle between now and Easter that the ground dries out enough so it's asphalted, but very worst, we'll have the, the rock down and we'll just put all the big trucks on the yeah. gravel part. And, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, good. I like to call them good church problems. So we just added 100 more seats to our worship center, so it seats 740 now. And so, Woo! yeah, so it's. That's good church problems. Yeah. So That's a big deal. We're blessed, Are you all shocked that you're out of room? Like, you're like, oh, my gosh, this wasn't any of our plans. Uh, you know? But then y'all realized y'all weren't the one planning it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't say completely shocked. Um, everybody tells me this, Joel, you built too small. And I was like, no, I built what the bank would loan us to build. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it was up to me, it would have been 300 more seats in there uh, and a little bit bigger. But, hey, when the bank says we're only going to give no, this much, you got to value engineer some stuff. And I get it. Joel, one more time. I know I'd asked you when we were coming back from half, but obviously people tune in late. People tune in for a little while and leave again, come back. So just for anyone that missed it or didn't get to hear earlier, can you tell us again about Easter this weekend at the Way Bible Church? Yes, we would love to invite everyone listening to the broadcast to, out to our Easter services. We're going to have four of them this year. We're going to have a service on Saturday night at 5 o'clock because we know a lot of families go travel and see other family on Sunday for Easter. So we want to give people that opportunity to be uh, joining us Saturday at 5 o'clock. And then we're going to have three services on Sunday morning, an 8.30 service, a 10 o'clock service, and an 11.30 service. So uh, we're making a place for you to come and find a place of belonging and encounter Christ and uh, yeah, we got activities for the kids and all four services, and so we're excited about what, what's going to happen with our kiddos on those days, and uh, we're going to have some uh, powerful worship and, yeah, a, a great message about what, uh, what actually happened at the cross and on the cross uh, Sunday, and, and it's crazy the depth that uh, Jesus went to to prove to us how much he loves us, and so if you've ever wondered what your value is as a person, uh, tune in on Sunday, and you'll see just how extensive the price was Jesus paid for us as as a person so yeah oh, we're excited i also wanted to ask you obviously you know if anyone can make it in person you want them there in person but for anyone that can't make it in person 
are they still able to, to catch a live stream or anything like that? Yes, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. We're going to have the live stream going, uh, and it's going to be uh, just like normal. We'll have uh, our online ministers on there, so you can go to uh, – it'll be on Facebook. It'll be on YouTube. But the best platform is twbcss.com forward slash live. Uh, it's a great platform. You can interact with uh, people. You can submit prayer requests. If, if you want to be born again, there's a, a tab for that, and you'll have a, a private uh, chat with the online minister to, to lead you to Christ. And, yeah, just a, uh, some amazing opportunities to tune in online. That is awesome. Just a little over two minutes left in this one. Lady Cats with a five-goal lead. Again, stick with us even after, uh, you know, the buzzer. We want to make sure, one, the Lady Cats will obviously celebrate their win, have the by district trophy, I would assume. And for the second time tonight, we need to name a y, uh, Way Bible Church player of the game. So just because there's only 145 left on the clock, don't go anywhere. Still got plenty to get to. And, Joel, since you're uh, – this is the first time broadcast – actually, second tonight, but yeah. first full – I don't participate because I have a daughter on the team. Yeah. So, you all have at it. So, yeah, we'll have to have some uh, off-air discussions yes, about – uh, by who we want to be, the, the Way Bible Church player of the game. And, man, there's a lot of good candidates. Uh, Tyler, recap the, the score sheet right quick with the assists. And yes, the sir. So starting the night off with uh, about midway through the first half, we had a goal from uh, Rowan Faircloth that got the, the scoring started. And then she scored another goal right before halftime, about two and a half minutes left in the first half. And I could be mistaken, but I believe both of those were unassisted goals. Um and then to get the third or to get the second half started, about eight or nine minutes in, Jolie Moore uh, had her first goal of the game. She was followed just a few minutes later by Haley Schultz, and then coming back for a second goal tonight was uh, Jolie Moore. Literally just, I believe, a minute and a half, two minutes after that one. So that's how we've gotten to five tonight. And uh, as far as the updated season goals and everything. Rowan Faircloth now up to 42 on the season, up to 54 total points. Haley Schultz got her sixth goal of the season. She's now at 13 total points, and a huge majority of those coming in the postseason and in district now. Uh, Jolie Moore came into the, the game with 13 goals on the season and now walks away with 15 and 22 total points. And, again, about 60% of her points this season have come in district or the postseason. I'm excited to see how much these continue to grow and everything. Uh, as they continue to advance, hopefully survive and advance in the postseason. Yeah. Well, hats off to our ladies. And, oh. And that's, that's tough. Mm. With one, four seconds left, we give up a goal and dump, dump the shutout. I mean. Yeah. It's, Man, that's tough. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But. And with the uh, – well, Tyler was talking, the ref had a horrible no call, again, um, down here which set up the, the run for that. So, but, yeah, it is what it is. Four seconds left. Congratulations, Lady Wildcats. We're so excited uh, for your victory tonight and moving to the next round. And congratulations to the Sulphur Springs Wildcat boys soccer team as well. They're moving yes, to the next round. And uh, looks like they'll be playing another back-to-back -back either Thursday or Friday. Yes, very well. Looking like it's going to be both of them would be facing Palestine. And I, I, that would be a rematch for both of those teams. Last season, the Wildcats fell just short in a 3-0 game against Palestine. And the Lady Cats... Uh, Got the 3-0 victory. And Let's final go, score, Lady Cats. Come uh, on. Five to one. Your Sulphur Springs Lady Cats are headed back to the area round of the playoffs. By district champions, five to one. Gave up a little goal with four seconds left. Eh, it didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, th this was a th th that's adversity. Yeah. You play you play really 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 good Sulphur Springs Lady Cats soccer. Still got a 5-1 win, but it may it, it could have easily been 10-0. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. So, but hey, it's you're not gonna the calls aren't always gonna go your way. It is what it is. Physical game. Yeah, they fought through it. Yeah, congratulations, Lady Cats, for for fighting through adversity with the refs and the physical play of Chapel Hill, and uh, they just they looked outstanding. They kept to their game plan. They kept doing what they knew how to do. Uh, they didn't get let it uh, frustrate them too much, and yeah, they just. Came out the second half like we talked about and leaned heavy on their their offense. Um, uh, some other players besides Rowan and uh, converted some shots. And, yeah, really took control of the game uh, early in the second half. In the first uh, 20 minutes, it, it was 4 nothing, And so it was just a great, great all-around effort by the Lady Cats tonight. Absolutely. They've got the trophy. They have got – they're down here and, and uh, about to hoist the Bi-District Championship trophy. That's the best – Look in soccer right here, guys. Yeah. Sulphur Springs Lady Cats by district champions, 5-1 over the Chapel Hill girls. And so a very, very good job. 
to, to our girls. Hey, good job to them. They battled. Yeah. They, they gave us a tougher game this year than they did last year. Uh, they played. They fought hard. It's sad, dude. I'm a dad yeah. of a daughter that's a senior. Somebody's oh, yeah. going home, and, and they're probably upset and everything. But uh, they, they did the best they could. And, and uh, But that's that's life, and that's soccer. Yeah. And so every single team uh, in 4A except one is going to have that same exact feeling Absolutely. Uh, at some point this year. So yep. that's part of it. Again, by a final score of 5-1, to one, the Sulphur Springs Lady Cats walk away victorious area now by district champs. They will be moving on to the area round. Woody, as always, is going to sit this one out. Joel and I have to decide a Way Bible Church player of the game. So very quickly, we want to hear from them, and then we'll, we'll, we will be back to name a Way, a Way Bible Church player of the game. Hi, I'm Pastor Joel T. Meyer of the Way Bible Church. And we are so excited to invite you to one of our four Easter services this year. We have a Saturday service, March 30th at 5 o'clock, and three Sunday morning worship services, March 31st at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30. We have powerful worship, fun for kids of all ages, and a dynamic message that will impact your life. The tomb is empty. The price has been paid in full. Come join us for Easter at The Way. So for the second time tonight, we get to name a Way Bible Church player of the game. The Way Bible Church wants to invite you and your family to encounter Jesus with them at The Way this Easter. You have four services you can choose from starting Saturday, March 30th at 5 p.m. and then also on Sunday, March 31st at 8.30 a.m., 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Experience powerful worship, fun for kids of all ages, and a special message just for you. The tomb is empty, your debt is paid in full, and they can't wait to see you. Joel, uh, I'll let you. I'll let you start the bidding. Where do we want to go for tonight's Way Bible Church Player of the Game? Yeah, uh, as we stick it off, I just want to uh, capture that shot right quick on your screen. That's such an amazing picture right there, uh, with with all the girls with the by district champs uh, banner right there. Uh, congratulations to all the girls. But yeah, after uh, a lot of conversation, two girls really stood out tonight, uh, and uh, Rowan in the first half and Jolie in the second half. And so uh, Rowan Faircloth and Jolie Moore, we are excited to announce that you are the Way Bible Church Players of the Game tonight and great job by all the lady cats and and Jolie thank you uh for the great job you did rising up in the second half as we talked in the first half we're they're gonna have to depend on some other offensive players and you stepped up and Rowan carrying the load as always you know first half coming out with two great goals it's just an amazing job tonight by by all the lady cats yeah it's definitely a great way to split it up like we said Rowan got the the scoring started she had the only two goals of the first half and then Jelly comes back and scores a pair of goals in the second half Haley Schultz also had a goal in there as well uh, so yes congrats Congratulations to Rowan and Jolie for being tonight's Way Bible Church player of the game. Uh, any final thoughts before we get out of here, guys? I know it's been a long night. but Yeah, and if I could give an honorable mention, it, it would have to be Anna Romero. Yes, she, I was. Emma, I was gonna. Yeah. Emma, I was sorry, gonna Emma, nominate yeah. Emma myself. Yes. Yeah, she 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 controlled the midfield. She shut down the players that were around her, and so she just did a, a, a great job tonight. And really loved watching her just step up. Hey, she did a good job. I agree with all the ones y'all 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 mentioned. I mean, great team effort. Uh, but the three that you that mentioned there, the two players of the game, and then Emma. I yeah. Mean, dude. If it wasn't for life happening the way it did, Emma would have never been at holding mid. We'd have never known. Yeah. But she's risen to the occasion, and boy, are we thankful. Yeah, we're, we're grateful. And so, yeah, great job to all the Lady Cats. And congratulations to the coaches, man. Uh, I know mm -hmm. they put in tireless, long hours, and we're super excited to, to celebrate with the coaches uh, as well, boys and girls. And just a great night to be a Wildcat. Again, thank you to every single one of you who hung out with us tonight. If there's any of you who were here from kickoff to now, you're the real MVP, but we appreciate everyone joining in and hanging out with us, and we appreciate every single one of our advertisers for making all of this possible. Again, huge thank you to Woody and Joel for joining us tonight. On behalf of everyone here at Chad's Media, Caleb T. Meyer and Chloe Copel, who did incredible jobs tonight. The producer man, Corey Hankins, did an incredible job as always. Uh, again, stay tuned to Front Porch News on Facebook or, or our website to – Make sure you get updated on when the next playoff games will be or subscribe on Chad's Media YouTube. Until the next time, I'm Tyler Lennon. We will see you all then.